afternoon. Welcome to our October 29, 2020 special meeting of the Santa Cruz City Council. I have a few announcements and then we'll move on to our regular meeting agenda. Today's meeting is being broadcast live on community television, Channel 25, and streaming on the city's web, cityofsantacruz.com. All council members are participating in this meeting remotely, and I want to thank the public for viewing today's meeting at home. If you wish to comment on the interim recovery plan, instructions are on your screen. Please mute your television or streaming device once you call in and listen through your phone. Please note there's a delay in streaming, so if you continue to listen on your television or streaming device, you may miss your opportunity to speak. Call in, call in at the beginning of the presentation. When it's time for public comment, please press star nine on your phone to raise your hand. When it's your time to speak, you will hear an announcement that you've been unmuted. The timer will then be set to two minutes and you may hang up once you've finished commenting. And with that, I'd like to ask the clerk to please call the roll. Thank you, Mayor. Councilmember Byers? Here. Matthews? Here. Brown? Here. Boulder? Here. Watkins? Here. Vice Mayor Myers? Here. And Mayor Cummings? Here. So today we have one item on our agenda. Uh, it's the City Council Interim Recovery Plan Workshop. Um, and so with that, I will turn the meeting over to, well, I'd just like to thank everyone for joining us today. And, you know, since uh, COVID's happened and given the impacts that this has had on our local economy, uh, we felt that it was necessary for us to um, try to come together to figure out what we should be prioritizing as far as work uh, for the next 12 to 18 months. Um, this is the first meeting uh, that we're gonna have with council regarding the interim recovery planning. And it's an opportunity for uh, management partners who's joining us today to get some input um, from council members and from the community on what we should be prioritizing as we're moving forward with recovery over the next 12 to 18 months. And so with that, I'll turn it over to uh, city manager, Martine Bernal for further comments. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to start out by just saying that, uh, as everybody knows, we're living in uh, very unprecedented times uh, right now uh, for uh, any number of reasons. And, uh, you know, local government is, is really more critical now than it ever has been uh, to safeguard the, the health and well being of our community. And yet, at the same time, we're probably more challenged than we ever have been as a local government in terms of being able to do that. Uh, and, and so that, that makes uh, it really important for the city to be able to do two things, in, in my view at least, and that is that we have effective government, uh, well-organized government that does a good job of providing the services within the limitations and capacities that we have. And then two, that we provide effective leadership to our community. Uh, and that is, uh, for me, in my mind, it's a number of things. You know, it's a, it's a good, good teamwork between the council, the staff, the community, having uh, trust, uh, respect, uh, and the ability to work together uh, and to formulate uh, a vision that we can all work towards uh, despite the, the, there might be disagreements. Uh, but having a clear direction, uh, establishing priorities, and then taking it with that take into account our limited capacities and, and restrictions that we may have, but also that we have a system that can make adjustments as, as needed and that we can evaluate, evaluate what we're doing. So that's, that's just super critical, again, in, in our environment, more so than ever, that we be as effective as we can as our, our local government and as the leaders of our community. And so that is really the main purpose for us today is to be able to, to begin uh, some of that work in terms of trying to identify those priorities to uh, create the structures and systems to hold each other accountable and to adjust as needed and to take into account all the various limitations that we have. And to the extent, normally when we do these kinds of workshops, we would have more time to do team building. It's a bit hard to do that in this kind of environment, but it is really important that uh, we work as a team between the council members, the department heads. And so I certainly would encourage uh, today all the department heads, all the staff, and the council members, obviously, to, to participate fully uh, and to engage. Uh, today, it's not necessarily where you're going to make final decisions, but it's, it's a good opportunity to uh, lay out concerns, issues, identify, uh, hear from the public, hear from the community, hear what we've collected, 
uh, and start to put together that framework that I think is really critical, particularly in the months that come as we uh, emerge from. Uh, if you think about it, we've got uh, four uh, ongoing declared emergencies in our community within the last couple of years. We've got a fiscal emergency, we've got a health emergency, we've got a homelessness emergency, um, and, uh, and we've, we've had a fire emergency. That's pretty unprecedented in terms of what we're experiencing, and it's pretty overwhelming. And so again, to the extent that we are clear and prioritize uh, that it is good for our community. Um, so with that, um, I just wanted to uh, turn it over to um, our facilitator today, Jan Perkins from the Instruments Partners and her team, who's done a lot of work with the committee. The, we had a interim recovery committee uh, comprised of uh, uh, our mayor and vice mayor and uh, Councilmember Watkins, who have really helped to uh, uh, develop uh, the approach today uh, to really get us to uh, putting together that uh, initial uh, interim recovery plan to set the stage for the next 12 to 18 months. So I'll turn it over to Jan. Thanks. Okay. Thank you so much, Martin. And uh, hello, Mayor and City Council. It's really a pleasure to be with all of you today. I I'd like to introduce uh, the other two team members here with me today. Uh, Gloria Hurtado. Gloria, if you could just wave. <laughs> You're going to be hearing from Gloria today. <clears throat> and a number of council members have already had an opportunity to meet with Gloria uh, virtually uh, as we did our council interviews. And uh, Claire Coleman, uh, Claire, if you could uh, wave as well. Uh, Claire um, has been helping prepare materials and Claire was also part of our management partners team working on the financial forecast. So she has that background as well. Um, <clears throat> so with that, uh, Claire, let's move on to the next slide. Uh, just the, the objectives, uh, Martina's actually and the mayor have actually gone over these quite well. But there are, there are three specific objectives today. Um, uh, one is to establish uh, three priority areas of focus uh, and we'll be uh, going through a, a process. We've gotten a lot of good information to tee that up for a productive conversation. And uh, we'll be looking for uh, council consensus in, on, on three uh, key areas of focus for the interim recovery plan period of 12 to 18 months. Um, secondly, identifying some key metrics for tracking recovery. Again, we've gotten a, a lot of good input on what those might be and we have uh, provided some options and we'll be looking for some council direction on a subset of those and we'll talk more about those. And then finally, um, creating a framework for making decisions about new work or services or projects or initiatives that might come up uh, during this period uh, so that the, the council and the staff can actually stay focused on the priorities agreed to tentatively agreed to today and then agreed to formally when this comes back to the city council at a, at a city council meeting. So those are the objectives today. And as the mayor noted, um, maybe we'll go to nine and maybe we won't go to nine. Um, if we can be efficient with our time, then let's try to do that. Um, as facilitators, we um, really do focus on um, trying to be as very as much efficient as we possibly can and we uh, very very rarely go over a time um, our objective is to always um, end a little bit early um, so that's a collective and a, and a shared objective for for everybody perhaps so with that um, we'll go on to the next to the so the agenda sort of the flow of, of the rest of the afternoon and into the early evening uh, we're going to have just a, a few slides on the purpose of the interim recovery plan. Just go into that just a little bit more um, and then open it up for public comments, which the mayor will handle. Um, and then we have just a few slides on some input that was gathered. Then we're going to spend most of the time on talking about the priority areas of focus for the t next 12 to 18 months. After that, then we'll talk about metrics. Following that, we'll talk about the framework for decision making, um, and these would be on, on new items. And then uh, as we begin to wrap up, we wanted to get some council input about communicating the city's financial condition and the recovery plan. So uh, just looking for some input. We've already asked for some input as part of council interviews and from department heads, but we'll have a, a, a short conversation about that to get your thoughts and then we'll wrap up 
uh, and be concluded uh, no, no later than nine o'clock. So on the next slide, um, just a few, you know, Zoom guidelines. I mean, you've been doing this and, you know, and as Martine said, it's, it's a little bit hard to do team building in a Zoom environment. Um, I know as a facilitator, um, I will certainly be glad to be back in a, in a real room. <laughs> <laughs> in person, it's uh, it's not the same. But we do our best, don't we? Everybody does does your best. Um, so um, for council members, um, it's nice that you're showing your face, and I would encourage you to continue to do that. And maybe that is your norm anyway uh, for your council meetings, which is fantastic. Uh, for the department heads, um, I understand that the norm is to not, which actually with with as many people that are that are in the Zoom room, um, that's actually helpful to have the, the council um, and, and the city manager showing your face. Um, the hand raise feature, um, we may or may not actually need that with so few people that are, um, I, I think we can probably physically see the hand raise, hands uh, raised by council members, but we also don't wanna miss anybody. So um, it is a feature that is available and so um, it is something that we typically do use in these workshops. And so to the extent that, that a council member is um, trying to say something and, and perhaps I'm not seeing that you do have your hand raised, your, your physical hand, uh, feel free please to use the, the electronic hand um, as well. Um, and then a, a facilitator, either a Gloria or myself, may, may call on um, the mayor or council member as well as we go through, or the city manager as we go through this. So those are just a few guidelines. Just a few ground rules, just as we, and you know, as if we were in, in person together, <laughs> we would be going through a few ground rules, um, always assuming good intent. Um, everybody, uh, is is looking out for the best interests of Santa Cruz, looking out for those interests in different ways, perhaps with different uh, points of view and and um, with with different objectives, but always with good intent. Um, seeking first to understand, which really just means listening to other points of view um, and then to be understood. Uh, seeking consensus, we really are looking for consensus. We will be doing some virtual dot voting uh, so that we can uh, be very clear about what the, the council majority wants to do with regards to priority areas of focus. Um, but, but the goal is always um, as much consensus as we can and seeking areas of agreement. Staying focused. Um, Gloria and I will do our best to help help all of us collectively stay focused, but I invite everyone to um, participate in that uh, ground rule as well. Um, and then of course, uh, showing respect uh, for the process and, and for every, everyone, and I, I'm sure that you do that. So those are our typical ground rules. Um, bike rack, uh, as we go through the next few hours, there may be some things that come up that would be better addressed in some other forum. Maybe the city manager needs to come back with information or you know, something else. And we, rather than going down a rabbit hole or getting off on a tangent, we'll make uh, a note of it and, and Claire will keep track of, of any bike rack items. So it's, it's a time management tool so that we can stay focused on, on the agenda today. That's what that's about. And, and by the way, if, if any council members or the city manager have anything that, as we go along that you think ought to be on the bike rack, feel free to pipe up and say so. <sighs> okay, so, um, so those are all the kind of housekeeping items. So now I'd like to ask Laura to talk uh, just a little bit about the purpose of the interim recovery plan. We have just very, very few slides on this. So Laura? Thank you, Jan. This is Laura Schmidt, the Assistant City Manager. I'll just do a brief recap of how we came to focus on an interim recovery plan. So Claire, if you could advance to the next slide, please. So in winter of 2019, the City Council was focusing on putting together a three to five year strategic plan. And we had gone through various outreach and information gathering steps with internal city staff and in February and March of 2020, we were supposed to begin the community outreach portion. And of course, that's when the COVID-19 pandemic hit. So um, as we 
worked to operationally respond to the pandemic. In the spring of 2020, council members rightfully recognized that the three to five year strategic plan was probably not the appropriate vehicle for us to be focusing on in order to um, get through the pandemic and then uh, raise our sights to figure out what we're going to do in response to the pandemic to focus on recovery for our community, our financial situation, and our economics. So in June of that year, the council voted to um, create a council committee called the Interim Reco Recovery Plan Committee, and that was Mayor Cummings, Vice Mayor Myers, and then Council Member Watkins. And that interim recovery plan committee established the three objectives to put together three priority focus areas, identify key metrics so that we can actually measure how we are doing for the recovery, and then create a framework for decision making, recognizing that as the pandemic changes, we have another emergency such as the fire, we have the financial crisis. Uh, we are often faced with needing to be able to make uh, course adjustments and decisions quickly. So let's put together a framework to enable us to do that. Next slide, please. So um, why the focus areas? Why do we need those? It, it, it's basically good governance and it's really important for council and staff to be able to stay focused on a few things, especially in this ever-changing dynamic world of COVID-19 and the other unfortunate emergencies that we've been facing in 2020. Um, we also need to be able to implement those changes quickly. And then underlying those focus areas, we need to develop a robust work plan to say, those, these are the focus areas, these are the items in the work plan related to those focus areas that we need to implement. And doing so will be that school of fish navigating and aligned um, to get down to one place all together and achieving what we need to. Okay, so Mayor, I'll turn it back to you for public comment. You are muted. Thank you. All right, so at this time, if there's any members of the public who would like to comment on the interim recovery plan, now is the time to call in using the numbers on your screen. Once you've called into the meeting, please press star nine on your phone and you'll be given two minutes to comment. Mayor, I don't know if the numbers on the screen are what we see, but we only see that this, so I don't know if they see something different. I'm sorry. It's something different. Oh, okay, <laughs> thank you. Okay, so I don't see any members of the public calling in at this point in time. So um, if members of the public call in later, maybe we can open it up to a public comment towards the end again. Okay, thank you. We'll, we'll keep moving then, Mayor. Okay, so I'd like to turn this over to uh, Gloria Hurtado. Or, oh. Okay. You ready? Yeah, go ahead. So uh, in getting this, the process started, um, the first thing that we wanted to do was to collect information and, and data to inform this process. Um, the first step that uh, the city took was the financial forecast and Management Partners was a part of that, so you all received the financial uh, forecast. Um, we did council interviews, um, which all of you participated in. We did um, department questionnaires that each of the departments um, completed. And then we also did a community survey. And next slide. Uh, and I'm gonna let Laura talk about the, um, the financial outlook because I know there have been some updates. So I'll turn this one over to Laura. Thank you, Gloria. Um, as Council recalls, the COVID-19 pandemic really impacted our major revenue sources, and the shortfalls that we're experiencing are just not for the fiscal year 20 that we finished, but also the fiscal year 21 that we are currently in and multiple years out. 
it, it, the pandemic essentially triggered a recession for us and for other agencies and across the country. So based upon the updated forecast that finance put together in October, we went to council and at that council meeting, it was a special meeting in October on the 8th, you all adopted fiscal year 21 budget changes that helped us find reductions and savings in our budget of approximately $5.2 million. Uh, we, uh, the, of those changes, 27% of them were one time. So those very much helped us meet our financial goals for fiscal year 21. But for fiscal year 22, that means the ongoing recession will continue to be exacerbated until we find fundamental structural ongoing changes. The other thing that we adopted in October were there were a net 18 fewer positions and those structural changes um, reap benefits year over year. And all the departments throughout the city experienced reductions um, and contributed to that 5.2 million in additional uh, reductions that we found on top of furloughs and retirements and other actions we had already taken in fiscal year 21. That gives you the financial backdrop. It's quite serious. And one of the things that we're hoping to do is as we figure out our focus areas as a city, we'll be able to help uh, inform and improve our financial situation this fiscal years and in the coming fiscal years as well. Thank you. I'll turn it back to management partners. Thank you, and that's me. Um, so your, your financial outlook, uh, financial condition will continue to be something that you're uh, addressing as a council, as a city. Um, the other piece was council interviews. So each one of the council members was interviewed and we collected information on what you, some of the priorities you think we should focus on for the next uh, 12 to 18 months, what projects, could possibly be deferred um, or, or eliminated. Um, we also talked briefly about metrics. So what metrics could we use that um, would track the recovery? And then also discussed uh, ways to communicate this to the public and there were a, a variety of suggestions. Uh, the next slide. Uh, department heads also completed questionnaires and they also uh, gave us um, thought, their thoughts on priorities for the next 12 to 18 months. Um, they provided lists of what uh, current projects or important work that's already underway. Uh, they also identified what project, projects could possibly be put on hold uh, during the, uh, the interim recovery period and also um, provided suggestions on metrics and data that uh, may already be collected. Next slide. Um, we also, the, the fourth will, this was the community survey. And the community survey was available uh, for 11 days online. And there was a very um, good response. The total response was uh, 1,835. Um, and um, a, as you can see, the, the top five priorities were uh, fire, emergency medical services, or public safety, affordable housing, parks, beaches, open spaces, environment, climate action, infrastructure, homeless services. Uh, the next slide, what we did, because there were so many respondents, is we pulled out those who are actually either residents, we wanted to focus on the residents, the businesses that are within the city, uh, students that were within the city, and these were the top five priorities. The change when we pulled out um, the public and the uh, visitors and non-city non residents was that homelessness uh, services became a bigger issue for those who reside or, or operate businesses in um, Santa Cruz and uh, the environment had a lesser priority when we focused on those who are residents and businesses within the city of uh, Santa Cruz. So this is important information to have uh, as background uh, as we start moving forward and developing your priorities. Okay, um, I would also like just to uh, point out that we have prepared a workbook um, that ha was provided in advance to the council and to the public and, and um, 
results from the survey are included in that workbook as one of the attachments so that uh, anybody who wants more information can get it from the workbook. So uh, we wanted just to uh, give you the kind of the bottom line highlights in, uh, in the slides, but a lot more information is certainly available there. Okay, so now we're gonna move into um, discussion of the focus areas. Um, so um, by way of introducing this, Gloria mentioned that we received information from the department heads. We asked them what significant projects are already um, on the books, already underway that the council has already given direction for. Um, in addition to those uh, four emergencies that have been declared and then of course working on um, the, the, the financial recovery itself. Um, and so we have this list and, and this is also in the workbook as one of the attachments, but we thought that uh, starting out with this just as an information piece, we're not gonna spend a lot of time on this um, and this is not for the prioritization. These are all projects that are underway and that will continue to, to move forward um, unless there um, is some other action that is taken. Um, but the point of this slide is that Santa Cruz, as you well know, is a very busy city. You have a lot on your, on your uh, work site. Um, it's a, as the council and the staff develops this 12 to 18 month uh, interim recovery plan and identifies areas of focus, it's important just to keep in mind that there's a lot of work going on every day, along with the day-to-day -day management of just managing staff, managing the day-to-day -day services that go on in all of the city departments um, in, in providing core services. So, so this is just backdrop, very important um, background information. And we can certainly loop back to any of this um, as we go through our conversation today. But we wanted to provide that to you. And some in the workbook, uh, we have more than a list in the workbook. We actually, staff provided the status um, of each one of those as well. So there's, there's more information. And I know the city manager could elaborate on any of these if as we go through the uh, discussion today, there's a need to do that. So on the next slide, Claire, okay, good. So on this one, so as Gloria indicated, when we did our interviews with the city council and as we did the questionnaire with the department heads, we asked uh, what are the, the key priorities? And we, um, we heard a lot of alignment actually. Um, you know, we did not hear a list of 30 things. And which means that um, the council is um, doing a good job of understanding that, that you really do need to focus. Um, and so we were able to synthesize and sort into these eight areas. Um, I am in, in a moment going to show you another slide because we also heard some, some process and principles that will be important to the city council and I'll get in, into those in just a moment. But I, I first wanted to share with you the areas of focus that council members, um, uh, doesn't mean that a majority mentioned each one of these, but these came up in our interviews and through our virtual dot voting and after discussion of each one of these, then we will see which three of these really will emerge. But these are the eight that did emerge as focus areas, as possible focus areas. The department heads also had a lot of alignment with what the council said. Uh, the, the department heads had five key areas that they thought would be important focus areas over the next 12 to 18 months. Um, it's not to say that they are not all key um, areas to work on, um, but as we're thinking about um, what are the, the top priorities. Nothing, if you have 30 things, they all can't be priorities. Eight things can't really be top priorities, but you can have three priorities. <laughs> and so that's really the, the idea is to begin to, to narrow. But there's certainly a lot of alignment here between the council and, and the staff. So I'm first gonna give you an overview and then we're going to take an opportunity to discuss each one of those. This slide that Claire just put up in interviewing council members, uh, a number of you, a number of you mentioned 
a variety of things that as you go through your interim recovery plan and develop that, you said these are important principles or processes that, that, that really would be uh, underlying um, frameworks for, for it. And so we wanted to list these. Um, and one of them that came out from a number of council members is your health and all policies and to be very mindful of those principles of equity, public health and sustainability uh, as you go through all of your work. Another um, idea that came up was to continue to look for state and federal resources, which there may very well be some, some new ones. Uh, you, we have the CARES Act now, might be CARES Act too. Um, and, and we know there's a lot of conversation going on um, about that. So there, that very well could happen. Um, other comments that we heard had to do with prioritizing resources to those most in need. It was just more of a, of a comment. Um, the grand jury reports were mentioned as, as something to be mindful of and, and just keeping those in mind. Um, it was also suggested that engaging the community in maintaining parks could be something that as, by way of, uh, as a way to engage people. Um, and then um, in defining core city services and prioritizing them with the idea that, that um, resources are limited as council members well know. And so at, at some point it may be helpful to actually say what are those core city services and, and uh, prioritize those. So for these, we wanted to share those as a way to, to acknowledge that those are also important principles or processes to be thinking about as we um, discuss the areas of focus. So in the next slide, we're actually um, now going to ask council members to begin to talk about these. What we would like to do is to hear from council members uh, what your intent, understanding that not every council member mentioned every one of these things. But we are going to go through one through eight and we would like to hear council members comments about what you might envision these to be. Uh, so what would be the intent of each one of these? Because that's going to be helpful as we move into setting, um, narrowing into priority areas of focus. And, um, then, what, and then after um, the council actually does decide on the priority areas of focus, um, the city manager will be returning with a work plan to meet those and we'll talk, we have a separate slide and Martine will talk about that. But, but it will be very helpful to the staff to understand what council members have in their minds about these before there's any um, virtual thought voting. So we're just gonna go through starting with number one and I think uh, Claire has provided some other slides so she can just add some bullet points. So I'm now going to open this up to council members to um, offer your comments and not every council member may need to or want to come on up, comment on every one, but I certainly want to make sure that all council members have an opportunity to comment on every one. So um, if you would like to hold your hand up mayor. or mayor, <laughs> mayor you're first. I was just wondering if maybe you could go back to the screen before because since this one only has four and the other one had all eight so i'm just trying to write them down so i can okay. because i think some of these can actually be combined um, okay so now this is helpful okay and let me um i, I thank you they are actually also on page four of the workbook just so you have that as a convenience so um because we realize you're you know you, you you're looking at a variety of different things Jan, this is Gloria. Yeah. I just wanted to remind that when we condensed this list into the eight, all of these were um, priorities that were mentioned by more than one council member. Oh, yeah. Right. So uh, it might not have been a majority, but more than one council member um, identified these areas. So if there was something that only one council member 
identified. It didn't make the top eight. So this is sort of a consolidated, yeah. loose consensus of the council members. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that, Gloria. Yeah, that's helpful. Okay, so um, why don't we go through one by one. Um, so these are the eight, and if you want to take a look at that page four of your workbook so you have all eight in front of you, um, we created the, the next two slides just to give Claire room to type in some notes. <laughs> so again, if we were in person with nice big flip charts, we'd be writing it all up there, but we're doing virtual. So who has comments on the first one on the council? Uh, I, Councilmember Myers first. Oh, oh you are muted. Um, yeah, I think I'm sort of gravitating a little bit towards um, where the mayor was going. Um, but I do believe the, the item number one um, is, 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 it should be one of our top three priorities. Um, I think that because of the recession, but also the long-term needs of the city, which we know are, you know, we're before, even before COVID. So our pension obligations are uh, CIP, which, you know, often is pushed back and pushed back. Um, some of the new um, pressures on the city. So obviously we've learned how, um, how potentially damaging wildfire can be. We now have conditions that may affect our downtown because of flooding. So I think um, the the new revenue and then also looking at um, cost recovery, but I also think that the um, doing the assessment of the internal, kind of the internal workings of the city makes sense right now. Um, you know, I, I'm reflecting on some of the actions by, by different cities and counties right now that have experienced these different natural disasters, you know, and they're creating, they're sort of combining and making departments or making at least interdepartmental teams, you know, around um, recovery and, and various things, whether it's from wildfire or the, you know, potential damages from, you know, watersheds that may be coming towards the cities later on, you know, debris flows and things like that. So. I, I just think number one is for me it would be a, it would be one of the three. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Okay, but Mayor, you had your hand up next, I think. Thanks. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so I, I agree with the Vice Mayor <clears throat> on fiscal sustainability, and I'm going to not jump a little bit ahead, but I was just looking at the list on page four, and I feel like you know with that long-term fiscal sustainability. There's a lot, there's, you know, a number of these items that kind of fall underneath that. So, you know, restarting our local economy, I feel like, you know, when we have, mm -hmm. and also the green economy and downtown investment, I mean, mm -hmm. when we have, you know, jobs, and especially if we're trying to expand beyond tourism as our economic base, you know, really thinking about what are new jobs that we can create in the community that will allow for, um, you know, people to have the finances they need to go out and shop in stores, you know, to afford their rents in town. And, you know, I feel like that's all a big part of the kind of restarting the local economy, investing in, in our downtown space. And then ultimately that all feeds into, you know, long-term fiscal sustainability, because if we can determine what are new, you know, job sectors that can come into the to town that wouldn't be, for example, impacted by something like um, um, a, a pandemic in the future, you know, that kind of fits in with the, the long-term fiscal sustainability. but get to the vice mayor's point, I think that that should probably be at the top of our list because we ultimately need to make, you know, maintain, um, you know, our, our ability to function as a city and that's going to require maintaining that financial stability and sustainability. Okay, good. Other comments from council members on the first item? Again, we're, we want to get your thoughts on the, on each one of these. Okay, council member Brown and then Watkins. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Um, I guess I want to say, and it's kind of, uh, I think this applies to pretty much all of the eight, that, um, you know, just to make the statement that the devil really is in the details on a mm -hmm. lot of, so, um, 
we may have different ways of thinking about what is needed to move towards fiscal sustainability. And I th I'm thinking in particular with re respect to new revenues. You know, so I, I agree that that's a priority, and I do think that there's much uh, a much deeper conversation that we need to have ultimately about uh, where we're going to prioritize within that. You know, what are the strategies for fiscal sustainability? If we're talking about new revenue, uh, where are we targeting uh, for those new revenues? And I know that there's some differences on the council around, you know, what kind of taxation measures we w might want to put on the ballot. So again, um, I, I absolutely think that number one is should be our top priority, and um, I do think we need to find a way to, you know, flesh out some of uh, those details, uh, you know, as, as a as a council. I'm just going to add here because I don't want to keep repeating myself, but we have heard, you know, and it is, and I understand the constraints and all of the reasons why we are doing this today. Um, but we are five days from an election, and the council mm -hmm. is changing. So um, I don't know that that would cause there to be a significant shift in the the main priority areas. Um, but I do feel. Uh, a little bit, it feels a little strange to be doing this today, I would just say that. Um, and I think people in the public have noticed that as well. So I just want to be careful about one, not getting too detailed, but also understanding that we're going to need to sort some of those things out as we move forward. But yeah, it's uh, number one is clearly number one for me. Okay. Councilmember Watkins, I'm number one. Uh Thank you. Yeah, no, I, I think I, you know, I agree with the comments made um, by my colleagues in regards to making this a priority. I do think that, and we discussed as a subcommittee, you know, timing and refinement and, um, you know, input along the way. So definitely mindful of the fact that there will be a shift in council members and wanting their input and their um, buy-in into this as well. So. I know this is sort of a, a preliminary, excuse me, um, approach to moving forward. I don't think uh, substantially in terms of the three areas that will come up with will change, but as mentioned by Councilor Brown, I'm sure the details and specifics will be uh, refined moving forward. And I do think that part of that should include how we're really constantly engaging with our business sector and our various partners in terms of um, kind of top, uh, you know, top, priorities and impacts um, that they're experiencing at that time. So really being data informed and really constantly consulting with them um, to help refine some of the needs. Because part of what our long-term fiscal sustainability strategies will be is to also sort of support our businesses now from um, the immediate impact. And then in regards to where I believe the mayor was going, I think, you know, there doesn't need to be um, a separation between our long-term fiscal sustainability approach uh, with, uh, for example, a green economy or um, investing in downtown. So I do think there's opportunity to potentially consolidate some of the, the various priorities. Um, because for me, I think a long-term fiscal sustainability strategy to the vice mayor's point really should include resilience um, to climate stressors moving forward. So. Um, and that could also lead to green jobs and um, sort of also generate more opportunities. So I don't think we need to decouple those, um, uh, you know, just sort of at this time, that's sort of what comes to mind for me. Okay, and I see that uh, council members are using the, uh, the electronic hand raise feature. So we'll just use that. It sounds like that you're used to doing that in your, in your council meeting. So that's fantastic. So council member Matthews. Yes, um, I would also um, put a whole bunch of dots by this one. Uh, Long-term fiscal sustainability, there are a lot of components. As I look down the list, pretty much items two through eight are all fundamental to number one. Yeah. <laughs> you get to thinking about it. Um, um, homelessness arises as a key issue for the business community. Um, public safety arises as a key issue. Um, downtown investment, green economy, obviously relates to long-term fiscal sustainability, uh, restarting and growing the local economy, affordable housing, and infrastructure, all of the above, frankly. So it's almost, to, me, to my mind, it's almost like all of those things are part of that big um, 
heading. Um, under the, the captions, under fiscal sustainability included cost recovery. I'd be curious to know what kind of progress we're making on that and what's um, currently in the pipeline. I know the staff has been working on that. I, I'm just at this moment not familiar about how far along we are on that path. It's not going to solve the problem, but it's one of the ingredients. Um, new revenue I take to mean mostly a, a ballot measure of some sort um, that takes its own path of exploration. Polling, what kind of returns you get, what's the climate, et cetera. Um, I would also say part of that is recovered revenue, and that to me kind of relates down to restarting and growing the local economy. Um, we've lost so much. I mean, we need to just rebuild our sales tax and our TOT. Those are our two big ones. Um, it was mentioned, uh, well, and then, you know, the green economy, whether you talk about, uh, well, so, so many aspects of our local economy, whether it's um, environmental sciences or um, green tourism. I mean, that that is a very simple theme to a lot of parts of our economy, and we actually are lucky to have a pretty diverse economy. Um, anyway, not to beat a dead horse, but I, I just see all of these threads tying back to the long-term fiscal sustainability. Okay, great. Council Member Golder. Thank you. I do just have a quick process question too. So would you, are you gonna go around Robin for each of these eight or should we use the hand raising feature? You know, let's use the hand raise since uh, since you're used to using that, we'll use the hand raise. Okay. Okay, so I think um, I agree with the mayor in that I think number one and I think um, number six and maybe even number five could kind of be kind of combined and um, I also, the one thing I haven't heard anybody speak to, but, and I don't even know if it's possible, but if from, from I mean, sometimes we've had to do this within the school district where you're like in a restructuring departments. And so I don't know, you know, um, if for example, like departments could be combined as like a cost saving measure moving forward. And I, and I can't think of anything maybe off the top of my head, but but really looking at that as a as a thing, and even thinking like public safety, is there a way to combine with central fire or other local, you know, smaller fire departments to save money? And then I like the idea that the mayor also said I was thinking the same thing of expanding our tax base with the creation of new industries and luring you know, startups or businesses here and um, making it, uh, I don't know, incentivizing starting businesses by keeping fees for those kinds of things reasonable or at least, um, you know, comparable to neighboring counties to encourage businesses to start here and stay here. And then finally, the other thing too is, is um, I just noticed that they're putting in a target and I know it's gonna be in that, probably that Kmart building in um, Scotts Valley, but just any opportunity where there's a vacant building, reaching out and doing our best to try and get those buildings um, occupied so that we can keep um, getting that tax, sales tax revenue. Thank That's you. It. Council Member Byers. Um, right, everything that's been said is right on. Uh, I was wondering what provide for public safety could be. I mean, we have fire and we have, I, I just don't, it's just a funny word for me, provide. I think we are providing a fire and police, park, you know, park staff, but I don't know whether there's some maybe as you consultants can help me on that. Well, let me just say right now, um, we're gonna go through these one by one so that we can hear oh, okay. comments about those. So we're okay. on number one. 
Um, okay. And I, okay. But I know that you're on a time uh, limitation, so I, we want to make sure we get your comments. Though. Sure. No, well, that that's the only question I, you okay. know, we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll have quite the discussion about solution to homelessness, but that was just kind of a quiz. Of, of Understand. Words. Okay. I'm fine. Okay. No thank you. And uh, Council Member Matthews. Just one other thought that was on my margins here in terms yeah. of the fiscal sustainability. Um, we read in almost agen every agenda report our investments in energy conservation across all departments, and they're big, <laughs> big chunks of money. So um, that's another area for um, fiscal sustainability. And also, I know we've tried to make progress with uh, technological efficiencies that also give us um, being able to do uh, the same amount of work at um, a more efficient cost. So. Um, uh, whether you call those infrastructure or whatever they they are um, investments that can yield that can improve our bottom line in terms of fiscal health. Okay, good. Okay, uh, Council Member Watkins. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, the Mayor, and then yeah. Council Member Watkins. Fine. One <clears throat> one thing that just came to mind, I think, when we think about. Um, actions to ensure long-term fiscal sustainability. I think that one thing we have to keep in mind as well is that it doesn't come at the cost of community stability because I think about, it just brings to my mind, you know, there are ways to attract, um, whether it's new streams of revenue or new jobs, but there, um, at times you run the risk of gentrification and pushing people who've been long-term citizens or middle class out of the city. And so I think that while we're thinking about solutions to long-term you know, fiscal sustainability that um, it shouldn't come at the cost of our community stability. Okay. Okay, Council Member Watkins. So I was just gonna um, go that the energy investment can also lead to good green jobs. So I don't think that they need to be thought of as separate. Um, and then there's also strategies that as we think about investments in, um, in areas of our community to ensure that we're doing so in a way that's informed by not trying to um, create conditions for gentrification. So how are we just being mindful of those? I think uh, to the mayor's point as well. Okay, very good. Okay, uh, I don't see other, any other hand raises on that. So let's move on to discussion of uh, finding solutions to homelessness. Um, knowing that it's a very, very big topic, um, but if this were an area of focus for the next 12 to 18 months, what might be your intent? I think that might be a, a, a better way to, to think about it um, because it is not a, a short-term issue, of course. So. Um, I'm looking for Council Member Brown. You have your hand up first. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, this is obviously a, a huge challenge and I think a uh, priority. I think we have some opportunities right now to really kind of rethink how we address homelessness. And, you know, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Um, you know, the approach that we have invested heavily in, I, don't, I do not believe has worked. Um, we're, we are um, kind of looking at opportunities to work with the county, new, um, you know, new funding streams with, with the county, uh, some of it's COVID related and others not, um, has kind of created the conditions for seeing that expansion of uh, emergency shelter um, is possible and uh, that it, it is effective. And so, you know, I really think that, you know, and, and to Council Member Matthew's point that homelessness is a big issue for the, the business community. Well, it's a big issue for everybody in the city, mm -hmm. uh, neighbors, um, you know, it's, it's a big issue for the people who are unhoused as well. And so I think that kind of really rethinking how we use the very limited resources we have um, for things like waste management, porta potties, hygiene, um, and then really, really making sure that our commitment is demonstrated in our cooperation with the county so that um, we can have a productive uh, a collaboration with them. So, you know, I know that's kind of some specific and some 
sort of vague, but, you know, I, I do feel like it's, it, you know, I think this is a priority and it sounds like others do as well. Um, but I just want to be clear that my uh, perspective on this is um, not to suggest, you know, new ways to uh, move people along and, and pile up more citations. I really want to see some actual progress made. Uh, so I'll just leave it there for now, but I, I do think this is a conversation that we, you know, and, and for, for that matter, we have a grand jury report that has suggestions and we have a cat, multiple catch recommendations that we also ought to be looking at. Um, so I think we need to really, you know, expand our thinking at the same time that we're acknowledging that we have limited resources. Good. Okay. Thanks, Sue. Uh, Council Member Myers. Yeah. Um, it's hard to it's hard to get the three priorities, you know, and I think this is this is one that is um, it is a priority. Um, but I'm I guess I would sort of put it as number four when I think about trying to get the three and I know we're going to collapse some of these, which I think is very doable. Um, but I think that, um, you know, the county's going to come out with the focus strategies um, report completed report uh, November 10th, and then there's gonna be a, a lot of work with not just our city, but all three cities in the county, as well as other parts of the county. So I think we're at kind of a point in time where um, we're gonna get a lot more clarity um, on on where the county's coming from with regards to their you know role and how they're going to start to manage this you know, this policy issue and the, and the needs of, of folks that are in our community. So I would, um, you know, I guess I, I guess my opinion is, you know, we need to continue to, to play, um, you know, to be on the team with the county, but um, I think sometimes we do end up kind of stepping into the forefront and trying to, because it is such an acute issue in our community, especially, you know, visibly people are, people are, upset by how the conditions they see people in um, and so but I think I guess for me I'm sort of I'm sort of uh, a little bit cautionary in keeping this as a as one of the top three only because I do think that there is considerable um, progress at the county level and um, with hopefully some change in, in investment from either the state or the, the feds uh, we can become part of the team um, and not be sort of the um, the backup quarterback, which I kind of think we've been for a long time. So um, I think we have a lot of good policy ideas that have come out of the cash. I think we've um, there's been a lot of good analysis um, by our staff on best management practices that are coming out nationally um, in terms of reducing homelessness as well as um, both prevent you know through prevention, but also through diversion. So there's, there's a whole suite of kind of policy development that I think has really come to the forefront in the last five years that um, I think we hopefully can catch on to the, um, catch on to the progress of the county and, and try, to, try to become um, part of their, their programs, their process. And so I kind of, that's how I kind of rank this right now, which is, you know, this isn't a, one of my top three, but it's four or five and it's something that we need to attend to but um it's a real drain on our resources and our staff right now i feel like so we've got to be careful about continuing to throw resources towards this i think our service providers in town too are, are doing quite well and i've been really impressed with all their progress to date okay. thanks thank you vice mayor okay uh council member uh byers then matthews and watkins You are muted, council member. Um, I, you know, the county gets the money and they divvy it out. I, I don't know what else they do. Uh, finding a place, say, for a big um, shelter, you know, nobody's going to have it in their district. You're not going to find a shelter out in, in Capitol or, or Aptos. We, we will always have the impact of the actual bodies in our city. Emmeline is here, the jail is here. It's just simply where they're going to be. Uh, so I, I, it's such a huge high priority. 
Uh, and to think that just piling a lot of money in, it, it's, it takes so much more than money. It's, it's, part of it is educating the community. You know, nobody will have a campground anywhere near their, their street or wherever you want. And I really think a lot of it uh, is because they're just, I don't want to say ignorant, but I think if they just step back and understand the problem and the issue, uh, the census that shows that something like 60-some percent are from Santa Cruz. You know, they've been here at least the last five years because we do the census every two years, and that's the main question. They ask, how long have you been in Santa Cruz? Um, uh, so I, uh, until we just say to the neighbors in the community, help us on this, please get involved, help. You know, visit the campgrounds and come to Housing Matters and take a tour to see what can be done. But, uh, you know, they're maxed out. Our, our, uh, our nonprofits are doing all they can, uh, you know, and they, they, they depend on donors, of course, you know, to help them. Do. So it's such a high priority. And until we just 100 percent throw everything we have this, uh, into it, we, we're not going to help the businesses. We're not going to help the neighborhoods unless we all agree that it is such a high priority and we simply just can't wait. We have to wait for the county to give us the money, absolutely. But other than that, I just see, well, we'll read the grand jury. They just said years have been spent all this and nothing has really changed. Our population is much, much higher. So, and I think all of you know, this has been a high priority of mine for many, many years and still is. And I guess I'm encouraged because the state and the feds are starting to see the need. Our governor has made it a high priority uh, for the whole state. So anyway, I, I will, sorry I have to leave because, you know, this is going to come up and come up in different ways. And I think you already know how I feel. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Matthews, Ben Watkins, Ben Golder. Uh, the issue of homelessness did come up in all the groups that we interviewed. So I didn't mean in my initial suggestion. Mm -hmm. to imply that it's only business community. This community, it has residents, it has council members, it has all, all the categories we've interviewed. Um, uh, I don't think this should be our primary responsibility. <laughs> and I even kind of object to the language, find solutions. I do not think that is the burden of the city of Santa Cruz. I would like that to be support solutions to homelessness. And I think that's the direction we should be moving. My own opinion, um, and we have been making progress in that more recently with the county's increasing engagement in response to COVID um, uh, emergency. Um, I would, so I would like to see real emphasis in the whole conceiving of this a partnership. And uh, member buyers mentioned this is the role of the nonprofit, others have as well. Um, I'm very interested to see what comes out of the focus strategies report um, that's coming to the county. Um, I would like to see, and I believe this is in focus strategies. I have not um, uh, been actively involved in that process, but I believe there's an interest in um, looking at programs that actually are successful in moving those experiencing homelessness from where they are to a better place, actually seeing methods of improvement, um, whatever that consists of. Um, I, I think we don't feel the city should be expected to uh, continue bearing far and away the uh, majority of um, the impact. And so, uh, again, it's underlying support solutions, focus on partnerships. Thank you. Councilmember Watkins. Uh, thank you. Yeah, no, I, I just, I guess my only additional comments are, you know, the homelessness is so complex in that it's mm -hmm. uh, mental health, it's substance misuse, it's poverty. There are many spaces to homelessness. We have a number of homeless children in our county. So I think definitely this is not, um, even if it's not a priority per se, it's something that our community, that our city will continue to need to work on in partnership with so many uh, others to focus on how we're addressing our homeless population. Um, that being said, I know we're also looking at sort of certain things that were our approach to it. And 
one of the things that we're going to have is um, a study session on the CAHOOTS, uh, the CAHOOTS type model. So as we're sort of thinking about the things that we can do as a city that can um, be better informed by various models that have worked in other areas. Um, and then in regards to sort of the role that I think this interim recovery, but just this really opportunity that we have to um, really shift our, our systems, right? Um, we have a, a chance to see how we're as a city providing conditions for people's success. And that I think is how, how are we in, how are we making investments in ways to create good jobs? How are we thinking about housing and uh, various and diverse housing opportunities here? So how are we creating those types of con conditions for success in partnership with how are we um, addressing some of those who are struggling in our, in our community as well? Good, thank you. Uh, Council Member Golder and then, then to the mayor. Unless mayor, did you need to jump in first? No, okay, Council Member Golder first and then mayor. Thank you. So I've said this before, um, and while I really do agree that homelessness is an important issue that we um, we need to work on as a society, I don't think that we can solve it as the city of Santa Cruz. And so even um, finding solutions to me also seems not to be like a semantic police, but it seems a bit much. And I think thinking about it from a long-term perspective, looking at um, ways to increase affordable housing, ways to increase business opportunities, and ways to invest in our community to prevent future homelessness is something I'd rather see at the top of our list. And I think I'm super impressed with um, the level of collaboration between the city and county um, this year regarding homelessness. And like I said, I do think that it's a very important and a strong like three and a half but if i only had to choose three it would not be in my my top three at this at this meeting okay thank you uh mayor i'm, I'm gonna kind of echo what my colleagues have said and so i'll be short but you know having worked on the two by two and especially working um on homelessness a lot through covid uh, it's been clear and pretty obvious that um, the county needs to take the lead role, and they have been taking the lead role during COVID, and we've been able to stand up, they've been able to stand up with support of the city, a lot of really good programs. And I will just um, add that uh, although, you know, I think traditionally it's been seen that the county just kind of divvies out money, that hasn't been the case right now with COVID. I mean, with the shelters that they've set up, they've needed to hire more staff, and those are county employees. That money wasn't given to the city, and then the city had to go out and employ those people. The county is in charge of that, and so I think that we need to, and, and those programs have worked, you know. I mean, the hotels have been working. Um, the managed encampments have had less of an impact and have had a positive impact on the people who've been there. And I think what we need to do is highlight to the community, um, you know, what successful programs look like so that we can build on those in the future, but really let the county know that we are here to support what they're trying to do and the programs that they're doing, they're successful, that we're in support of that, but we should not take the lead role on because that's, we don't get the funding for that and that's not our role and the county has finally stepped up to really take the lead role. And I think that we need to let them um, do that and we need to be there as support. Um, so you know, to the extent that we can continue partnering with nonprofits, um, that we can, you know, when new innovative um, programs emerge, that we can consider, you know, whether that's finding facilities for them. But I think that we need to be more in the role of supporting the solutions and supporting new approaches rather than trying to take the lead on you know, solving homelessness because it's going to be, you know, it's, it's, it's not um, part of our purview. We don't have the funding, and I think that we'd be much better in the support role. Thank you. Okay, I think we will move on then to um, the next area, which is, uh, let's see, providing for public safety, which was mentioned by, by some council members as a, uh, a key area of focus. Um, priority area of focus, so we'd like to hear comments about what that might mean. Um, and Mayor, do you have your hand up right now? If so, you I can. can I can go after Council Member Golder. Okay. Yes, Council Member Golder. So this is one of my, my, I mean, this is a priority. I don't know if it'll be in the top three, but I'm going to say why I think it's a huge priority to me. I think um, it, we have a hard time 
in historically with recruitment and retention of police officers and keeping our police department like full and so i just um and i the i think without police and fire our residents really aren't safe and uh, something I see that maybe I was the only one that said I said it because it didn't end up on the list, but I would consider this public safety is um, one of the root causes of homelessness that I see is um, dr drug drug addiction. And um, when I'm out and about and I do spend a lot of time walking through homeless camps, I don't feel very safe when somebody that's high on drugs is talking to me in an aggressive manner. And so I know I'm not the only person that experiences this in homeless camps or on the levee or walking through town. And so for me, um, mental health is one thing, but drug abuse and addiction is a whole nother can of worms. And I think like from a public safety perspective, like somebody can be very unpredictable when they're on drugs. And I think it, you know, when someone has drug addiction and I think that causes quality of life kind of crimes because they steal for their addiction. And then it just, it's like a snowball effect. I don't know how to, how to um, address it other than that, but it, I think it's something okay. that's important to me. Okay. I think we're capturing that. And like I, I think I said before too, there's not a lot of like education for youth around um, drugs in school. There just isn't. Mm -hmm. It's not there. So it's like that's a problem. Okay. Okay, uh, Mayor, I think you had your hand up next, and then we'll go to Vice Mayor Myers. Yeah, I just think um, you know there's been a lot of um, push in the community around trying to rethink public safety and that's part of why we're going to have the study session on mental health crisis response and you know rethinking what that can be and so this fits with homelessness as well because there's been a big you know i think we're at the beginning of a point where we can have a conversation around you know who should be responding to whether it's mental health substance abuse um or homelessness should those be police officers or should that be another group and so i think you know in the next couple weeks we're going to be having you know what will be the beginning of the conversation around that um so that we can really identify you know what are the you know who should be responding to those calls can you start doing things differently yep. um and and um i think that you know it's it's because because it's difficult right i mean you, you can ex have someone experiencing a mental health episode and that can be confused with somebody on drugs or um vice versa and so you know this is something that i think the public is really interested in and then just i mean given that we've had so many layoffs like as we reopen and you know depending on what happens next year if we have another social uprising COVID still going on you know how do we support our all of our public um safety systems you know fire included uh so that we can ensure that you know we are keeping our community safe, um, regardless of what kind of crisis we may face. Okay, thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor Myers, you're next. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I agree very much with what um, Council Member Holder and Mayor Cummings have been stating. Um, I think when we say provide for public safety, I think it's almost, it's almost kind of more of an analytical type of approach that we need. Um, I do think that we do have uh, a drug abuse and addiction issue that drives a lot of, you know, a lot of the issues that our community sees, whether that's people um, struggling with homelessness, um, and not to say that people who are homeless or drug, drug addict, uh, you know, drug addicts, that that's not the correlation I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to promote here. But I do think that to the extent that we understand some of the pressures coming from um, the drug aspect of, of what I think many of us see in the community, understand um, the severity of that. We, we just need to kind of, I think, kind of 
analyze that a little bit more and understand its role and where it's coming from and working with you know the education system and some others to see if we can really kind of get at that um, uh, in terms of that impacts on the quality of life and the success, frankly, of, of, young, of young people and of all people in our community. I think that's one piece that kind of plays into these, to these public safety issues. Um, and then also I, I appreciate that we're diving into the mental health response and police response. I think that's another really important piece. So um, again, I think this is, um, Again, it's it's a little bit of a number four for me. It's 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 this it's this real it's these social issues that continue. They're not going to get solved in one year, two year, or three years. But um, really getting clear on causes, on strategies, on sort of really structurally understanding our approaches. I think are kind of the things that I'm I reflect on when I look at, you know, when I look at public safety, I look at homelessness, those kinds of things. Um, even to some extent affordable housing, um, these are long plays, you know, and so, but I think that clarity and really understanding our approach might be sort of, sort of the priority. Um, so those are my comments. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council Member Watkins next. I, I appreciate the comments um, by my colleagues. I think, you know, for me, one of the things that comes to mind is that often when somebody says public safety, people think of different things, um, one of which is to deploy, you know, officers, first responders once, a, a, you know, an incident has occurred. Another is, um, you know, which was brought to my attention about being, uh, feeling safe as a, for example, undocumented resident to call law enforcement if there was an issue that occurred. Um, also looking at it through the lens that um, Councilmember Boulder referenced in regards to investments in education and prevention, and, um, and, and that includes public safety, and creating those conditions where students are, um, or youth are informed and um, optimal opportunity for their success is public safety. So I think, I guess where I'm going with this is that I think there's an opportunity for us to sort of um, reassess and uh, reevaluate to um, uh, Vice Mayor Myers' uh, point around an analytical approach, what are our needs, and then looking at how are we uh, making informed uh, strategic um, kind of uh, investments in our resources that meet those needs based on how we're all interpreting public safety. Um, and, and so, I mean, and so in terms of how to prioritize that, um, I think, you know, we can think about what that looks like in terms of the broader context also when we have the conversation around the cahoots model, et cetera. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council Member Matthews. And you are muted, Council Member. Um, okay. Having a hard time pick the top three, but I would say that um, public safety broadly writ is a big issue for me. And we all know this goes from everything to the wildfire response to marine safety to gangs, et cetera. I mean, it's, it's a very broad topic, um, I think. And also, I believe this showed up in all the different um, categories um, that were interviewed. Um, to me, the perception, the sense of public safety is something that's really important to our residents and our visitors and our businesses, um, do I feel safe? And they kind of define that to themselves. And um, there is, it's my perception that there's just a very um, widespread angst over this issue that is um, a big challenge for um, whether people want to invest more in government, <laughs> <laughs> um, whether they want to come downtown, whether they feel safe um, hiking in our park, et cetera. Um, you know, we just adopted the park master plan and it has safety written all throughout it. So um, it, it can be a bit nebulous and it's broad, but to me, uh, providing the reality and the perception of public safety um, is, is really important and it, it will depend on a more effective response to the mental
mental health and substance abuse issues that are so um, driving the perception of public safety in the community and the minor crimes, what are called minor crimes, and that just drives people crazy. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilmember Golder. So I don't want to be like a gas bag and talk forever on this one, but I just have to uh, echo what Councilmember Matthews said. This was brought up on a couple of different ones, and I think even from um, you know an economic standpoint, like the perception of feeling safe somewhere will make you want to go there or not. Like you know, arriving in the middle of the night in Sao Paulo, we were like, let's get out of here. We don't feel safe. Whereas like you know. <laughs> some places you want to enjoy. And so I think it, it contributes to our parks as well. Like when they just pulled out two 55 gallon drums of needles up in Pocono a couple weeks ago, some people don't feel safe walking up there, you know? So we have to, it almost ties into uh, broader areas of our, of our, of our town because it's <laughs> also you think about like even biking and walking and those kinds of things that you enjoy you want to feel safe you want to feel safe at the beach that there's lifeguards there or that you know I, I i don't know i just i think i think yeah public safety it it almost encompasses maybe it could be lumped in with something else i don't know but i just think that um it is very important thank you uh council member watkins you have your hand up again Sorry, I was just only, the one thing I was thinking of is I wonder if some of these broader, like, you know, more collaborative type efforts are um, kind of encompassed somewhere in regards to like, yes, we're a partner in creating, you know, prioritizing public safety in all forms and responding as, as needed. Um, but thinking about like, there's, you know, this effort underway called Neighborhood Courts and it's part of this bigger sort of infrastructure and partnerships that are required um, for community resilience, but also in terms of how we as the city are thinking about our resources and, um, and, and, and economic, what is economically efficient, but also, um, you know, socially just, I think there's an opportunity for us to, to do that in an informed data kind of approach, but with the other partners. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, yeah, your hand up. Just one final comment, because mm -hmm. I think one thing that we don't think about, and this is kind of interrelated with some of these other pieces, but when we think about public safety as well, you know, given the number of people who've been laid off and, you know, fingers crossed, we, you know, get some financial resources for people who are running out of unemployment and for people who, um, you know, have seen a reduction in wages and are ineligible. But part of that public safety is also ensuring that if you're living in this community and you've seen a loss of wages that you don't end up on the street. Yeah. Because, um, you know, when it's it's when people become resource depleted, when they start resorting to other ways, means of, of gaining resources. And so, um, you know, I think that to the extent that we're really focusing on ensuring that, you know, people are stable in their homes and we're getting resources to people who, uh, you know, if they need, whether it's food, rental assistance or what have you, that that also fits into public safety because that's a big part of taking care of the community. Thank you. Council Member Brown. I just want to echo uh, Mayor Cummings' uh, comments there. I think that uh, thinking about public safety um, as community safety, thinking about that more broadly, um, as other council members have suggested, is really important. And um, I agree that um, and this kind of fits in with the theme that came up uh, around um, ensuring that people most in need are uh, are served. I do think that uh, we we have, with limited resources, again, um, we do have the, we have a role it, to play in ensuring people stay housed um, and stable. And so I, I just wanna um, kind of add my, my two cents about making sure that that is included in our uh, kind of definition and, and discussion around the concept of uh, public safety. Okay, um, let's move on to the next one, which is downtown investment was brought up by uh, more than one council member. So what's the, uh, wh what would be the idea of uh, this as a focus over the next 12 to 18 months? What are, your, what are your comments in terms of intent for those of you who would like to comment on this? Um, 
Vice Mayor Myers is your. Oh, can I get up yeah. first? <laughs> yeah, I think it just it, it just popped up first. And it then, popped up. Yeah, um, yeah I, I mean, I, I I guess you know I kind of I mean kind of I mean, I want to compliment you on this workbook um, first of all because um, it, it just the way that you kind of you guys put this together along with the project list in the back it's sort of um, and maybe it's because of a lot of the reading I've been doing lately but it, it's sort of popped for me in that um and, and i'm sure council member matthews can reflect on this um because i wasn't I, I was living here then but um i wasn't intimately involved in the recovery after the earthquake but um i i see downtown investment um it, it really sort of it, it i would expand it a little bit I, what i'm kind of seeing in this list is is sort of a um kind of a mini uh, mini stimulus type of outcome that we could pursue. Um, and, you know, none of these things are all going to get done in the next 12 to 18 months, obviously, but, you know, putting these things into a package of, of sort of um, economic and community investment stimulus just seems to be kind of popping for me right now as I, as I read through the packet. And, um, it's kind of a, like a community resilience and quality of life investment sort of strategy that we could sort of, um, because when I look at the list in the back, um, in the very back of the report, I mean, we do have the housing project. So we have three, three different uh, affordable housing projects that are coming online, but we also have some um, privately, um, private housing projects as well. So we've, we've got, you know, a significant amount of investment around housing in the downtown um, possible. Uh, we've got um, also the completion of a, of a project called the Resilient Coast Project, which is really an investment into our coastal resources. So it's our beaches, it's West Cliff Drive, it's some of our main in, uh, features that bring tourism dollars um, and also provide quality of life for residents and also addresses um, some of our um, some of our neighborhoods that need some of these uh, infrastructure investments. Uh, we've got, you know, now three libraries that we're going to be building, brand new libraries, or at least significantly remodeled libraries in two cases and a new library in another. And then we've got water infrastructure that's being rebuilt. So we, we have, I mean, just quick, quick back of the napkin, we got about a half a billion dollar mini um, sort of, well, it's not very mini, that's sort of a stimulus package that's internal to the city of Santa Cruz. And I see that sort of as a, as a way for us to really think about how to bring jobs, how to bring investment. Um, I think we need to look at tools like equitable de development planning, which is, you know, very much um, underway in a lot of cities. Um, and I think there's a lot of really good case studies and, and experts that we could draw on. So I, I guess when I see downtown investment, um, I see this infrastructure piece and with that um, and, and, and these major projects, and I also see that um, providing additional opportunity for some of our local businesses as well as sort of really following some of the things we've learned during COVID, which is, you know, the potential for open streets and some other things that we've put in place that have really shown that people really want to enjoy our downtown in a slightly different way. So I guess that's a long way of saying, you know, I think this, this for me is one of the top three, but I think it's a little broader than just downtown. I think it's this package of of really reinvesting and um, kind of reinventing Santa Cruz to a certain extent, but I would be very, I would kind of add this equitable development planning aspect to this so that we sort of have a lens to look at it through, which is making sure that we're not gentrifying, making sure we're not displacing people and keeping, um, keeping all communities in place with regards to the outcome. So this is definitely one of the top three for me though. So, but I think it's bigger, thanks. Okay, thank you. So, um, Councilmember Matthews and Golder. Um, this is a big one for me. I think it can be um, considered really a part of so many others, um, but it's essential to all of them. When you talk about, um, uh, as I mentioned, under the long-term fiscal sustainability, when you talk about recovering the critical um, COT and um, retail sales tax, um, Success of downtown is a significant part of that. 
uh, when you talk about supporting a green economy or growing the local economy, jobs and businesses, affordable housing, infrastructure, all of those um, tie into the opportunities um, that are facing us downtown, particularly since we have in recent years revised the downtown plan, the parking structure, um, we're working on some major projects coming forward that connect us to the river um, in a way that fulfills uh, goals that have been on the books for a couple of, <laughs> a couple of decades. Um, it, it really is a key priority for me. And um, uh, whether it needs to be called out by itself, um, the thing that um, uh, Council Member Myers referred to, I look back to uh, following the earthquake um, when um, faced with massive dev devastation downtown, we came forward with um, projects for the Museum of Art and History, which is a cultural attraction, an open space attraction, commercial attraction, community building attraction, additional height of density and residential uses downtown, which is such a potential now, um, with uh, new parking structures with commercial uses in them. Um, it's, uh, to me, this is an opportunity to um, really get some gains in multiple areas that will benefit us well into the future. And I do believe coming out of COVID, there will be uh, grant opportunities in all these areas um, that if we are moving forward, we have plans in place, we will, well, we will be well positioned. That was certainly true coming out of the earthquake and coming out of the Great Recession. Um, I think it is a time to um, be visionary and be ready to take advantage of resources that are available. Okay, thank you. Council Member Golder, next. Um, I will echo what the council member said before me. I think this is super important and also looking at it from um, a broader perspective that, that um, investing in this critical infrastructure that has been in the plans for a long time and following through with those plans will help the economy, help housing, help, you know, support a green economy if people are living and working in a in, in close to mass transit. And so I just don't want to see any of these critical infrastructure projects be put on the back burner at this point. I mean I feel like it was just maybe this year. I don't even know if it's even done yet, that we finally finished downtown after 31 years. Um, you know, the, there were still holes in the ground. So we have, where we finally have some momentum. I'd hate to see it come to a standstill because of this. I just want to, it's very important to me, period. Thank, thank you. Council Member uh, Watkins next. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, Council Member Brown and then Watkins. Uh, so, yeah, I, I guess I kind of want to echo uh, what I've been hearing from my colleagues. Um, but I kind of feel like the downtown investment piece is, should be brought in if we're going to talk about this as a, as a focus area. I agree uh, that downtown is a critical part of that, but we have, you know, uh, we have small local businesses in other parts of town that are also struggling, uh, that are really important to the vitality of our uh, our city uh, writ large. And I also think that um, these, and I think you know, other council members have said this, but I see these as happening. They're already in motion as a matter of course, and I, I don't see us necessarily changing uh, uh, you know, changing focus in these areas. So I'm, I'm not sure that I would put it at in my top three um, as a focus area, just because I feel like it's kind of happening. Um, but I, um, I do agree that it is important that we kind of stick to the path that you know we have laid out and uh, continue to make those investments and not, you know, shift gears. Uh, but again, for for me to be able to say that I want this to be one of our top three focus areas, I would say it's kind of um, in kind of investment in uh, you know uh, healthy, resilient community. Um, you know, so that's just my. Okay. I, I like to focus on downtown, but I think we need to think more broadly if we're going to really think about our the way we invest. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Watkins, next. Um, 
I think one of, I guess one of the things that I just, I think a lot of what I've been thinking about really has been said already. I do feel like this is part of a bigger um, investment kind of package, as was mentioned from, um, I, think, I believe the vice mayor mentioned it, in regards to how are we, um, you know, creating a, um, you know, in regards to creating a downtown that is, um, it is about investing in economic stimulus, is about thinking of resilience. A thriving downtown is often an indicator of how well a community is doing, so we need to prioritize our, our downtown. Um, and doing so also is a way to forward our equity in, you know, hopes in regards to affordable housing opportunities, as well as resiliency in terms of getting people closer to where they work in public transportation and where they can recreate while also providing uh, investment for economic stimulation. So how are we thinking of it sort of holistically? And then also, you know, in terms of what Councilor Matthews brought up in that, you know, downtowns reinvent themselves um, over time. And so how are we making informed decisions about what we have and had and what was already kind of on the horizon with some of the um, trends that we were seeing? And then how are we, uh, how are we moving forward in a way that is um, going to be more resilient in the future, as well as poising our city to receive, uh, you know, grants and funding and supportive effort just to help support our efforts as well. Okay, and Council Member Matthews, you have another comment? Uh, just a follow up. I'm glad to see that the term affordable housing got added. That was part of what I mentioned because downtown is the one place where um, most people feel comfortable with the idea of adding density <laughs> and so um, there does seem to be an openness to that and it's an opportunity for affordable 100 percent affordable mixed market and affordable projects so i uh, definitely want to keep that on there and um i also just wanted to point out although it doesn't show up here um downtown really is kind of the uh, psychological touch point for a lot of the community <laughs> people live out in the county. <laughs> they, when they think of Santa Cruz, they think down to the beach and they think downtown. So I think the um, logical, um, just that it's important to the community. Okay, thank you. And Mayor Cummings. Um, <clears throat> I'll try to keep it short because I think most of my sentiments have been said. Okay. But um, uh, part of what you know, I'm, I'm thinking as well is you know, this downtown investment can also, there's a few pieces like green economy restart local economy, where I think like that restart local economy, and we'll get there, but um, I feel like a lot of these can be embedded under there. Um, if we want, because, and the reason why is because there's so many areas that are um, not only up and coming, but that are um, kind of expanding. And I mean, for example, our West side, you know, po I mean, I don't, I wasn't here for the in 1989 earthquake, but when I arrived in 2007, I've seen a lot of development of the west side since then, um, along with the east side. And so I think that rather than kind of isolating and thinking of our town in terms of, you know, where is the central place that everybody's going to being the, the downtown, we have these areas that of other areas that people are going to. So also then thinking about, you know, um, economic opportunity and investment throughout the entire city. Um, but specific to downtown, um, given the fact that we've seen so many businesses um, leave and there's vacancies, the one thing, the one opportunity I do see is, an, is for us to rethink, you know, what should be the focus of the downtown. And I can see that as something that's on a 12 to 18 month trajectory, really putting some deep thought into, you know, what were dying trends. So we knew before COVID that retail was going down in the city because a lot of people are buying online. It's likely not going to come back because I imagine a lot more people are comfortable purchasing online and so that there's not going to be that desire to go back to retail. So what does the downtown become and what, and, and, you know, what should we be really focusing on when we want to bring businesses into our downtown uh, empty spaces? And, and I do also want to mention as well that, you know, because we have so many empty storefronts downtown that I do also see, you know, they're, there being a need when we're thinking about recovery, well, that's an area that definitely needs a recovery plan because we've seen how badly it's been impacted. And so I think that, you know, as we're going through these exercises and as we're kind of thinking about, um, you know, where our areas of focus, I think we need to really focus on what's been impacted 
uh, versus just what we feel like is important um, because the downtown has been significantly impacted and we need to try to figure out how we can have that area recover versus something like public safety, which yes, that's important to everyone. Um, it's something that it has, is ongoing, but when we really think about what has been the most impacted during COVID and, with, and what needs the most recovery, I can then see if we, through, through that lens, the downtown being an area that has been negatively impacted that we need to put some attention on in order to you know, get it to recover from, um, from COVID and the impacts that it's faced. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, let's move on to the next one. So, um, so our intent, just from a process, let me do a process check, is to is to go through this same uh, conversation for for all eight. Get your comments out, and then we're going to take a break. <laughs> Give everybody a break at that point, um, and then we'll then we'll resume. So, just we're continuing on with uh, the next one of uh, we heard some thoughts about supporting a green economy. So, we'd like to hear some ideas from council members as to your intent. What, is that, what does that mean? And that may have been informed by this previous conversation too. Uh, let's see, council member Matthews has her hand raised first, I think. Oh, okay, so you muted. <laughs> yes, yes to that in all its many forms, um, whether it's, um, um, visitors, we, we saw the state parks were a big issue or the, the environment was a big issue for visitors. Um, it's our marine sciences, it's tech, it's um, energy, et cetera. So all of those huge support. Um, one of the questions I have, so that's just all I'm going to say, there, is that so rich and I think there's strong support for it. One of my questions is this exercise, given the fiscal situation that we're facing is the idea to pare down some of the things that are already on our list or to think of new things. I guess that's kind of a big question. You're looking at new initiatives, shifting of energy, carrying through what we have, et cetera. Well, my understanding is that it's it's not creating new things. Right. It's, it's, it's um, you're in a recovery period for the next 12 to 18 right. months, so you really do need to prioritize and focus your efforts, and you already have a lot of on your plate. And so uh, this discussion we're going through now is to get your thoughts about what council members individually have in mind as you are thinking about these eight, and then we will need to narrow mm -hmm. um, because we will have to have a – a discussion, and I, I know that Martine will want to weigh in on this, about a staff capacity. I mean, just from a practical point of view, um, if you don't narrow uh, what you are going to focus on over the next 12 to 18 months, then you're unlikely to accomplish much at all. If you, you Thank know, you. If and I guess just my final comment here on the green economy, to what extent is the market just taking that <laughs> topic and running with it? Okay, I think that's a good comment. Yeah, it may be market driven. Okay, let's see. The next person was My Vice Mayor Myers. You had your hand up next. And then the mayor after that. Yeah, I see this as um, almost almost more of a, uh, a, define, a definition um, problem more than a, um, and I like the word support in this case, because I think in many ways we, ha we are on the, we are on the verge of, we, uh, we have done a pretty good job of creating a green economy here. Um, you know, we have a thriving solar industry. Um, we have, um, you know, manufacturing that's focused on, um, you know, we have one of the pop inventors who invented an electric skateboard, you know, that is going through the roof. We have, um, you know, the university is providing um, various, you know, uh, resources and, and, and ways to look at manufacturing um, various um, products as well. Um, you know, there's a growing robotics and yeah, so there, the, the, our green economy, I think is, is sort of on, is sort of lifting off. I think um, the places um, that we can accent that green economy um, is, is really around 
calling it such and really recognizing the the innovation that's coming here. So it, it, to me, this is um, it's this to me this is sort of a marketing piece. Um, you know, everything from our organic food commitment and small scale um, food food resource, you know, food food innovation that goes on here. Um, so I think it's and obviously I think our economic development department sort of has its a beat on this, but I think this is more of a um, for me this is more of a a really kind of coming out with what we do here. You know, we have um, one of the you know, one of the world's only world surfing reserves is here. You know, that is part of our green economy. You know, the, our ocean is part of our green economy. Um, so I think we just don't call it that. And I'd like this to, to really look at um, a way for us to express this a little more clearly in our recovery um, as a community and as a city. Um, I think we do it, but I think we just don't call it this. And we, we're not really marketing it. So those are my thoughts. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Cummings. Next. Um, yeah, I kind of share a lot of the same sentiments as, as the vice mayor, just really, you know, trying to do more to highlight um, our green industries. And then again, you know, when thinking about um, reinvesting in our, our downtown or, um, you know, trying to attract other industries, like really being mindful of, um, you know, who we're trying to attract uh, if we're tracking outside industries or you know if we want to support um industries that are trying to kind of launch themselves you know really focusing in on those you know green businesses and then something that i think fits into our green economy as well i mean i know green goes with sustainability but also cannabis is really taking off i mean we just got um a report out today from our city schools that the children's fund i think more than doubled this year. And so, or I think it doubled. And so, you know, this idea that, um, you know, there's this industry that's building and, and it doesn't have to be, you know, manufacturing or growing or what have you, but you know, what opportunities are there within that industry as well to, you know, really take advantage of since it's in its infancy and as it grows, there's gonna be opportunities. Okay, good, thank you. Uh, let's see, Council Member uh, Watkins and then Brown. I shared, um, I shared some of what has already been said. And one of the things I would just maybe offer is I, I almost see instead of um, supporting a green economy is how are we really more or less using a climate lens as we're thinking about recovery. And by doing so, um, we'll accelerate a green economy, we'll um, create more resilient infrastructure, we'll lead to good paying jobs, which would hopefully lead to more affordable um, housing and the cost benefit or the, um, to restore sort of the balance of affordability here. Um, so how are we thinking about it? I think maybe more holistically. And then I think what I um, would say is how are we accelerating what we already have and, and, and moving forward um, as intentionally as possible. I think we have a lot of really existing and underway, but how are we able to sort of accelerate those um, efforts? And one thing that I found now being on the council is, um, although I've written grants in my, like my other capacity that, um, you know, there are grant opportunities out there and there also will likely be more grant opportunities on the horizon. So as we're thinking about moving forward with these efforts around um, recovery, how are we able to have uh, resources to help us track those grant opportunities and to help us write those grants to receive the funding to support a number of these initiatives, um, which include um, you know, ways to sort of jumpstart our, our economy and the green economy and, and climate as well. So I don't know where that could fit in as a possible kind of priority approach, um, but I definitely don't think it's something we wanna m miss by not having that kind of on our radar. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Okay, Councilmember Brown. Yeah, I uh, I absolutely agree about using a climate lens to evaluate our recovery, and I you know I think I would just add to that you know our our policy in general around um, kind of de infrastructure development and you know in other areas that the city has a role in you know in 
performing the work, I guess I'll just say. And I think that it's this for me, it's supporting a green economy is all, is really about integrating, you know, and, and putting uh, putting green jobs and, and putting the green economy at the center. Part of that, yeah, is marketing and, you know, the, the market's taking care of it on its own, um, but also we can highlight those successes, but also really being strategic about uh, some how we, we um, very, very um, deliberately uh, try to integrate the incentivizing and, you know, and activating uh, the green economy. Uh, and so I think that, you know, for example, we have, a, you know, we have a climate action coordinator and uh, Tiffany Wise West is amazing at, you know, trying to find grant opportunities and look at new strategic initiatives. And I think that, um, you know, and some of those that have come off, you know, many building out mini grids and, and kind of um, looking at our alternative uh, transportation infrastructure build out. Um, and I think that um, this is a, a place where that that is something that we sh we could, as um, Council Member Watkins suggested, really kind of accelerate and and kind of and give. You know, I would just love to give Tiffany more support to be able to spend more time um, and have a crew that's working on this specifically in cooperation with our economic development department. I know that sounds like it may be kind of a new thing, but I I do think that. It's, it's about integration and, and cooperation and, and, and providing the resources that ne are needed to, to really deliberately and, and aggressively build this in. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council Member Matthews. A and then the mayor after that. Okay. Um, having served on the um, district Taxes board for many, many years, um, I just wanna bring back in the uh, visitor industry as a part of green economy. Uh, we've seen so much move to ecotourism and a really enthusiastic buy-in on that in terms of where people are choosing to go, what they're choosing to do, how the um, uh, industry is responding to that in their own practices. And, um, you know, I think of um, uh, the things, the partnership with Visit Santa Cruz and also the state parks in terms of emphasizing the themes of stewardship. Uh, in whether it's um, in our forests, in the ocean, in the footprint we leave, et cetera. I think that, that's a huge strength for us, and it's, it's, it's part of this theme that, as others have said, uh, uh, really just needs to be, I think, highlighted. Thank you. Uh, Mayor Cummings? I was just going to say, I, I feel like, um, and I'll be short with this, I, I feel like after hearing all the conversation that, that the the notion and concept of a green economy, I feel like it's more of a value yeah. rather than like an area of focus. It's, it's something that we value across all of these, you know, whether it's, you know, the businesses that come into our city or tourism, it's a, I feel like it's more of a value rather than something that we want to like really hone in on. But I think that we should keep it. Um, you know, when we think about, you know, whatever our top three are, you know, that when we're thinking about fiscal sustainability or, you know, um, you know, recovering from uh, COVID and the impact it's had that, you know, when we think about our economy moving forward and how we look at tourism, that we really put the, you know, of emphasis on sustainability and um, environmental protection at the forefront. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, all right, so let's move on to the next one. I don't see any other hands on this one. Um, okay, so again, there's been a lot of discussion about uh, the economy in one way or the other. So this is a restart and grow the local economy with job and business creation. So what are your, what are your comments? Let's see, Council Member Gold, are you are quick? Click on the draw with your hand raised. Well, just because I felt like it tied back in with number one. So I think this one is super important. And then what some of the other council members have said uh, uh, that, you know, outside the downtown, there's a lot of thriving business districts on the east side, midtown. You know, um, there's the the rebuilding of all those, like, I don't know what they're called, but basically that were just warehouses in the past on the west side. And there's, you know, plans to put more, um, live work style buildings out there that I think um, could really bring a lot to, um, you know, in, in, in to our town. Okay, everybody. thank you. Uh, Mayor Cummings, you had your hand up next and then Vice Mayor Myers. 
Yeah, again, so this kind of ties in with a lot of topics that we've brought up before, but I, I do think that um, being specific, um, you know, identifying opportunities for workforce development. And so I know, I don't know if this goes on the bike rack, but um, there has been some work, and this was, I think, one of the items that was on the list before, um, but there's been work with um, labor, the construction, and with our uh, public works water departments, you know, really thinking about how can we build and, you know, really start encouraging some of our youth to go into the trades mm. as an opportunity for workforce because um, what we've been seeing is that um, our trades and the tradesmen within those trades are, are um, you know, getting to the age of retirement and there isn't a pipeline to get people into that workforce. And so, I mean, given that that, that is a very, you know, in terms of, you know, what like the education that you have to get in order to enter that workforce, which is generally high school diploma and then a lot of training along the way, you know, what can we do to start building out that workforce? Because that can be a very viable group within our community. And then what are other sectors where we need to have workforce development? So really, I think that part of, you know, we start and grow the local, with, you know, in terms of job and business creation, part of that job creation being on um, the trades and workforce development within the trades. Okay, we'll capture that. Um, okay, Vice Mayor Myers. Uh, yeah, I uh, yeah, I definitely agree with a lot of what's been said. Um, and I think, um, you know, I, I go back to, I mean, I, I, there's a couple things I think that I reflect on with 2008. And one was, um, you know, the, the, the stimulus package that came out of the federal government, obviously, which was really targeted towards, um, you know, sort of shovel-ready projects, but there was also this, this intent to really try to support certain industries, um, solar being one of them, that was probably the most well-known. And then concurrent with that, the state also passed several of the park and water bonds, which were major investments in the billions of dollars. And so, um, and I know just in my work that I do, you know, that those investments translated into really significant development of jobs here locally. I mean, you know, we we had a we went from a couple of, of nonprofits that maybe did restoration work and now we've got, you know, five, six, seven plus the university is working in it. State parks is much more so I think to the extent that we think about this, um, um, I, I, I do think this is part of the context of, um, of it, you know, it sort of rolls back to five. Um, and it, I think it's this whole idea of um, really evaluating the kinds of jobs that we would want to attract to Santa Cruz moving ahead um, or be known for the place that does this kind of work. Um, such that maybe it attracts um, conferences and other things that might benefit, you know, our TSC. So I do think that um, I think this is uh, important, and it, uh, it's 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 kind of its own animal, you know. I mean, I think it fits with this kind of the infrastructure discussion we've had and the downtown investment, but it's kind of the third wheel of of number one, sort of infrastructure and, and housing investment and those things. And then number three would be sort of really creating the workforce for the future, which, you know, now that we've been through COVID, we know that we have weaknesses in the, in, in the opportunities for the people who live in here and who, you know, want to be here in Santa Cruz. Those are my thoughts. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council Member Matthews and then Watkins. I have to make uh, a quick comment. Uh, the mayor talked about something going in the bike rack. And some people will remember the day when you had meetings and there was a side that you, you would talk about putting it in the parking lot. But now we put it in the bike rack. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's <just rough. laughs> We're getting green. <laughs> um, a huge number of our businesses in Santa Cruz and the county are small businesses. and. I do think our economic, we're talking about what the city does, our economic department, 
has done um, a really good job, um, and I, I think it's really important to talk about going to local economy with jobs and business creation. Um, our partnership with Small Business Development Center, our co-sponsorship of so many things like Think Local First and um, uh, Fantasy's Works and all these these small initiatives that engage a huge number of individuals and small businesses are really, really productive. So uh, I don't want that to be forgotten. Um, and um, I think that's it. And, and also, I, I guess the, the chamber, large number of the chamber members are small businesses. So that, that's a really important uh, aspect of the character of our economy. We have some great big ones, but we also have a huge number of small ones. And they're the ones that kind of need uh, particularly the help. And I, again, want to commend the Economic Development Department for what they've done in the COVID crisis and in the wildfire crisis of, of just jumping in there and saying, what can we do to help our small businesses stay alive? And, and that's, that's a really good Thank you. Um, Council Member Watkins. Um, no, thank you. I definitely agree in that this is um, so interconnected in regards to some of the other areas we've discussed. Um, when we're thinking about uh, our role as a city, we, I think, have to take into consideration how we're partnering uh, with our business sector, but also with education and thinking about how, for example, there's an initiative to, uh, called the Santa Cruz um, County College and now Career um, S4C Career uh, Readiness. Now I'm spacing on exactly all the different things. I just changed your name, but nonetheless, there's a collaborative around really trying to integrate um, opportunities for our educational institutions to work with the industry to their uh, to better have a, a way for pathways for employment and successful jobs in our region. To the point around thinking about how are we generating and working with our um, our partners, and also thinking about the data and really getting informed um, on what the issues are with our businesses, what uh, businesses have been able to be more resilient than others, and then how are we supporting our businesses and planning for future resilience and um, in areas of uh, whether it be a natural disaster, uh, I hope there's not another pandemic in anytime soon, but but as stressors come to communities, so how are we thinking about becoming as resilient as possible and supporting our businesses in doing so? Um, it's, but it's all interconnected in terms of what um, sort of we were talking about with this sort of broader context around uh, sustainability and long-term planning. Okay, uh, Mayor, you had your hand up. Yeah, I also think that this is probably a good area um, when we think, when we we're talking about like, green economy and so like adverse like if we're thinking about restarting and you know we're thinking about tourism or branding like this is probably a, a good area where that green economy could come in because it's it's a it's a point where we can you know when, whether it's through visit santa cruz or um just advertising and highlighting the different kinds of businesses that are in santa cruz like really trying to put that green sustainable brand out there uh, i think would really fit into this kind of area focus okay great okay i think we've gotten lots of good ideas out here and these just like all of the other areas are um about five to ten years way more than 12 to 12 to 18 months so we'll we'll come back to that one <laughs> uh lots of good ideas um okay so let's move on to the next one claire Okay, affordable housing was another area that was uh, mentioned by some council members as a, uh, an area of uh, possible priority focus. So again, I would like to hear comments. Uh, so what would you envision that to be over the next 12 to 18, starting with the, uh, the mayor? I see your hand up. Um, well, I know that you know, we, there's a number of projects that are coming online. So I think to the extent that we can continue supporting those projects and also um, just identifying future projects and you know potential sources of funding from the state. I think that's gonna be critical. And one thing that didn't make it to the list that has been in the works and we're gonna be talking about it next week and it's gonna be kind of on that bike rack is um, that uh, the, there's a data, a rental housing data 
uh, subcommittee, and we're going to be having a presentation from an organization called 3DI, um, which uh, they have created ways ways to efficiently collect data on rental housing. And I think personally that's something that's really important because not only does it feed into understanding how people are being impacted, um, which can kind of fit into what we were discussing earlier around public safety, but additionally, you know, it can give us a, a sense of, and a way to establish a way to track our housing over time, especially with an emphasis on tracking affordable housing, because we do know that with a lot of the older mom and pop landlords, as they start, you know, deciding to sell their homes or, you know, when they uh, pass their homes along to their children, if we're seeing a decrease in the number of those affordable housing units, it creates an opportunity for us to not only be able to identify what's coming offline, but also it gives us an opportunity to advocate at the state level saying, you know, hey, we had all these um, houses that were affordable. They're all being sold because they're single family homes. We need, you know, we're going to have a really huge, you know, we have a crisis, a housing crisis that's going to get worse. We need more funding to be able to, you know, create more affordable housing in our community. So I think it's an opportunity for us to have, um, you know, to put in some kind of data collection effort, especially because, you know, with everybody being financially hit hard and, um, you know, with eviction protections coming offline, um, with the fire evacuees, and then as the university opens, what impact is that going to have when we see, you know, 10 to 15,000 students come back. I think it's really important that we're starting to track what's happening with our affordable housing now because uh, it can be very um, negatively impacted moving forward after as we emerge from this crisis. And, I, and I'll, I'd also say as well, it can give us a sense of how landlords have been impacted as well by the crisis um, because we do, I have heard a lot of stories about landlords reducing their rents, but again, it's all anecdotal. So I think that we could have a really um, good source of data that can really inform policy moving forward. And so that's just one in addition to uh, trying to find opportunities to create more affordable housing. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Golder and then Brown. I just want to say that I would like to also keep the projects that we have on the books like moving forward and then to the extent possible when we're talking about like raising fees for things like not raising fees in the permit process that are going to discourage people from creating these future buildings that can be affordable or mixed use. Um, in the next 12 to 18 months because there's a lot of other factors that are already increasing the cost of construction. And so if we can encourage it by not, I don't know, you know, making it um, too, too much compared to other neighboring cities. Okay, thank you. Uh, Council Member Brown and then Watson. Uh, thank you. I, uh, so, Many of you know, those who have heard me talk about affordable housing in the past know where I stand um, on this being the number one priority for me, were it not for a uh, global pandemic and uh, economic crisis and, and city fiscal uh, crisis, uh, I would be saying this is absolutely the number one thing. Uh, and so I do think, I, wa I do want to see us continue to um, move forward with the projects that we have been, um, you know, working towards. And I want to really just shout out to our economic development department for the work that they're doing. I, you know, I think that they're absolutely um, finding those opportunities where they, they are arise and they're, you know, they're working to put it all together to make these three projects that we have um, in the downtown area, hopefully 100% affordable, uh, move forward. So I definitely don't want any of that to get derailed. I, I and I have other thoughts on how we can uh, make affordable housing more of a priority for the city. Uh, you know, and I think we have an opportunity to talk about that uh, at our our housing study session. But um, you know, I just want to say that yes, continue to do what we're doing, but also uh, really, really focus. You know, I think the city has an opportunity here to be um, to play a stronger role in promoting the development of affordable housing. We tend to accept that the market is going to get housing built, and that is true. Mm -hmm. And with lack of you know lack of resources for um, uh, significant subsidy, we are you know we are challenged. 
but I do think that we that we have other opportunities. So really, really focusing on you know city um, property and you know other ways that we can leverage additional uh, sources of funding. Which again, you know, I don't want to suggest that that's not already happening. I mean, that is what our economic development department is doing. So um, you know, I just want to kind of put a shout out to th to them and. Uh, suggest that this is really a, a significant priority for me. And I do think that we should keep moving on the uh, many of the policies that were, came out of the Housing Blueprint Subcommittee report, uh, a committee that I was on uh, with Council Member Watkins. And, um, you know, and, and so, and that does involve looking at our fee structures and um, you know, other ways that we can make it easier for people to build and or um, to build ADUs, for example, and to get abated units back online. I think that there's a lot of work we can do there and it's, it's sort of happening, but I'd like to see that accelerated if possible. Thank you. Council Member Watkins. I, I think I was, you know, I was just pretty much about to say the same thing. Affordable housing and addressing the need of affordable housing has always been a priority. Um, as long as I've been engaged with the city and there was a year-long effort by then Mayor Chase that led to a really substantive um, blueprint to not only conserve existing affordable housing but to seek to increase housing while also balancing community vitality and um, I know some of those initiatives have um, actually you know they've come to fruition others have been um, you know, put on pause, but a number of them really fit into what uh, an investment in our downtown, for example, how are we using um, city-owned properties to create more affordable housing, um, looking at surface par parking lots and con consolidated parking in downtown was one of the, um, one of the, the priority areas, but also looking at data and having next to studies and being informed by what is the way that cities can create the most affordable housing possible, um, given sort of all of the various uh, constraints and uh, potential assets. So I, I do feel that the Housing Blueprint Study Session um, will be a great foundational resource for us to think about where we've seen uh, progress with some of the policies that have been outlined in that document, but how are we moving forward with some of the other priorities that haven't necessarily um, been prioritized at this time that might uh, be uh, more uh, ripe for us to move forward on. But I think this also then goes back to how are we tying that into ways to create uh, more climate resilient buildings and um, there's the green jobs and solar, et cetera. So I think it's all really inter interconnected um, and we have really great information already on the books that we can use. So those are just sort of my, my thoughts on, the, on, on this priority area. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Matthew. Very briefly, just uh, staying the course on the initiatives we currently have uh, in line, uh, looking at the objective standards for design, um, uh, looking at the opportunities for revising ADU. We just took some major steps recently with some of the zoning code ordinance changes. Um, and I look forward to the, to the study session. Uh, it may well be that the state is leapfrogging ahead of us. So <laughs> um, I do think there's actually a lot of potential here. Oh, I, and the other thing I wanted to mention, which others haven't, I know there's been discussion in the past and some projects in line with employer-based housing with the school district and some of the major healthcare providers in town. So um, that's kind of a little niche, but it's, it's an important one for workforce housing. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, uh, Mayor, is your hand up or was that just a, uh, no, okay, <laughs> didn't wanna miss you. Okay, so let's move on to the last one, number eight. Oh, it looks like you have Vice Mayor Myers with her hand raised. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Vice okay, I thought I had a raise, but I realized it wasn't raised. Oh, um, okay. No worries, no worries. Um, yeah, I won't, I, not a lot to add. I think I think very consistent with my colleagues on this. I, I, I guess the thing that um, I think about with this is um, really timing. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, the struggle we have with meeting the sort of perfection of affordable housing um, in a sense can pass us by um, because we, I, I believe we need to be ready for the available types of 
stimulus and funding and other things that come through um, post uh, recessions. Um, and again, I think, um, you know, using the library as an example, we know we've lost significant resource in that funding just you know, over the last few years of making sure, you know, making sure, reevaluating the project several times. So I think with um, housing specifically, I, I, I wanna also compliment our economic development department and the housing team. Um, you know, everyone in California needs to build affordable housing. And um, the more we look for um, sort of the perfect, the perfect package of affordable housing, um, I, I fear that we sort of will lose will lose um, some opportunity there. So I guess um, this is this is really ha we have to really weigh our strategy around moving ahead with this as a priority because um, the resource is not going to be there forever because other communities will will take it and um, you know they'll take advantage of those resources, especially when uh, when it comes to to um, offsetting the cost of building a unit of housing, which of course has gotten very expensive in our area. So I think there's a, um, this is a, this is an important priority. Um, I think it rolls into some other things, but I think it's, um, there's an opportunity cost here that if we don't sort of really, really evaluate and get on, you know, are able to really move projects forward, um, I think we could potentially lose some of those, some of those resources. Thanks. Great, thank you. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, the last one is uh, infrastructure, improving and maintaining infrastructure. So I wanted to get your thoughts about uh, what would be your intent if this were a focus area for the next 12 to 18 months? Uh, it looks like uh, the mayor has his hand up first and then uh, council member uh, Golder and then Matthews. I just had a question with this, and, and um, this one in particular, because I feel like between this one and affordable housing, there are, for example, projects that are underway. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, are we thinking about, in addition to what's already happening, what would we want to do, or would we want to, or just those projects, like, as they're kind of moving forward? No, my understanding, and Martine certainly can clarify, is, is that it would not be new projects because of the lack of resources, uh, but rather if this is an area of, of high priority, then the, then the staff and the council would really be focusing in on this um, over the next 12 to 18 months, they, you know, under the, the, the reality of there are limited staff resources and financial resources. I would add that the... You know, in recent years, the focus has been on really funding for infrastructure, um, which uh, you know, there might be an opportunity to tie it into the, the item number one to some extent. Mm -hmm. Also, as it relates to uh, potential grants or stimulus to be able to move forward with a particular project, particularly if there's a stimulus, like as it was noted before, where um, there was an interest in uh, activating the economy and uh, moving forward with ready shovel projects. So I think that's where it kind of ties in. Um, and, and of course, a lot of it, the infrastructure needs that we have in our community revolve around our facilities, uh, our park systems. Uh, those are really the, uh, the, the more significant ones. So if okay. new dollars um, are available, which they may be from the federal government, you know, have yeah. shovel ready, is that what you're saying, Artane? Yeah, yeah, I think that definitely uh, that, uh, that would be an opportunity. And also it could tie into some of the other uh, like some of the housing projects, uh, mm -hmm. okay. those provide also opportunities to improve infrastructure. Okay, good. Okay, with that then, Mayor, did you want to comment? Because that was a clarifying yeah, question, I, guess, I think. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll just say, I mean, like, I, I feel like, you know, the library is something we can't stop on because, you know, we, like, if we were to say this isn't a priority, I feel like there's still projects that we keep moving forward. That's why. The one declared because I know our you know our wharf master plan is coming back. Um, we just voted on you know getting a contract with the library. So I guess for me, I'm just kind of wondering, is the idea that we would think about other infrastructure projects because I mean it, like in water for example, that's something that we're you know we're not going to stop investing mm -hmm. in the infrastructure on water. So you know if the idea is that 
we would try to think about new projects um, wow. versus kind of continuing yeah. to move forward with these. Yeah, I would say um, no. I would say it would be uh, only if the opportunity comes up, obviously, to 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 move forward with existing projects, um, or to you know, uh, in this time period, to identify funding for for future projects. But no, we wouldn't uh, initiate new projects. I would say no. Okay, I just feel like there's no. I mean, like for some of these, it's kind of like there's no way we can stop with some of the projects that are right. They're yeah, so far away, or the or like the you know, like the library. Like we can't. It's not like we can just say you know we're gonna pick three. And because we didn't pick infrastructure, we're going to stop all work on the library. So I just wonder if. Oh, right. That's correct. That's correct. There are some, for example, as you noted, the uh, in enterprise funds, the water system. You know, those are those are funded. There's a funding source for them. Those will proceed. Uh, the, the the limitations are more in the general fund. The library projects that has funding. There's bond funding. There's parking funds. So some will proceed because there are funding sources. There are deadlines, and they have to continue. Um, uh, I think I think uh, and uh, I'm not sure what the, all the, uh, the rationale was for the individuals that listed this on there, but uh, if the question is, are we going to be able to make uh, improvements or add projects that are not within our existing sort of scope or that are funded or that are in the general fund in particular, the answer would be no, because there is no funding for for infrastructure projects in the general fund, uh, and uh, also you know just disparity capacity to do those. So. Uh, it would, you know, there are there are those exceptions that uh, uh, were noted around enterprise funded or that are already funded, um, but otherwise there wouldn't be unless, like some, like I said, if there's a the stimulus package that includes funding to be able to make some improvements that we already know we can we can take advantage of, uh, if, for example, making some parks improvements or some. A lot of times, for example, we are taking advantage of making. Uh, as you've as you've seen on on solar projects on um, uh, HVAC uh, energy energy conservation projects that sort of thing, um, so we, we you know we'll continue to take advantage of those opportunities as they come up. So I mean it is a let me just comment and then all the other council members do want to comment naturally on this because it is an important area. It is always um, a bit challenging and in, in terms of setting priorities. Uh, when you do have a number of projects that in fact are moving forward and you want to continue moving forward. The the idea here with during the interim recovery period is, is for the council then to say though, for the next 12 to 18 months, that we're really going to focus on these three areas, whatever they end up being. And just because you have projects moving forward doesn't mean that shouldn't be a focus area <laughs> because things don't happen just because they happen. They happen because resources, staff time are put into them. And if it turns out that infrastructure is indeed one of the council's top three priorities for the next 12 to 18 months, then, then when we get down to that voting, then that should, uh, that should emerge. So it shouldn't, I just wanted to mention it should not be, be the thought should not be, well, it's gonna happen anyway. You know, it's what are, what are the council's priorities? I mean, that's really will be the question when we get to that point of voting. But having said that, let's just hear what council members had on your mind, um, especially those of you who mentioned uh, infrastructure as a priority. So starting with council member Golder. So to me, this is a super big priority, um, probably number two, because I think sometimes you can d use, you know, deferred maintenance as a strategy to save money, but then eventually um, the cost of repair or replacement is going to be greater. And so to the extent we can move forward with the projects that are already on the books, I think that this should be a number two and including, but like, you know, the wharf, the metro project, the library, other um, water projects and things like that, that we can't just ignore or, you know, they'll um, end up costing more in the long run. Thank you. Uh, Council Member uh, Matthews and then uh, Vice Mayor Myers. Um, this is definitely a priority for me. We we could fold it under number one if we get the economy back going. Many of those other categories as well. Um, uh, the enterprise funds, um, to my mind, uh, are, are moving forward and have the staff support and funding to do that. Um, I do want to move 
forward with um, some of the other major ones that have been um, mentioned already. And particularly because right now, I think they are not only necessary, but an opportunity. So uh, I talked to staff members yesterday, of course, it's writing grants like crazy right now. <laughs> so um, um, I think we have so many unmet needs that are a high priority for the community whether it's um, um, energy savings or like pedestrian improvements or whatever. So um, they are projects that uh, want and it's an opportunity to actually get some funding funded and move forward. And, and they do fit into this, the uh, longer goals of economic development. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor uh, Myers. Yeah, uh, we're not doing a very good job of taking things off our list. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that this is, uh, to, to Council Member Holder's, um, you know, mention of sort of sort of the deferred maintenance um, problem that sometimes, you know, where we end up um, having, you know, having to fix things at a much more expensive cost. Um, again, I kind of think of this as, I, I think I'm understanding from Martine that, you know, these kinds of things aren't necessarily going to stop, but you know, there's a, a certain level of, of commitment that we, you know, just have to acknowledge. Either we can't make a, at a certain point in time. This one seems a little out of sorts with our 12 to 18 month sort of timeline, but this is one I know I I, I mentioned in the um, I think in the interviews. So I, I guess I think that. Um, I'm really curious about our kind of the new revenue source and what it means with regards to infrastructure. And I, I specifically am kind of really focused on sort of parks because it is general fund um, dependent. And I look at some of, um, of course there'll be grants, but there's also going to be, you know, there are parts of our parks that really do need the, you know, improvement and maintenance aspects to this. So I, I, I kind of see this as, something we need to be thoughtful about when we create or we define uh, the new revenue source that we might be targeting. Um, and I think specifically um, based on some of the, the survey results, I think specifically for our parks, uh, parks and open space needs, um, there's real risk that those areas could be heavily impacted um, during this downturn if we're not thoughtful about um, how, what, what our priorities are about, about those specific um, places. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Watkins and then Brown. Um, I get, I'll just say I appreciate the comments made by Vice Mayor uh, Myers in that our parks are the most vulnerable in terms of our infrastructure um, without um, kind of the enterprise funding to support them. Um, you know, I think one of the things that we also have underway is our um, coastal infrastructure and sort of our climate resilience coastal planning that's occurring. So how are we thinking about that as part of the infrastructure conversation? Um, absolutely looking at grants and revenue sources, but also remembering that um, when thinking about infrastructure, we can also think about how it is tied to creating good paying jobs and creating local workers for those jobs and even really seeking out to get the work, the workforce that has um, uh, has the sort of the populations that have been left behind to be those workers. So I think it's just part of that holistic conversation. I do agree in that um, either we're paying for it after it's broken, but we have aging infrastructure like most of our nation, really. And uh, and it's unfortunate that we haven't had more investments or support at the kind of the federal and state level to support infrastructure, but hopefully. Um, more funding will be on the horizon and we'll be able to make some of these um, really critical investments. If not, we're, we're going to have to fix it and pay for them later. Uh, but how we're thinking about the parks, because they're the most vulnerable, I think is a really important point that, that Vice Mayor Myers brought up. Good, thank you. Uh, Council Member Brown? And then Mayor. I was also going to uh, call out uh, parks and open spaces. I think that it's it's really, we are really at risk here of, um, of taking uh, a step backwards. And we, you know, we have this amazing system that um, if, if we let it go, is gonna be a lot harder to um, kind of get back 
to um, you know good management practices and, and all of that. So and and that is partly infrastructure, but I, I see that more as a services question. Um, and so I think that we just need to um, maybe that's a, a bike uh, bike uh, bike rack bike rack. Thank you. I don't know why the word <laughs> wouldn't come. Um, thank you. Um, and yeah, and I agree. You know, I, I don't think that we can um, we can ignore uh, infrastructure. But I also want to just remind everyone that we kind of say this every year at budget time. I mean, at least my time on the council and other years when I've watched as an obser you know, been an observer. Um, you know, we always say it's a priority, and then we never have the money to really make those investments. And so I think that um, if we make, you know, to the extent that we want to make this one of our three priorities, I, I think that we need to be really focused about what we mean there, because we can just continue to say year after year, infrastructure is a huge priority and here's our big list of you know the capital <laughs> program that never gets actually funded so you know i think that um i think that there's within this some some uh you know maybe prioritization within the infrastructure category that um we ought to be thinking about and you know i think that staff has has done a great job of kind of honing in on what's doable where the funding sources are and uh, but one thing I just want to add into the mix is, um, you know, I think that we've made a great start with our commitment to the rail trail. And so that's an alternative, in, uh, you know, transportation infrastructure that will serve us well in the long term. And I think that um, that's an area where, you know, I'd like to see us put some more focus on, you know, in terms of, you know, pa you know, bike ped infrastructure. And, um, you know, that's, again, probably a longer term thing. But since we're talking about all of the infrastructure, I thought I would just add that in the mix. Um, but yeah, I, it, it's, you know, it's hard to keep saying it's a priority and then see that it kind of, you know, it's hard to fund right. and especially right now. Okay. Uh, Mayor Cummings and then uh, Council Member Matthews. Yeah, just kind of hearing from, you know, and, and I hope my understanding is correct, but if, you know, the, the, if the idea is that for example, you know, we have a number of infrastructure projects that are coming up, the library with the affordable housing, the metro with affordable housing. I, I would actually consider the the pipeline project with um, the construction of the affordable housing with office space for Dientes and the health center along with the wharf, along with the rail trail. You know, I think that it was touched upon by a number of my colleagues that you know, in addition to that being investing in infrastructure, it also creates jobs, and part of that is creating the affordable housing that we're saying we need. So, if my understanding of around, you know, you know, improving infrastructure and investing in infrastructure, if that in, is kind of falls into that category, then I think that that would be, you know, definitely like number two on the list because it would actually achieve a number of the goals that we're trying to get to around workforce development, workforce, you know stimulating the workforce, creating um, the infrastructure that we need, um, and then creating housing. And also, um, you know, also in addition to creating those things, we're then, we then also have another way to draw people to our community. So whether it's um, people being able to bike from one side of the city or from Capitola to the west side, or whether it's, you know, attracting people to a new library or a newly renovated wharf. Um, and knowing that the longer we wait to renovate the worst, the, wor the worst it's going to get. You know, I think that that hits a lot of the goals that we're trying to achieve. So if my understanding of, you know, investing in infrastructure encompasses that, then I think that would be, you know, one of the goals at the top of our list. Okay. Uh, Council Member Matthew. Yeah, I, I tend to think of infrastructure meaning facilities and transportation, that sort of thing, um, uh, not so much a housing project. Um, so, you know, we'll sort that out. I, I agree with the bottom line, but um, it's what do we mean by infrastructure? And just moving forward, um, if the goal is to just, um, identify uh, uh, some kind of a revenue measure for this, um, you know, those of you who have been in this before know um, it, it's definitely a process of identifying what does the public perceive as the things they're most willing to spend money on. and um, 
and then putting together a winning package. And um, some things that we may think are very important in terms of um, really urgent infrastructure may, may not rate very high with the public. So, you know, that, that bridge will be crossed in the future. Um, well, I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. Very good. Okay. So I think we, we have lots and lots of ideas out. Um, we're going to go ahead and, and take a break now. Um, we're going to take a 15 minute break. Let me look at the time. Let's just, let's come, let's start in at six o'clock. So a little bit more than 15 minutes, give everybody a real break. You've been sitting here quite a while. So let's start at six o'clock sharp. And, um, and then at that point, we'll need to be refining these and then doing some uh, virtual dot voting and uh, determining what your top three priorities are. What's that picture on the right here? Mark Lohman. Oh. <laughs> For indulging us in in uh, such a long meeting. Um, okay, so um, these are the eight. So based on the comments that that were made, um, what I wanted to make I wanted to make a process suggestion to the council, which is on number five. Um, this was um, a suggestion that was made by um, one or more, uh, one and then joined in by more, which is supporting a green economy. To move that into the list that we have actually on another slide that is more of the principles and process and that may be considered part of um, I'm not sure if it's health and all policies, but it's having to do with sustainability. But it's more of a of a way that you approach your work, uh, and that's what what I certainly heard from council members. So if, as opposed to kind of a thing <laughs> that you would be focusing your effort on, um, so if if I, I'd like to get a sense of the council, if that would be acceptable to remove that from the list before we do any uh, virtual dot voting. And so that would um, leave it with um, seven things as opposed to eight. Could I maybe, maybe just to make it easy to thumbs up if you agree with that. Now, of course, Cynthia is um, eating, so. <laughs> Thumbs up. I don't okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> oh, I think you mean it's like a visual thumbs up. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's fine. You know, verbal thumbs up is totally fine. So, okay. So, so we will do that. And then uh, Claire has, has, has captured your various comments with regards to the green economy. And so those comments, of course, will be provided to staff and much of the, the emphasis of what council members have said is that your, let's move forward with what, what you're already doing. In some cases, market it better, perhaps name it, brand it, um, but to uh, continue with what you are doing. Um, so then that leaves the remaining ones. And I did hear the comment from uh, some council members that different things uh, on this list relate to others. No question about that. Um, if we were to to put these in bubbles, um, they would all be intersecting. <laughs> everything does relate. There's no question that everything does relate to each other. Um, um, and each one of these represents a body of work, um, either by, um, well, not either, you know, by the staff um, and by the city council as represented on either committees or council meetings and or community meetings and so forth. But it's a body of work for each one of these. And then each one of these are worked on within your existing resources, um, although you're hoping to get some stimulus funds and so forth. And, and that's, of course, always um, hopefully important to keep in mind that that might be on the horizon. So um, with that in mind, um, I'd like to encourage the council to keep these as separate, the remaining seven, because they are all bodies of work, even though they are 
um, interrelated. So with that, um, so Claire, if you could just, um, we're not going to spend a lot of time going on the, to, through these slides, but I just wanted just to do a quick review. As you can see, we have captured your comments. And then for fiscal sustainability, in addition to the comments that you have here, uh, there's a, a lot of other work that's being done um, in terms of budget balancing. Um, and the council, of course, is involved in that, as is the staff. Um, a lot of work being done there. Um, and the next one, um, homelessness. Um, I think we've captured the, the comments there about the county needing to take the lead role. Um, a lot of uh, other comments about the how the city can reconsider um, its approach. Uh, yes, Council Member Matthews. I had my virtual hand up as well. Okay, um, sorry. Uh, yeah, I, I, I would like to see what you and others think about renaming this support solutions to homelessness rather than fines. I, I think there was kind of general agreement. On yeah, there, there was. Uh, thank you for bringing that up because I think we had that in there. And if, um, you know, thumbs up to that to support solutions to, to homelessness. Yeah. Um, okay. So, yes. And, and Mayor, do you want to make a comment there or is your hand, or are you just su supporting that? I wanted to make a comment actually on okay. the, the first one because um, it just occurred to me that we, have that as long-term um, fiscal sustainability, but I was just wanting to see if how uh, council members felt about short and long-term fiscal sustainability. Mm. We, we do have to think about, you know, what what can we do right now um, to keep businesses stable in addition to the long-term uh, sustainability. So I just thought that it might be worth plugging that in there too, because we do have to meet the immediate and long-term needs. Can you go back one slide, please? Yeah, so Claire, let's go back to that. There we go. So right now it says take actions to ensure long-term fiscal sustainability. So you are certainly working on short-term right now with regards to, to your budget balancing, and, and you've already taken some actions on that. Um, and then a variety of other things that are more short-term. Um, but if that is a, a council consensus to um, uh, really address short and long-term fiscal sustainability. It could be wordsmiths, but, but getting short-term in there as well. Um, so let me just, let's just do a sense of the council. If you yeah. think that that's a good idea to add short-term in there. And also this one um, incorporates the um, encouraging new business and industry growth, which is down in a separate item. Well, yeah, it, it is because it is related, but we're keeping separate the because there's a whole body of work involved in working with businesses and you've got a whole economic development, you know, effort. Um, and so we didn't want to lose it, but we can certainly acknowledge that it is part of fiscal sustainability. <laughs> no question about that. So, so with, without like collapsing that other one into this one, because there's there's a, a, a lot of work tasks that need to be done, um, it certainly can acknowledge that that they are interrelated. And Martine, anytime you want to jump in, um, you know, from the, your perspective, you feel free, of course, as you will. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. No, I think that's true because I think the um, in the short term, the question of uh, in particular of uh, additional revenue will have to be addressed uh, if the council wants to consider any kind of measure for say November of next year. That's something that would have to be done in the short term, certainly within the 12 to 18 month uh, time frame. Right. Okay. Measures. Yeah, that makes sense. okay, so Claire, on that one, um, just to add in um, short term and long term on that slide, if you would please. So we can just Sorry, I have to stop sharing one second. I'm having oh, technical no. challenges. Oh, um, don't don't worry about it. Then let me bring that back. Oh, it was just fine. I just had a little bit of an issue right there. Technology. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my stars is still driving me bonkers. Okay, that's okay. Well, we we know that we're going to do it. Let's just put it that way. Yes. <laughs> we will track it separately. Okay. So um, let's move on then, Claire, if you would please to just um, number three. 
So these are just the comments. Again, we're not going to go over these, but we did attempt to capture the, the comments um, on what this meant to council members in terms of providing for public safety um, as a, as a, it's always a priority of every city, um, but as a, uh, is the intent. So I think we've captured that. Um, so let's move on to the next one, Claire. Uh, downtown investment, um, we tried to capture that this has a whole range of things. And, and uh, one of the things, takeaways that I got from this is that you have a number of projects that are already underway with regards to your to your downtown, whether it's some housing projects or or other kinds of projects and, and keeping those moving forward. Um, again, over a 12 to 18 month time frame, as which is the focus of this, but capturing all of those comments. Mm -hmm. Martine, did you have any comments on this one? No, I think that's right. I think certainly the, uh, um, the housing projects, the Metro project, which is a transportation project as well, and then there's also the uh, the Warriors uh, Arena uh, is, a, is a piece of that too. Okay. Uh, the farmers market uh, improvements. So th there's a, there's a lot, uh, and it, it has both short term and long term, of course, because housing is, is considered to be sort of a, a linchpin to having a, a strong downtown, uh, particularly uh, some of the retail and, and, and other uh, sort of support services that are that are downtown. Okay. So keeping those moving forward. So. Uh, Councilmember Matthews, and then I think Councilmember Golder, you might have had your, or no. No, mine was Sorry. just, what's EUT? Oh, transient oh. occupancy tax. It, it, it should just be uh, TUT, not TUT. Okay, the TUT is what confused me. Uh, the oh. TOT, I know what that is. I didn't know what the TUT. Oh. TUT is the transactions and use tax, so that's your additional sales tax on top of the um, baseline. It's it's a more technical term. We always we just, we always just call it sales tax, but there's two pieces to it. Oh. And, uh, you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. Uh, Council Member Matthews, you had a comment. I think um, it's your feeling that this whole package of downtown stuff should be a separate item apart from the fiscal sustainability. Yes, and the reason is um, that we look at it as a body of work. I mean, if, if you were to throw it into the fiscal sustainability one, then, then it, it's this giant thing, and it still takes staff time, mm -hmm. and it still takes resources, and, and everything takes a work plan. You know, if, if you're going to get anything done, you've got to have a work plan to do it. And so by having it separate to say, you know, is, is this really one of the top three priorities, then, um, then it um, is something that is more manageable. Okay, and I would just say also that some of the really important projects coming forward are not necessarily city of Santa Cruz projects. Ah. They may be privately funded, but they will take a whole lot of staff time. Some of the private mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. housing uh, and other, other projects, there's a number of projects, uh, yes, that'll be moving forward downtown. Yeah. So it'll take a good deal of, of time to, staff time to process. Yeah, so it's acknowledging that that they're that to support downtown and and maybe the name of that downtown investment is not the right heading, you know maybe it's you know supporting the the success of the downtown or so, or something else. You know you may want to you know we could wordsmith that as well, but the idea is a focus on the downtown. Right, and there'll be some overlap with uh, obviously the housing one as we yeah. Do that. Okay. Uh, I don't see any other hands up at the moment, so let's go on to the next one. I just wanted to, before we do voting, I wanted to just do a quick. So the green economy, we're gonna move off to the side and not have a vote on that. Um, and the local economy, that one is really restart and grow the local economy with jobs and business creation. So there's um, a bunch of things um, that were mentioned there, some of which have to do with, um, you know, grants that you might be able to get. Um, others have to do with your economic development efforts that are underway and really focusing in on those. Um, and, uh, you know, this is one where I don't know if Bonnie's uh, on, I think she is on, I think it might get for her to sort of weigh in. Okay, on sure. What she mm -hmm. about these and whether anything's missing here. Good. Uh, Hi, um, 
or good evening, um, council members, <laughs> mayor and vice mayor. Um, so I'm looking at this, and you know, one interesting thing that we're doing right now is we actually have a draft of a economic development strategic plan, and we were waiting for uh, the work that you're doing today and any follow-up work to finalize that so that we can incorporate any additional initiatives in it. I think a lot of what you've covered this evening so far we have captured in our ED strategy. We do have some additional things in there, but um, I'm looking at this, and some of these are, are pretty broad strokes, so I, you know, I support everything, everything that's here. Um, we do have a lot of initiatives that are underway, both on the recovery, um, you know, but I think we can sort of tear off uh, a lot of the things that are, that are here. Um, we do have existing partnerships. I would say one thing that we are doing is, which is, is relatively new because of the pandemic, is that we're looking um, almost more regionally, but certainly countywide as far as recovery efforts. And so we are leveraging those partnerships, um, not just at the university in Cabrillo, um, but with other jurisdictions, um, other uh, supporting organizations, countywide chambers, to really uh, work together collaboratively to try to address uh, business recovery and economic development. Right. And I think the other thing to keep in mind here is that, I mean, there likely will be some kind of stimulus package. I guess the one thing we don't know whether there'll be any sort of direct support to cities, but certainly there, there will be some support to businesses. And I think uh, uh, local businesses and small businesses, and uh, I think we'll likely have to play a role there. So th th that was something that will be before us, I'm pretty sure at one point or another here in the coming months. I'll also say as far as the arena, just since that, that did come up earlier, that we do have a deadline next year to decide or extend um, on whether or not we're focusing as a permanent home in Santa Cruz for the Santa Cruz Warriors. So that is a temporary building and our agreement with the Warriors and Seaside Company does end next year. So. Um, there are some decision points. They don't necessarily need to be captured here, but there are some big directions. Um, and you already mentioned the wharf as well. So I think they've all been captured, some of the big initiatives and projects. Okay, I think Mayor had, a, had his hand up and then uh, Council Member Matthews. So I just need to clarify this again, and maybe Martine, you can clarify this for me. When it comes to some of these big projects, is the idea that they're gonna keep moving forward or that tonight because I, I i i just you know i don't think that it would be in our best interest to say we're not going to focus on any of these big projects knowing that there's financial constraints around them and that you know it can lead to for example the warriors leaving which we don't want um but then like where do those fall into place because you know is it that you know warriors are going to fall under infrastructure along with the war from the library and the rail trail or is it that you know with downtown investment, that would include the downtown along with the the uh, Warriors Arena, but it wouldn't include some of these other pieces. So I'm just trying to get a sense of when it comes to, you know, infrastructure like the arena, the library, rail trail, war, right. where do these fall? And I think that's where we'll have to sort of bring that back to you insofar as the, as the work plan, because I mean, to a large extent, these are, what I'm hearing a lot of is let's continue to do some of the major initiatives and projects that we're working on. And so then the question will be, uh, you know, of these, you know, how do we treat them if, if for some reason uh, resources are, become more limited or there's decisions to be made amongst them? And so maybe that's where we can uh, identify maybe some prioritization or criteria amongst amongst the different projects. Or so we'll have to think that that through to some extent. Um, uh, can we maybe can we maybe put those projects under? either infrastructure or some other category because it just seems like it, it just it just seems weird that some are gonna fall into place with others and I don't think you know it seems weird that if, if we're gonna if we're gonna make a decision on where to go tonight or if we're gonna make recommendations on where to go, it seems right. like all those projects should kind of get pulled out personally. And well, I don't know what I mean. Yeah, there is, and there is overlap in the infrastructure category because when I think of the infrastructure, when, in, at least the way we thought about it, it, it's more of how do we how do we find funding to um, increase our infrastructure investment? Uh, that's been sort of our, our challenge, and so 
I don't necessarily think of is the housing project this infrastructure or some of these projects. It's right. really more how do we, uh, again, invest in our infrastructure that uh, we where we've had deferred maintenance. And that I'm saying that it's not a priority, but it's really the issue has been uh, identifying funding. Um, it's not necessarily a list of projects. It's it's it's, it's funding to uh, to make improvements in, in in a list of projects. But it's it, it's you know the ones that we're working on we. We know that we have opportunities for funding. We know they can move forward because there's there's options to make them move forward. But in, in terms of generally, when we talk about infrastructure, it's, it's about how do we make progress in areas where we don't have opportunities uh, because of funding uh, constraints. Okay, so um, and maybe some quick comments from first Council Member Matthews, then Vice Mayor Myers, and then Council Member Watkins. Um, we've been so repetitive in a way, uh, I'm wondering if a lot of this local economy could be pulled up into that first one. When we talk about, I think these, these things come forward and then um, some of these facilities folding into downtown or I think what we would see. Just seems like there are some obvious projects we want to carry forward. We have to compress it to three. <laughs> Let's not lose something critical. And these were all kind of just um, a compilation of suggestions from all of us. There wasn't any real waiting within which were the important ones within each category also. Right. Um, Vice Mayor Myers? Yeah, I just have a question. Um, I'm kind of struggling, sorry, I sort of went back through the, the document during the break and it occurs to me when I look at the project list in the back, because ultimately the focus areas are sort of made up of projects in, in some cases or mm -hmm. um, literally requirements. So, you know, there's a number of things on here when I look at the projects in the back there's a number of things. So I guess my question is like, for example, the housing element, like we have to do that, right, by law. You know, I mean, that's something that we don't get to say we're not gonna turn in our housing. I mean, we could, but that's not strategically very good. Um, the other would be the like LCP update. And by nature of having to do that, the, we, we capture the resilient coast. We also, I know, have to update our climate action plan this year because of, you know, the requirements from the state. So my question is, um, uh, when we have a kind of a requirement, either under state law, um, do we assume that those things have to move forward um, or how do we handle that situation um, in the context of the areas of focus? So those aren't insignificant projects in and of themselves. So I, I'm just trying to remedy sort of the project list a little bit right now because that's that's reflective in these areas of focus as well. And so maybe I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm just curious if you just have a very short, quick answer to that. <laughs> Sorry. No, that, that's a good question. I think from the staff perspective, we, we assume that we're gonna be continuing to do the, the, the basic requirements that uh, we have in place. So that's, we're, we're assuming that those things are gonna continue. There are various things that we have to do. Um, and, uh, but what we'll also do is once we get your priorities here, we'll look at those also within the context of those. But uh, for now, we're not saying that we're not gonna do any of those basic things. Because a lot of those are supported by grants, right, Martin? So they're, in some ways, they're a little bit cost neutral, not completely, obviously, but you know, in many cases, right. those kinds of things are supported by grants. For example, the housing element, some of that work that we're right. doing. Right. Okay. We're, okay. we're gonna get, continue to meet our obligations, some of our basic requirements. And right. And some of the things that we have to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So, uh, okay, that's helpful, thank you. And, and then when Martine and the staff come back with the work program for the top focus areas, you're gonna see a lot of those projects because they are moving forward. But it, but you know, as I mentioned before, they don't happen just because they happen, but they happen because they are, uh, they are priorities and that you're allocating staff and resources to them. So, um, but they will move forward. Uh, Council Member Watkins. 
Uh, thank you. Yeah, no, my question or sort of um, process comment is similar to what I think Vice Mayor is, uh, Myers is getting at in regards to what are sort of um, what are these parallel tracks of projects that are already underway, but then what are becomes the sort of um, crossroads where you have to reprioritize based on limited resources. So then I was looking at the agenda and I see that you have um, established a framework for decision making regarding new projects, um, work or services, but is there also a recognition that there might be um, kind of the integration of existing projects and how, did that, how does that fit into that framework around prioritization or I mean, I'm, I'm, I guess there isn't that really that crisis. Are we going to establish that later in the agenda, that criteria? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. That will help. I think that will help. Yeah, I think that's the idea. I think, uh, as, Jan, as, as Jan mentioned, I mean, the work plan will kind of further refine and define. Mm -hmm. So you're giving us kind of what, you, what your kind of overarching sort of goals and priorities areas are. We're going to take those and integrate them into what we're doing and create a work plan that we'll come back to you. Uh, and then later on in the meeting, yeah, we'll go through the uh, sort of creating a mechanism or structure for um, making decisions around changes or adjustments. Okay. So at some point it might be helpful to identify what's already existing and underway likely to be completed or mandated by law for us to complete versus what's a new kind of idea project that we want to have that discussion around prioritization. Okay. Okay, uh, Council Member Matthews, you have your hand up. Yeah, similarly, um, just looking at the project underway, um, it would be very helpful to know which ones are just going to proceed. <laughs> like Highway 19, the contract bid is out, I assume that's going to proceed. Um, yeah. Which ones are, yeah. could be deferred, which ones it would be crazy to not continue, et cetera. We're almost being asked to choose between things now that we haven't got the full picture of. Right. Yeah. And again, I think at this point, you know, we're not necessarily asking you to give us the specific uh, no. mm -hmm. projects. It's, it's really your areas uh, that are important. Um, and then we will integrate that. And, and, and obviously, you've mentioned some things, and we'll take that into and then, and then incorporate it into everything else that's in the hopper and bring that back to you and, and tell you, given what you've made priority, what you've identified, this is what it means, and, and this might be the, what would be the impacts for these particular uh, projects or things that are ongoing. And you can say, well, that's not acceptable or it's not. It's basically operationalizing what you will end up with your top priority areas. It's so that you will know over the next 12 to 18 months what staff and, and council uh, will be working on. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the next one, Claire. Uh, affordable housing, just to you know, recap this, um, you've got a bunch of projects or several projects that are uh, moving forward already. Um, and so you've uh, made a number of comments there. So if this is selected as one of the you know, top priorities, all of those will, um, those things that are moving forward will continue. And if they, those are projects that will continue moving forward in any event. Um, and then the last one, um, discussion about maintenance, uh, excuse me, infrastructure. So these are just some of the comments that were captured there. So um, let's go on to the hard part, which is, um, selection of the top priority focus areas. And again, maybe just to revisit for just a, a second, you know, why we're doing this in the first place. Um, the council or the city of Santa Cruz is a, is a complex city. You have a lot of needs. Every, all of these things are important and work is being done on all of them. But the notion while you are in your recovery period is to seek some guidance as to what are the top areas, the top three areas to really focus in on during the next 12 to 18 months. It does not mean that everything else stops, of course, but that that gives some guidance to say out of everything we're doing, uh, these three areas really need to have extra attention, extra focus, and then 
after um, those have been selected, then Martine and the staff will bring back, as we've talked about a few times, a, a work program that says this is how we are going to uh, accomplish those areas of focus over the next 12 to 18 months. So that's the idea. Mayor, your hand is up. I did want to ask if maybe, um, you know, before we vote with number six, I think that, you know, there's the need to create, but there's also the need to sustain affordable housing. So I'm wondering if the language could be such that it reflects that although there is the need to create more affordable housing, there's also a need to sustain, sustain. Um, the, the affordable housing that we already have. So. Okay. Just to that change. Are there any any objection to that by the council to add in sustain? I don't see any head shake. Okay. Um, we will add that when 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 Claire can uh, technically add it, she can add that word sustain. I don't. Um, but in the meantime, the way uh, and she'll do. The, oh, there. Okay. Looks like Councilmember Matthews has her hand raised. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed that. Thank you. Um, I want to ask the question again. Given what Bonnie described, what she's doing to um, support local economic development, do others not feel that five should just be put into number one? Long-term physical sustainability with the cost recovery we talked about with new revenue, which, which I just mean a revenue measure. But then in the discussion, I mentioned uh, rebuilding our taxes, basically rebuilding our taxes. I, I just put that out as a question. <laughs> I'm really hard to choose. Well, you know, let me just say, that it, it, it is um, always, everything is interrelated. Yeah. And I can appreciate the interest in, in wanting to combine those, but there's a whole uh, work element and work program that will be involved in, in what Bonnie described and in working on the local economy that is related, but it is different from um, the, the budget, the fiscal sustainability. It's all related. And uh, but if you, if you make it too big, then it may be that, that, that um, you know, you, went, you, you end up not realistically being able to really focus on three areas. And then let me ask another question regarding number seven, which is the infrastructure. I seem to hear from the city manager that the big infrastructure projects like water and wastewater, you know, the really big utilities, um, those will kind of continue anyway. Um, and um, that what we typically think of as the infrastructure is different from projects. Am I understanding that? So that do, do a lot of these things that we looked on the last pages as projects in the work, are those actually things that are gonna happen anyway so we don't need to choose that one? Do you see where I'm going with my question or not? Yeah, because this kind of relates to the other piece of this that I think is important to keep in mind is that, uh, you know, in the past when we've done our strategic plans, you know, they, they really are, there's more longer term aspect to it. In this particular case, we're doing interim recovery plans. So it's a little different because we're, we're in this sort of crisis environment with multiple emergencies. And so it's really about what are we going to focus on, you know, here in the immediate, you know, 12 to 18 months. So it doesn't mean that these other things aren't important and we're not going to work towards them, but it's really, and so infrastructure again is one of those where there's some long-term aspects to it, uh, but there are some long-term connections to the other items. Uh, as some of you noted, some of you noted that, for example, some of the housing projects are related to infrastructure, or the work that is infrastructure. And while there might be some things that we do in this 18, 12 to 18 months around those items, the, uh, the overall goal of, of infrastructure and funding infrastructure is probably a little bit more longer term. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, at, at some point you may want to pick up the um, the project that you started before, which is a long-term strategic plan. And under that, um, then you would be looking at least five years out and you're, you're gonna have more than top three. You know, you're, you're gonna have a lot more. It'll be much more robust, but it, for this one, it's, it's really the interim recovery 
period, 12 to 18 months, is, is the focus. It's much more short-term focus. Okay, so, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so we, was uh, Council Member Watkins, you had your hand waving, I think. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Sorry, I'm trying to make sure that I'm capturing what I'm hearing. And I think what I'm hearing is there's an interest in really identifying sort of the broader uh, themes of priorities mm -hmm. give um, our limited ability to really focus on everything, but also recognizing that we're still, for example, going to partner with the county and try our, you know, play our role in preventing and combating um, those experiencing homelessness. Our public safety is actually a core component of what cities do. Or, so, like, but how are the broader themes essentially going to fit into our priority setting? Yeah. Is, is that correct? Okay. No, that that's right, and it's. I, I guess it, the the advice I would I would give on all of this is that if you make things, if you don't say what as a council, what say your your top three areas of focus for this interim recovery plan uh, period time frame will be, then you really do leave it to the city manager to do. You really do because. Uh, choices have to be made because you don't have enough resources to do everything. And so when it's always helpful for a city manager and the staff to know, boy, for this 12 to 18 month period, the council really would like the, the top areas of focus to be these three things. And th so that, that's just very helpful from a policy perspective to, to have that. So that's why we're we're trying to you know focus on in that regard. So if that's if it's okay, oh, Councilmember Matthews, you have your Sorry, virtual I hand up. Do I understand that downtown investment does include um, assuming um, putting energy into a lot of the big um, affordable housing projects and other yeah, it's the whole package of downtown investment. Yeah. Yeah, and the wording on that one, um, if that, you know, may need to be modified slightly too, you know, so that it's, you know, a little bit broader once we get into wordsmithing a bit. Um, okay, so the way that we are um, going to go about the voting is, is um, asking council members to uh, select three, and all you need to do is have the numbers. So if you say, my numbers are one, two, and three, whatever your numbers are, um, and then we will go in order, and then you'll just call those out, and Claire is going to record those, and we'll go in order that you typically go at your council meetings, as I understand it. I have those written down. Um, oh, the first one, though, is no longer here, Catherine, Council Member Byers. So we'll start with um, Council Member uh, Matthews, then Brown, then Golder, then Watkins, then Vice Mayor Myers, and then the mayor. And Jan, I'm going to um, shift these back to the way that the numbers are in the workbook. I just want to make sure that the numbers you have on your pages um, match okay. um, because we removed number oh, five. Okay. okay. Okay, I see what you've done. Okay. So, um, council members need more time to select your three. You've all been thinking about it, I'm sure. Okay, then why don't we go ahead with, um, who did I say? Uh, council member Matthews, just read off your numbers. Okay, um, subject to change when I know what the particulars, how the particulars shake out. <laughs> um, uh, one, four, six, and uh, if I could have a four, it would be seven. You only get three, though. <laughs> One, four, six. <laughs> As a facilitator, we always get complaints of I don't get enough dots. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, next is Council Member Brown. Uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, so one, seven, and six. Okay. Uh, uh, next is Council Member Golder. 
One, four, eight. Okay, Council Member Watkins. I'm like the one that wants the dot, but I can like cut. <laughs> <laughs> You're that one that I always have to watch at those, at those workshops. <laughs> uh, so it's so hard. <laughs> I'm going to, I think, because I've kind of rolled up in my mind how to do, so I think I, definitely one, which I feel like could also encompass six, so I'm not saying six, so one, and then four, which I think could encompass seven, and then eight. One, four, so and eight. One, yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. Uh, Vice Mayor Myers, I think you're next. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a dot cutter for sure. I might even be a quarter. Um, <laughs> uh, definitely one and definitely four. Uh, and I cut, and just, just for the record, um, I kind of think four, I think seven can roll into four just because of the pro projects we have online, um, coming online. Um, but I will say one, four, and eight. Okay, got it. Okay, and Mayor Cummings. Um, there's a lot of overlap and obviously I'd like more dots as well, but, uh, <laughs> I'm going to say, um, four, six, seven. Four, six, and seven. Okay. So, um, I got everybody right because we yeah one council member is here okay um, so we have only two that have a majority of the council um, if if you want to have three then we could do another round of one between six seven and eight if you want to have three and we've done that before as but it's fairly simple to do that so um, shall we do it you want to you want to get a third one in there? Okay, so uh, we'll go in the same order. So starting with uh, Council Member Matthews, you get one vote out of six, seven, or eight. And we're going to start all over again. Yeah, but no, no one one vote of all. You can only vote on six, seven, or eight because then we're trying to to reach um, a majority. And you can pass if you want. Hmm. Well, I really believe that six could be part of number one. So um, I'm going to vote for number seven because I think infrastructure is mostly going to trickle on. Okay, number seven. <laughs> That's my logic. <laughs> okay. Um, Council Member Brown. Uh, same, seven for the Council Member Matthews stated. Okay, Claire. Um, I, why don't you record those um, on the other side of the, of the line, on the other side of the line? Just. Oh, I don't want to keep all the. Don't no, worry, I didn't lose them. I just okay. made another slide. You won't be able to see it if it's on the other side. Of oh, actually, you will. Never mind. Ignore yeah. me. Yeah, just. I got <coughs> Can you go back? Yeah, there we go. I mean, so we can just, okay, because the ones that we had before, th that's what we had before. Okay, so now um, we've had two council members do their second round and both said number seven. Is that correct? Did I get that right? Okay. Um, so then we have council member Golder. So I also think that um, housing, the, the, the need to address and sustain uh, affordable housing is longer term than 12 to 18 months. And um, I think six is kind of the same as four and one. And I've also heard our facilitator say twice that these pro capital investment and, you know, um, maintenance projects don't just happen. And so I'm afraid of falling in after a big storm in the next 12 to 18 months if we don't replace the piling. So I'm going with eight still. Stick to eight. Okay. Um, Council Member Watkins. It's so 
hard. <laughs> I kind of, um, I do feel like six is part of um, one. And I think for the interim for affordable housing, a lot of our efforts have been centered around downtown. So I do feel that covers what are the biggest affordable housing efforts happening within the city under the downtown investment. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think I'm going to stick with eight too, okay. but it's hard. <laughs> it's always hard. Uh, Vice Mayor Myers. Brother muted. Oh, let's see. So Claire, I think we, we needed to have another X under eight. So yeah, two people. I'll also kind of lean on the sort of the um, I'll lean on the um, uh, fact that I kind of feel like four and seven is sort of happening with four. Um, and I think so eight, so eight has a couple of meanings for me. One is that, like I said before, I think that outside of the enterprise funds, um, I think there's infrastructure that gets lost kind of in the mix of infrastructure um, and I'm specifically considering some of our parks facilities and, and our parks and open spaces as infrastructure. I think they're important green infrastructure, frankly. Um, so, um, and then also um, there's there's work, for example, with the Resilient Coast um, program that's coming online, which is really around protecting our coastal resources, which are both a tourist piece and also part of our green infrastructure in terms of protecting us from sea level rise. Um, and I hate to see kind of lose that, those things, um, even for 18 months, I feel like those projects are important to keep online. So uh, I'm gonna go with eight. Okay, thank you. And Mayor Cummings. Um, <clears throat> kind of based on what council member Matthew said and just with our conversations with the city manager, it seems like a lot of the capital improvement projects that have been moving, or our infrastructure projects that have been moving along aren't really gonna stop. It seems like that train's going, so. But I do think that, you know, when we think about the need for and sustaining affordable housing, I mean, if there are stimulus bills that come out and the, our economic development director has talked about this, you know, the more that we can have projects ready to go and identify opportunities to you know either create more affordable housing or that there are programs that we can use to sustain and keep people in their homes I think that's going to be really important as over the next 12 to 18 months we see you know the sunset of the eviction protections how do we kind of keep people in their homes and how do we kind of sustain affordable housing whether that's through you know credits that can come you know as part of the stimulus package that can go to landlords or to tenants what have you, but I think that we need to keep a lot of effort on that. So I'm gonna go with seven. Okay, so um, you have uh, a lot of needs and so you really have ended up with two top priorities that uh, a majority of the council, a strong majority of the council really does uh, want to focus on and that's okay. Because there are only you know seven uh, focus areas there and something will be occurring in all of those areas that they're just not gonna be the, the top areas of focus. Um, so I, there's nothing wrong with only having two. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and the city manager will be coming back with a, with a work program um, on those two and indicating um, with the other projects that are, that are already underway, you know, what will be happening with those. So there's, there's nothing wrong with, with having two. In fact, I wanna applaud you we're only having two. I think that's actually a best practice, <laughs> given given uh, the kind of conversation that you've gone through. So, uh, yes, Mayor. I was gonna say, it looks like there's uh, Councilmember Matthews had a question. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to look over here to see the participants. The blue hand, Councilmember Matthews. Um, yeah, I said at the beginning I wanted the ability to change my vote. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Um, and um, particularly on the issues around number seven, 
Um, my interests are not so much in funding emergency relief programs because um, I think our resources in those cases are short term. I'm hoping we will have more state and federal um, resources to do that. My interests are more in policy and actually uh, planning and um, um, matches and so forth. Uh, so what we mean by that might be rather different. Um, and I would also like to know, um, again, what what are we not doing if I don't vote for infrastructure? I may have some image of how things are proceeding. Um, I do think of them more as physical things, either facilities or utilities, rather than parks. Mm -hmm. I think there, there are issues around our parks, but I don't see that as infrastructure so much. Um, so, you know, before we come back for a final swat of this, I, mm -hmm. I do have to say, the infrastructure component is a real concern. Just like, how are we interpreting these things before we <laughs> sign the check? <laughs> Okay, so let's hear from Council Member Watkins and then Vice Mayor Myers, and then any comments from the city manager. I, I guess I was just gonna say that I think what I'm hearing this really be is for the city manager to have a sense of where the council is right now in terms right. of top fees. Addressing affordable and sustaining affordable housing is, is a huge priority for our entire community and city. And how are we gonna meaningfully do that in the next 12 to 18 months, you know, with the housing blueprint study session and our downtown housing coming online? Like those are all for me, I think just interconnected. And if, if that's the if the point is for, for our city manager to hear that and our interest in our um, sort of thought process for connectivity, then I think you know we've expressed a, a real shared interest around around that as a council, as well as how are we maintaining and supporting um, the most vulnerable kind of aspects of our general fund and the infrastructure associated with that, whether it be our coastal resilience or and or our parks and maintaining those um, critical resources. So if, the, if, the, if essentially it's not sort of throwing them out, but saying, I hope, you know, our city manager hears that, that this is something I think we all pretty much expressed and shared. And I'm not trying to make it so that we have four, but I'm just not trying to say that I don't think it needs to be, maybe, now maybe I'm just throwing out your whole doc process, but like what, you know, only three either. I think if it's just to express what we hope the work is to be, I think we all are in alignment in a lot of these areas. Yeah, I think it certainly seems that there is a lot of alignment for sure um, among council members. Uh, Martine, do you have any maybe final comments on that? And then we will talk about the, oh, uh, the I, work plan. Oh, did I have oh, I, oh, I, oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, Vice Mayor Myers. Yes, I see you do have your electronic. Yeah, I'm, I, I, uh, while I see the immediacy of what we need to accomplish with the focus on the 12 to 18 months, mm -hmm. I guess what I'll say is that um, the way that I'm looking at eight and, and, you know, to council member Matthew's sort of question is that um, we're looking at, um, you know, we're looking at this really crazy point in time, right? We've had this pandemic where people can't um, be inside. <laughs> um, we've had uh, wildfires that basically have surrounded and burned the watershed above our town. Um, we have just completed probably the first of its kind study of our coastal resources. Um, and not only those resources from a tourism perspective, but how they actually provide buffering from uh, damages from sea level rise, as well as um, potentially the, the disappearance of, of world famous surfing waves and others. So my perspective in this is, I, I, number eight to me is is a reach. It's it's saying today that in the next 12 to 18 months, we're not gonna lose track of the infrastructure and the green, most importantly, the green infrastructure that provides the benefit to our town for the future. And so, you know, green infrastructure is actually protecting, it's doing what we've done well and over the last 50 years, we've created a green belt we've um, set back some some of our facilities from the ocean. We've done things that we probably didn't know we were doing right when we did them. 
but um, this is a critical time when funding sources and other attention is going to be paid, especially from our governor and our state, to say, you know, these are the investments we see as the smart investments moving forward. And that's why really, I think eight, we have to expand, you know, infrastructure is not pipes and streets anymore. It's forests that are well managed to provide buffering from uh, catastrophic wildfires. It's uh, a watershed that's, you know, managed so that we don't get um, catastrophic flooding. It's, you know, infrastructure that is um, natural, like, um, you know, living shorelines that actually buffer from sea level and, and the king tide effects that we're already seeing. It's uh, having places that people can walk when they're not, when they can't, when they can't uh, be around each other. So I see number eight as it's a reach goal, but it is the future. And so council member Matthews, that's my pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, Councilmember Matthews, your electronic hand is up. Yeah, it's, it's a discussion. Um, and I guess I want to get back to looking at the significant projects underway, which things are going to continue. We um, have a consultant working on our objective standards for multifamily housing. That can make a big difference in affordable housing. We're about to have a study session on uh, state, all the state uh, changes in the state law. That could mean a lot for us. We haven't had that yet, we know there's a ton of changes. That could make a big difference. Our actual affordable housing projects are centered downtown. So in terms of physical um, investments in affordable housing, that's mostly where they're happening, not exclusively. Um, so, you know, I think I, a, a case can be made for changing my vote there and, you know, just voting for the infrastructure there again, when it comes back, I want to know <laughs> what's dropped off. And can, what are we keeping anyway and what's dropping off? So that, that's a future assignment to staff. So I'll just change my vote there. Okay, so just to be clear, so you're changing your vote from the um, seven to eight? Yeah. Okay. Okay, and Council Member Watkins, you had a comment? Actually, I just wanted to see if Martine wanted to speak to that. Like, I don't. I don't necessarily see eight then being a trade-off for seven. I think that seven is obviously a priority for our city. Yeah. It clearly is going to be an investment in our downtown with some of the projects. Naturally, we'll include aspects of needing to have, um, you know, tenant protections and looking at state resources. So those are all, like, I don't think it's one or the other per se, but I wanted to see if Martine wanted to just weigh in on that. Sure, of course. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm sitting here thinking about how to, uh, how to sort of sort this one out a bit because there is obviously there is some overlap in some of these things downtown investment we've all agree is critically important and a lot of that has to do with the the construction and moving forward of some affordable housing projects right so uh there's some overlap there but affordable housing means different things to uh there's different aspects of it i think there's difference of opinion perhaps in the council around that uh, the various policies that are different so um, the policies that we can look work on, um, and uh, so I think I think what we'll have to do is uh, as we prepare the work plan and identify the air, you know, the areas within each of these categories. I think that'll help you uh, with respect to determining, you know, what it means because there's, there's a bit of a thing. It's it's a bit hard right now to like fully define it. Um, but I think once we put in the work projects between in, within each one of them, I think that will help. Um, and because again, this will come back to you, so this isn't the, the, the final. Um, and and so I think your, your clarifications that you can provide today, to the extent possible, about what what it means to you. And for, for example, uh, Councilmember Myers talking about the infrastructure and what it means to her, uh, that's helpful. Um, so that uh, we can. Uh, try to incorporate in the work plan what exactly is, uh, to the extent possible, what, what, what it means uh, and what those priorities should be. So, uh, Council Member Brown and then Watkins. So, yeah, just to follow up on that, I, um, I also think that uh, Martine, your point, uh, Bernal, Martine Bernal, your point about um, 
this coming back in the shape of uh, various projects within the the various priorities um, will help clarify mm -hmm. because it seems to me, you know, as we all know, different departments take the lead and responsibility and m much of the activity for certain uh, functions. And so infrastructure and affordable housing may not be the responsibility of the same people. And so in term when we talk about trade-offs, we also, I think, want to be thinking about um, staff capacity departmentally. I mean, it, it, for the city manager's office, it, they're all um, kind of going to take time uh, regardless. But I, I do think that that's uh, an element that we ought to be thinking about as we prioritize. And so, you know, I'm going to stick with affordable housing, but I don't see um, them being, you know, that dropping off just because we've now got a two to four on that. Um, I hope it wouldn't, that, that would be um, a shame, but um, just thinking about who, you know, who has a responsibility and how that fits into the, into the mix. Okay, Council Member Watkins. I, you know, I appreciate um, those comments uh, by Council Member Brown. I think it makes sense to think about how, um, you know, it's not one or the other, but this is information input for uh, potential examination of various, you know, capacities of various departments. And I think that given that there is an election, you know, to an earlier point made that we do want input from, you know, at minimum two new, two new council members. So there will be an opportunity for them to weigh in as well. So given that one and four are strong, I think that ideally the city manager heard that seven and eight are also very high priorities as we think about how this is returned to the council for refinement. Okay, um, Mayor Cumming. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I just wanted to comment because to uh, Councilmember, some of the things that's been coming up, it seems like, you know, when we think about interim recovery, there's two things that come to my mind. One is economic recovery, and that has a lot to do with, you know, job creation, job stability, and then community stability. And that really, for me, is along the lines of, you know, how do we keep people in their homes um, so that they're not displaced and put out on the street? Because we you know when I but looking through this list when thinking about like public safety, I feel like you know for um, you know long term fiscal s stability and downtown investment, is that really going to take you know a lot of staff time from PD or fire? Probably not. You know um, versus economic development in the planning department, and so I think there is an opportunity to kind of look through this and see you know if there are areas of interest that have a lot of overlap with certain departments. Obviously, we want to try to tease apart what, um, you know, and, and create a priority for those departments so that we're not bombarding them with um, work. But, you know, when I think of improvements and maintenance to infrastructure, again, to Councilmember Matthews' point, I think of like buildings versus, you know, um, I, I feel like our water department, you know, our, is going to continue to try to, you know, work on how we can maintain the water infrastructure and look for funding. Fire is going to keep looking at, you know, how we can prevent and you know make our um, open spaces um, more resilient to fires and then you know I think that um, it's you know 12 to 18 months we've just passed our parks plan there will likely be funding coming down to help support our parks which does have a lot to do with tourism but then I also think you know the reason why I push affordable housing is that you know what I heard about other times like after the recession for example that you know, if you have shovel ready projects, there could be more funding that goes into that. And we, you know, we, we, but we have a decent amount in our affordable housing fund. I think we should really be trying to figure out how we can get more funding from the state to make all of these projects happen. Because a lot of concern that's come through the community is that um, given the funding that we do have in our affordable housing fund, do we have enough to create the affordable housing, you know, and to fund the projects we have? So. I just keep that in mind and just think about, you know, if there's other opportunities for us to get more money towards affordable housing. That's the, the right now we're also in a really good position. But again, I think that to the extent that we can figure out, um, you know, if there are departments where where our priorities are leaning, there are, there are departments that aren't going to have that big of a uh, lift and we can figure out other things that we can work on with them on the side, I think to that extent. Uh, we should keep that in the back of our minds. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor Myers. Yeah, I, I guess I'll just state, you know, I, it, these are really tough choices. And, um, yeah. 
I think we have, you know, we have some legs on affordable housing. I, I, again, I keep pivoting to this investment in downtown, um, completing the projects um, that we are looking at doing downtown. That gets people back downtown. Uh, it gets people living in downtown. Um, it, it hopefully will um, rebuild our metro, our transit center, which again comes along with additional commercial spaces that we can be creative about when we move forward, thinking about um, rethinking maybe some of how we use those commercial spaces and retail spaces to the mayor's point earlier this evening. So, you know, my intent is not, you know, I, I was joking when I when I made that comment earlier. I mean, I, I, I absolutely value, and I know we affordable housing is is probably the highest priority. I think for most of all of us, all of the council members, um, it, it's it's a target we have to constantly keep our eyes on. And um, so I, you know, I just believe that, um, you know, based on my statements on number eight, you kind of you kind of heard where I am, but I, I just wanted to clarify, you know, I, I'm, it, it's difficult to try to rank these because they're all very important. Um, and again, I think eight is a reach goal and it's the kind of thing that we need to start thinking about now um, because many, many communities will be doing that. And so um, I, I just wanted to clarify that. And then um, there was one other thing, but it's gone out of my head. So that I'll, I'll end it there. But that, just to clarify, I absolutely think affordable housing has to be a target. Um, I think we've got some really strong projects and uh, we keep moving on those and, and hopefully we'll be successful. Okay, thank you. And then final comment from uh, Council Member Watkins or was that before you, you had your that blue hand up? <laughs> no, that, I mean, that was I before I, I had my hand up, but oh, okay. I think I couldn't tell. in general, I, you know, I, yeah, I agree. I think, you know, if the, F, if the interest is to really give a broader kind of sense of where the council is with everything to the city manager, yeah. I think there will be refinement, more information to help us actually, re, you know, define and refine workflow for the next 12 to 18 months. Okay. And, and I'm clearly hearing that affordable housing is important as well as infrastructure. So we'll, we'll keep that in mind as we prepare things to work. Okay, so uh, you have uh, long and, uh, well, short term and long term fiscal sustainability, that'll be wordsmithed a bit, uh, the downtown and uh, infrastructure are your top three. So good, thank you. Thank you for hanging in there with that. That was not an easy process for you. It never is. Um, okay, so if you could move on, Claire, to the next slide. That's just okay, we can, we've already done that. So, uh, Martine, this was just your slide and just indicating um, what you'll be coming back with and, and roughly when you'll be coming back. So, our uh, yeah, so as, as was discussed, uh, we will take your discussion today um, and uh, uh, what you've identified as the, as the priority areas here. Um, and then the input that was also provided around things that might uh, we might be able to stop uh, uh, that was in your packet, uh, along with uh, 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 everything that's in the hopper to, to bring back to you a work plan that outlines. Uh, and in the, in the interim, if there are particular areas or uh, questions that you have about particular projects that you just want to make sure we, we don't forget about or that we include, but, you know, let me know. Um, we can try to be as inclusive as possible, but there may be some things that we uh, might miss, but, but it's to the extent that you can uh, make me aware that would be helpful. Um, and then we will bring that work plan to you. And I believe we're, our goal is to try to get that to, to you in November. Is that right, Laura? I think that that's what we're looking, shooting for. Uh, but also, as was pointed out earlier too, recognizing that we will have a change in the council. Um, and so therefore we will need to touch that with the new council um, as soon as uh, possible. So. Uh, new council members probably won't really have their first opportunity to sort of weigh in until January. Um, so we will, we will do that. Mar Martin, I think the goal for November was not the work plan. It was the actual translation of what we heard from the council members today to the interim recovery plan. 
So they will actually receive a document that represents the interim recovery plan and these three components, and that would be in November. I think January is a more realistic time frame to give us time to work with the department to massage and categorize and organize all of the existing backlog into these different priority areas to bring them back for a facilitated discussion. And um, with a January timeline, we might also be able to get the new council members input into that process so that it all hopefully would come together at that point. So it sounds like there'll be another opportunity to kind of refine this a bit, a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. So let's move to the next slide, Claire. Um, is everybody hanging in there okay, or do we need another break? Everybody hanging in there? I guess you're used to long council meetings. So <laughs> for the moment, we'll, we'll, we'll keep moving. So uh, Gloria, if you could just uh, briefly touch on this one. Sure. Yes. So this is um, a, a list of um, projects or items that the council during the interviews um, and also the department has identified as items that could be deferred. And the purpose of this is really to just give this feedback and this input to Martine as the work plans are being developed. So um, we're not going to uh, vote on them, but I do want to, because these came from individual members, do want to give you um, the opportunity to maybe comment on some of these that you, you do think they're important and can be, or you, you do think they can be deferred, or you absolutely don't want Martine to consider them for deferral. So as I said, all of these items came from uh, interviews and staff. So just quickly, um, public works, there's some public works projects that are funded and some that might just be um, a wish on a wish list. Um, one discussion was about essential versus non-essential services. So if there are any non-essential services left that the city is involved in, that those could be deferred. Um, non funding to nonprofits was discussed, the civic auditorium, and I'm not sure if that's a bond program or uh, that is funded. Um, the parks and rec program, mm -hmm. especially during the COVID time, that a lot of those may not be happening anyways. Um, housing projects, some of the larger ones, and big policy, longer term uh, discussions, uh, the university's long range development plan, uh, council initiatives that are outside the priorities, project labor agreements, um, non mandated advisory committees and commissions that still require staffing um, and, and therefore city resources. Uh, the rental housing inspection program, city arts programs, the wharf master plan. Um, I'm not sure it's fixed costs that don't generate revenue. Uh, I'm not quite sure where that came from. And then county functions um, that the city is currently doing that. So there, I believe there's some human services type functions that the city has taken over, but that really belong in the county's um, basket and then some of the climate um, uh, and sustainability programs. So all of those came out of discussions. And so I just want to give my team some feedback uh, on these from the council. And I think we have the next slide uh, to account for that. Although we might want to leave it up mm -hmm. so people can see the list. Yeah. Thoughts yeah. on this? I'll take notes and then everyone can see. Um, yeah, when the mayor, forward. mayor. Go ahead. So a couple comments. One, I think we just um, we just had a lot of discussion on on um, infrastructure. So I just say take those projects with a grain of salt, obviously, because if we just decided that um, if there is you know an agreement that that was the third, um, and you have like civic auditorium renovations, well, do we does that fall under? one of those priorities or not. So I think just taking that into account. Um, the university, um, we just invested money in um, continuing with our UCSC advocate. So I just think it'd be a waste of money if we stopped, if we were paying that person and then we just said, we're gonna stop moving forward with that. Um, and I think it's really critical because the university is not stopping with the LRDP. So if we 
stop now and we will be like very far behind and i think that a lot of folks in the community will be very upset um with our you know lack of moving forward with that and i think as i mentioned earlier with with regards to climate and environmental sustainability that is probably one of the top priorities next to affordable housing in our community so um those i would say will probably keep moving forward so, uh, and then I guess another question is that a lot of, there's a number of items on here that are coming back um, probably before we actually, um, you know, before we actually decide on what this you know, recovery plan is. So I look at the Wharf Master Plan, I know that's supposed to come back either at the next meeting or the following. Um, so I just, I'm just a little confused, um, but with, with, you know, and we just had that long conversation of what projects are going to keep moving forward, which is which versus which ones will get stalled. So I think that, um, you know, those that are um, infrastructure and kind of, um, you know, university climate um, are some of the ones that kind of concern me a, a little bit the most. Hey, uh, Council Member uh, Brown, as well as uh, Council Member Watkins. And again, just input to the city manager. That's all this is. So um, I, I share uh, Mayor Cummings' concerns about uh, kind of how some of these seem to, if we're going to be deferring, seem to contradict what we just said we wanted to prioritize. Um, but I also I have, well, when I have one, a comment about the list and the amount of, of time and resources um, really varies across these different um, items. So, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to uh, think about, you know, some of the, you know, we could say, I mean, the work master plan alone could be like four or five of these other items, right? So, um, so just thinking about which ones that to be deferred will actually, um, you know, lead to, you know, opening up more staff time and then what the costs are. I think we really have to consider that. Mm -hmm. um, so, but then just off the top of my head, there's a couple I have questions about. Um, and so the first one is the on uh, number three, reduce funding to nonprofits except food banks. That is that a defer reduced fund, reducing the funding or reduce the funding? And how does that save staff time to cut nonprofit funding if that's what we're talking about? I don't, um, I don't get that. That's one question, and then um, yeah. I, so I don't know that it's a question that needs an answer. But um, what staff time is the is the city really putting in on the university LRDP work? I know our planning director comes to some of those meetings, but it's largely been taken on by uh, county supervisor and three members of the council, and then the advocate that we're funding externally. Um, well, we're, we're funding, but it's an external position. So um, just kind of wondering about that. And then um, the last one, I just, well, actually there's two more. Um, I, I'm not comfortable saying that we want to um, reduce or defer climate adaptation and environmental sustainability programs. I mean, we have one, you know, one staff person who does the lion's share of that work and does an amazing job. I don't know um, how uh, deferring those particularly given that we've said we want to really be focusing on green economy and kind of and using that climate lens in all of our, our work, it doesn't seem like deferring that activity is going to really be of any benefit or save much um, in the overall staff budget, time uh, budget. And then um, the last point I would make is, you know, I understand the point of number 15, uh, deferring activity actions around county functions that the city carries out. But I do, um, you know, I just want to be mindful of the, the challenges of taking that kind of stance. I mean, we, we just have to look to the Sentinel a couple of weeks ago and with a big story about how trash is not getting picked up because the city and county are in a standoff. And whatever the, story is behind that, how that happened, um, the fact, it doesn't matter to me so much as the fact that that was on the agenda, I mean, that's what people are hearing. And so to say that we are um, going to stop being, you know, we're going to defer any activity on county functions that the city is carrying out, 
I just think it's one more step in that, you know, county versus city fight. And we've moved to a place of what I feel like is pretty good cooperation, and I would just hate to see that get undermined. So um, just a couple of questions and come, and then the others were comments. I'll leave it there. Okay. And let, let me just remind you, this is uh, how this laundry list came from the council interviews, and it was also um, happened before you took the budget actions that you took. So, um, so we're just, just trying to give uh, Martine just a general sense of this, but these did come from council members. Um, there weren't, there wasn't necessarily any consensus, but these are some of the thoughts that came out during the discussion. Okay, uh, let's see, Council Member Watkins and then Mayor Cummings. I, I guess I, I wonder for the purposes of t tonight's meeting if, um, I think Mar Martine heard that there was really two strong areas of consensus for the council, um, really four in terms of just wanting more clarification around um, affordable housing being wrapped into existing initiatives around our downtown investments right now, specifically in the next 12 to 18 months, as well as looking at how we're integrating um, infrastructure as the most vulnerable infrastructure in terms of our parks, in terms of our uh, general fund funding around uh, climate adaptation and, and environmental efforts. Um, and then I think um, also in all, you know, in kind of all transparency, there will be two new council members that I feel as when I was a new council member, not having my voice as part of the strategic plan, um, at minimum there's two new councilors, there's four openings, right? And so I think, you know, we want everybody on the council moving forward in the next 12 to 18, 18 months to have their voice be heard and really their fingerprints on this document so there's buy-in and um, coherence. And so I think, you know, for general purposes, I think, I, I, I maybe I'll ask Martine, did, did you hear kind of where we're at? Is that good in terms of where we wanna go? And then more information will be forthcoming and opportunity for more input from, from newer individuals as well. Yeah, no, no, I think, I think, uh, I think you provided the input and, uh, and again, there'll be more input. And again, I think these were, we didn't filter these in any way. I think we just, what we heard, we just, them on here and and I think as, as Gloria pointed out some of some of these things we've you've already essentially provided direction on through the budget process and some of these will be before you and you'll be there'll be an opportunity to provide direction as well uh, so uh, yeah to be honest I, I don't I don't know how useful this is <laughs> this may not be maybe maybe one final comment from uh, the mayor and then we can move on <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna say um, and yeah, too, I think, you know, it was good to hear that this came before we had our budget cut because um, yeah. that provides some context. And, and I know it came before, after we kind of just had our previous discussion. But then I would just point out that with, you know, parks and rec programs and city arts, I think that, um, you know, the arts are underfunded and really don't, you know, need a ton of funding for what the, minimum, you know, what they need to operate. I mean, they always could use more. But, you know, I think to the extent that we can keep arts going, it's a good thing. And then additionally, with the Park and Recs program, I mean, a lot of those, a lot of folks in our community use those programs as their kind of outlet. Um, it helps with, you know, physical and mental health. And so I think that, you know, to the extent that we can keep those going to provide members of the community with that outlet and avail, you know, opportunity to get into the open spaces or to, you know, um, have access to recreation, I just want to say, Again, you know, trying to keep those moving is probably a, a good idea. Okay, uh, Council Member Matthews. This really did. This list really did represent just kind of brainstorming without discussion among council members. So, Correct. I'm comment specifically, but in terms of engaging uh, new council members in this, you know, <laughs> we swear them in and then we go on vacation. <laughs> they come back and deal with some heavy-duty stuff. So we have talked previously about the onboarding process. It's something I'm really interested in. I think every single person on the council will say, boy, when you first step into that, as much as you think about what you know about how the city works, et cetera, <laughs> there's so much you don't know. And particularly to be asked to make really, really big decisions, just the orientation generally and on, on the upcoming big decisions is gonna be so critical. Yeah, and just, you know, that's, that's being worked on now. We also invited them to participate today, recognizing that uh, 
and this might be helpful. Uh, so they were all uh, uh, informed of the uh, meeting today and so forth. It looks like Tony wants to say something too. So. Yeah. Okay, Tony. Yeah, thank you. I, I just want to point out, I, I think the mayor covered this uh, at, at, at some level, but uh, item seven, pause on dealing with the university's long range development plan. It's not really an option insofar as the university's long range development plan is moving forward. And so we really need to react as the university um, moves this uh, plan forward. So the extent, uh, I mean, the extent we deal with it is, is a question, but um, the timing is not because we are not in a position. Okay. Yeah, but again, I agree. It's really critical to have any council members uh, uh, be onboarded as quickly as possible and updated as quickly as possible. So we do plan to have a very robust program to get them on board. Okay, so I think that's just input and uh, uh, Martine has has that a little bit of input and as he's working on uh, work programs um, to come back to the city council, um, he can uh, consider uh, any of these that might may be appropriate and may not be appropriate. Okay, so let's keep moving then, Claire. Um, so we now uh, are shifting gears. Um, so metrics for tracking recovery. In our council interviews, we, we did ask council members what might be some of the things that, that could help you gauge recovery, gauge the, and we asked department heads the same thing. Um, at some point in the future, the city may want a very robust uh, performance uh, measurement program to measure all kinds of things. Um, the intent for this is to have a, a limited number of metrics that would help you gauge, maybe even through a dashboard for the public, but, but be able to tell yourselves and the public, you know, to what extent are you making some progress. So with that in mind, um, and as, as this slide says, um, we, we will have on some other slides to show you. The idea is to agree on a limited number of metrics. Um, we're suggesting up to 10, because that, that would be reasonable for staff to be able to keep, keep track of. And for those metrics to be ones that uh, there's, readily, there's data readily available for, and that the staff is already tracking. Um, but that can put it together in an organized fashion. So we, there were a total of 17 possible metrics that were suggested either from council members or, or from uh, department heads, and those are in the workbook. And we applied some criteria, and again, this is shown in the workbook, uh, to each one of those, and the criteria having to do with will the data actually help measure recovery? Is the, is the city currently tracking the data? Um, if, it's, if the city is not, is the data readily available, which could be the case. Uh, we wanted to know is the data available at least quarterly. Um, many cases it is, some cases it's not. Uh, that doesn't mean it's a non-starter, but it's a, it's a useful question depending on how often you want to report. And then the final one is does the city have some direct influence over the outcome? Um, so we applied those, those criteria to the suggestions. Um, these are uh, 15 of the 17 uh, metrics actually have data readily available. That's quite a few. Um, so that's a good thing. Um, so we, um, our firm actually has a lot of experience in performance measurement. So, so we used um, uh, another individual in our firm who helped um, take a look at these and these are worded um, as a percent change because then that tells you um, to what extent you're making progress if you're measuring change. So um, these are again in your workbook and I'm not gonna read them to you because you can, you can see them on here, but, but they, are, uh, uh, they range from some of the financial metrics that you are currently uh, gathering to uh, business closures as a metric that data is available for, to commercial vacancy rates, unemployment, um, you know, permit, you're already getting that data, you have that, um, you know, some data about housing, 
um, and homelessness as well as crime. So there are actually quite a few data points that you could measure if you, if you wish to. Um, and then the next slide, Claire, shows um, there are a couple of suggested metrics that would be very interesting and that could be useful in the future if data could be found in a readily available fashion. But they're right, right now that is not the case. And so we wanted to show those to you, for instance, the percent change in the number of new jobs would be a great thing to know. But right now there's not a good source of that, so that may be something in the future that, that could be the case. And same thing with percent change in the number of housing evictions, be really good information to have. Right now, there's not a good data source for those. So um, what we wanted to do is to get some sense from the city council as to for you, what would be the most important things to track. So if you move on to the next one, Claire. Um, so again, a little bit of voting. We think this is not gonna be quite as complicated um, as the last one. Um, so out of these 15, we wanted to find out from council members what would be most important for you uh, for the staff to track. And we think that if you each select your top five, we'll probably end up with, you know, eight, nine, 10, you know, in that range that would um, be ones that could then reasonably uh, come back in an organized way to report back to the city council and to the community in terms of tracking recovery. So before we do that kind of virtual voting, are there any questions or comments from council members? Yes, um, it looks like council member Watkins followed by Matthews. Um, yeah, I guess I just, I think some of this data seems pretty, um, you know, consistent with what we already track and can be used as a proxy measure for some of the things that we're hoping to monitor. Mm -hmm. So I, for me, I think, I'm just trying to understand what is the type of data that is more, um, I, I mean, like we, 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 we track POT, you know, and we track sales tax and we track a lot of these things as we should as a city. So I, I guess I'm, I'm not quite clear on what exactly this, does okay. I'm, I'm, yeah yeah well the the idea is to tie it to recovery so yes you do track it you definitely do track that uh, historically um, many of these have been tracked um, but to tie it to recovery so that say a year from now you'll be able to um, indicate whether you think um, the local economy has recovered based on these indicators I just, I think I have one last clarifying question mm -hmm. though. If, if it is tracked to recovery, then um, I think naturally some of them will fall into the areas of recovery in terms of, for example, sales tax revenues or commercial mm -hmm. vacancy. We're gonna naturally like look at those as proxy measures for how we're doing as a community. Um, and I don't know if excluding any really does us any favors really because we want as much data as possible. So, I, I mean, I, maybe I'll, I'll open it up to my colleagues to see their thoughts on it, but those are my initial kind of reaction. Sure, okay. Council Member uh, Matthews and Brown. Um, oh, Council Member Brown, I think. Council, uh, Council Member Matthews, she, I, I lowered her hand, but I think her, her camera was frozen. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> My internet was unstable. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, my impression is uh, we were not to just throw out a few, but choose our top five. And mm -hmm. as I read the criteria, it's to, to pick indicators that are pretty available that are not going to be more work. We're not going to start That's new right. and so forth. So um, um, I'm comfortable proceeding with that. I did have a question number 11 is the percentage in the number of permits issued by any type. 12 percentage change in new housing units permitted, and 13 is percentage of all new housing units deemed affordable. Now, is that permitted or built? Because one of them is permitted and the other is unclear. I mean, it would be progress to know how many of the new housing units were deemed affordable of those permitted, even if they are not yet built. 
you see where I'm going with that? Yeah. Um, I think that's a good question, whether that would be probably permitted. Um, if all new housing permitted would be one and then affordable permitted would be right. 13. Yeah, that's a good clarifying question. We um, both, you know, so yeah. it's, you know, up to the council's preference. But, but if I said, Lee, you, you already collect this information. So it seems to me we get it pretty regularly. Yeah, uh, on an annual basis, we have to report this information to the state HDD, the Housing and Community Development Department. And so, um, you know, we have it at, at minimum on an annual basis and, and we can produce that on a, a more regular basis as well. Yeah, and for affordable, you'd want both permitted and built. Mm -hmm. Laura, did you want to add a clarifying comment? Oh, I think you might be muted. Thank you. Um, I think it would be might be helpful for the council members to also understand, even if we do have all of this information, um, a subset of these would be used in the periodic reporting that we do back to council. So you guys will see your focus areas that you've identified, will have progress information at a brief descriptive level, and then we will also have the key performance indicators that you identify in that periodic reporting information back to you. You would still be able to get the full plethora of the data that planning and community development collects, that ED collects, that finance collects, but this would come consolidated as it relates to this interim recovery plan progress. Good, thank you, Laura. Okay, Council Member Brown, I think you're next. Yeah, I, I just wanna follow up on uh, Council Member Watkins' point because I'm still uh, a little confused as well about how to, how to think about prioritizing these. So if, mm -hmm. and if I pick five, they get, am I siloing? Well, is transient occupancy tax more important than sales tax or admission? You know, like I, I guess I'm just, I'm still not entirely clear what the purpose of narrowing, at least in certain areas are. I can see mostly on the column on the right, um, perhaps some of those being a little bit harder to, um, you know, gather that data and make sense of that data um, and, and how that ties to recovery. But in terms of the tax revenues, I, I guess I'm just not, I'm not understanding. And if I don't pick any of those, then that's a whole entire, you know, I mean, that's a huge piece of the, you know, uh, the economic recovery picture and certainly the fiscal health of the city. So I, I, I'm still just a little, um, you know, I'm, I'm just not clear how that winnowing process would happen, mostly with the um, items on the column on the left, one through eight, right. one through seven. I, I think probably the, maybe one explanation is to, um, to restate a bit what Laura said, um, all the data points are being provided that the data is available, but in the intent is to provide them together in one um, in one report, so that the council can see based on all of the data that that you have selected, the metrics you've selected, um, are we making progress in recovery? So the idea is to not have so many that would. Um, um, be a, you know, a, a, a challenge for staff. And we're thinking about 10. But I guess I you know, can turn it to Laura or Martine in terms of you know, the number. I think the other possibility process-wise is to go through the process that you guys have identified, see what the finalists are, that the votes turn out to be and then if there are things that seem like they're just missing and we need to add then we can do that but I think trying to get into the actual vote process see where it takes you what the priorities come out to be and then if it looks like there's some from one through seven that don't make it that really fundamentally need to be there regardless then we can add them in if we try something like that yeah we could certainly do that uh, Vice Mayor Myers 
one for it. I'm going to give you five. <laughs> okay, want, Claire, are you uh, ready? Yep. I like uh, business licenses issue, business licenses renewals, business closures. I realize the data is unre unreliable, but if there is a way that we can get that. Uh, and I would say across the city, not just downtown. Um, percentage change in new housing units, all types permitted. And percentage change in number of housing evictions. I know that's a hard one to get, but I'm just hoping that somehow we can figure out to get it. Those would be my five. Thank you. Okay, very good. Okay, so she's got the ball rolling here. Okay, Mayor Cummings. Yeah, I was just, it took me a little time through our conversation, but then um, I did, it, 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 you know, kind of, kind of realized that, like, yeah, if we want to pick where are our metrics for success, you know, and what do we think are those metrics and just kind of honing in on those. Um, so, yeah, that makes, it makes a lot of sense after our discussion. So I'm going to go for it as well. Um, I'm going to go with uh, two, uh, six. Eight, nine, and ten. Nine, ten. Okay, good. Um, and then oh, wait, did 16, 16 just appeared on here. 16? I don't think it was. Uh, that was yes. one, of, one of the previously uh, mentioned, the percentage change in housing evictions was not previously oh. included on this list. Oh, no, then that shouldn't be on that. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that would be when that data could be become available, okay. then right now there's no data available for that. Okay. I, yeah, I missed that. That was, that was Donna's. Uh, okay, yeah, but if there's just no data available for that, but it can be okay. noted that when the data is available, then, then that could be something that could be provided. Yeah. There were two. That would be my. The data becomes available. I've got that. I'm on that one as well. So. Yeah, there was another one on that. When the data is available, to the other one was um, okay. new jobs. That was the other one. There are two that there's just no data right there's right now, so no way to report it really. Okay, uh, so then let's go. To to uh, Councilmember Matthews next, so we'll, we'll go back to the order. Okay, with an eye on how are we actually measuring our recovery, um, I would say number one, percentage change in TOT, number two, percentage change in business licenses issued, and I take that to mean both new and renewal, is that correct? Um, well, those are actually two different data points, but um, so you could pick one of those, and then we can we can talk about that because there's I know one is one is new ones and one's re renewals because that's very important too. So if you I want know, people, did they survive? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But anyway. Yeah. But, yeah. I would say business license issues. Yeah. Left. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, percentage change in sales tax revenue. I'm looking at our two big income things, <laughs> DOT and sales tax, um, which have just suffered the most. Um, how uh, measurable are commercial vacancies? Is that something that we have a good handle on? Uh, we were told by staff that that is available. Bonnie, do you have a comment on that? Yes, it, it is. We have through LoopNet, um, we track that regularly and we can okay. run, actually run a report pretty much at any time. I would say uh, that's given our focus on recovery, that's an important one. And um, the number of Permits issued by type. Okay, very good. Okay, um, Council Member Brown, you would be up next. All right, um, one, three, eight, nine, and eleven. Eleven. Okay. And uh, Council Member Golder, you're up next. I only had one question. What, what's number five? What's admissions tax? Boardwalk, movies, oh. concerts. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's a general tax that we receive. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, then I'm, mine, my, my 
I've been mindfully made up from the beginning. One, two, three, four, nine. Very good. Uh, Council Member Watkins. Okay, so I'm just going to say a few things and then I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. try to just stand to the best of my ability. So I, um, I appreciate this process and I feel like we don't want to um, rush the metrics that could be the best metrics to assess our progress. And um, there are very specific metrics that fit very specific policies that we want to make sure we're aligned mm -hmm. with. So. I hope that this is just sort of a sense, but not necessarily um, ignoring uh, best practice as it relates to data collection and, and proxy measures for local government and economy, and and um, also trying to get um, kind of like just point in time what's happening. Everything is happening really quickly, so we want to always seek more information. So. I think I'll just, I'm just going to express my discomfort in this process, having worked briefly for a data collection agency. Um, but that being said, I will um, kind of share some of my priorities. I do think we want to look at the um, at number two. Um, I think we'll want to look at number eight in, uh, for sure. Number nine as well. Number 11, did I do five? And number 13. Actually, I'm sorry, number number 12, which I think covers number 13. Okay, 12, okay. <clears throat> okay, and we've already heard from the vice mayor. Um, let's see, I think no, I lost track because we weren't in order. Did the mayor, did you already? Yeah, that's everyone. Yeah, you did, that's everybody, okay. So so the ones that, that have um, the most interest are, um, looks like one, two, three, I'm just looking at if it's three or more, just the ones with the most interest. One, two, three, eight, nine, 11, could you highlight those in, in a color, Claire, just so we can see those a little bit easier, the ones with three or more, just to get a better sense of, of those. Okay, and then, uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, you really could have more. I mean, we were thinking of 10, that that would not be too many for the staff to report on um, as part of this uh, interim recovery plan. So um, are there any? We did, we did get to 10 total in terms of the ones that got X's by them, although um, the rest of them got no more than two. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you could, as a council, I mean, you're going to be, um, uh, tracking your sales tax in yeah. any of them. that certainly could be um, that would be another one that you would be tracking this would be it'd be reported on if you wanted to and then your if you want to do ones with two then you would add uh, number 12 as well Laura do you want to comment on these I think um, going back to what council member Watkins had said one of the things that we can do at the um, as we debrief this meeting, is we'll go back to the top priority areas that you have identified and make sure that we actually have indicators to measure each one of those areas. And when they're not, we'll pick from this list or find additional possible ones to recommend to you. And that's what you'll see in the November packet. Because there does have to be a measurement line of sight for the three to four focus areas that you selected to some sort of reporting mechanism for progress. So we'll make sure that that exists and we can tick and tie that. Okay. So what this exercise then provides the staff is some preferences. If these are the ones that are uh, preferred by council and then there may be some additional ones as well. Good, okay, good, thank you. All right, so then 
Gloria, I'm, oh, go ahead, okay. Council Member. I just wanted to make one suggestion. The mm -hmm. League of California Cities, as well as the National League of Cities, also identify various metrics that local jurisdictions should be tracking. So I just encourage, sure. as, as we move forward, but we reference best practice. Mm -hmm. Good, okay. Uh, we have some other hands up. Council Member Matthews, did you have another comment? Well, yeah, if we could go back. I mean, I, I beg my fellow council members to pay attention to the sales tax revenue. <laughs> I mean, if we are measuring recovery, that's a big one. And similarly, admissions tax, you know, that's a boardwalk for Pete's sake. So, um, and that just plays out into TOT and mm -hmm. sales tax. So that's all those other things. But, um, and then the ones I don't know if they're so readily available are personal income. Um, the homeless count happens. Um, not as regularly, so that's maybe a tough one. The crime rate seemed to be nothing but a cause for argument. <laughs> so, um, you know, I think the things that we collect pretty routinely, unemployment is something I think we get regionally anyway. So if we could choose 10, it seems that we have some, we, we do have 10 really credible, yeah. readily gathered ones that relate to what we're talking about. So yeah, we certainly do, yeah. So Councilmember Golder and then the mayor. I was gonna say, say almost the same thing is that w the reason it was easy for me to choose and I didn't have any comments before is I felt like we're measuring economic recovery. And so for me, if I'm in economic recovery at my own house, I measure my bank account, I measure my in income streams coming in. And so like our big income streams, those are easy to measure. We could measure those once a month, four times a year, whatever it is and it's not gonna take a lot of staff time from my perspective, whereas some of these other things seem really abstract, like the change in counting homeless people, the crime rates, the affordable units, even the unemployment rate, I don't know how often we be, have access to that. And so I think if we're just trying to, even the, I, I'd urge for number six to and number five. Um, so but, I mean, anything where we can just measure how much more money we're bringing in so that um, we can get back into <laughs> Got it. Okay. Um, thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> um, to Councilmember Matthews' point, um, I do agree with both of those. You know, the sales tax and the admissions tax. I think the one thing, well, yeah, I know that retail obviously has been going down, but that's not the only thing that we measure as as it relates to sales tax. I do want to point out though to um, my colleagues that one thing that's that's been tracking throughout the news during the pandemic is that construction actually hasn't slowed down. So if we think about that, and if we even think about the, um, you know, buildings and proposed construction that's coming into Santa Cruz, we haven't seen a stop in construction. So if um, permits uh, issued is, is an item, is a, you know, uh, a factor for determining recovery or not, I mean, I don't think, and maybe our uh, planning director can speak to that, but I know the national trend is that construction hasn't slowed down. So it might not be as good of an indicator as opposed to sales tax and admissions tax if we're gonna go with them. So I just wanted to put that out there as well. Okay, well, I think we have a lot of uh, input. Or, oh, please, Council Member Brown, did you have another comment, I think, or a comment? I just wanna make one quick comment. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, of course, is this in response to Council Member Matthews? Of course, I think we should be tracking uh, the sales tax and mm -hmm. uh, this tax is, wasn't gonna use up three of my five on the various tax revenues. It's kind of back around to my question about why prioritize one of the taxes over the other. Um, I agree completely. I kind of wish we could just put those in one category. Um, and then I just want to make a comment about the business licenses. Um, and I know they're both on here, business license um, issued and um, business license renewals. But I, I think it's really important to think about those distinctions because when we look at business license renewals, I mean, we say we are about, um, you know, a thriving local economy and, you know, local businesses. but if we are not renewing a lot of those and new licenses are being issued perhaps to, um, you know, out of town chains or what, is that really a measure of health? Um, it depends on what our, you know, our community values are. So I just think that 
um, that's a distinction that we really want to make sure we we are clear about when we get that data. I just wanted to point out the economic development director has her hand raised as well. Thank you, Bonnie. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I, I just wanted to make a comment about the business closures. Um, and earlier in preparing for this, we had some of these comments as well. But the, particularly, that's a, not the most reliable data point. I think we need to realize that it is it is really hard to track that, um, particularly in real time. Um, you know, you can use utility data to help support that, but it's 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 not reliable as necessarily a snapshot in time. Um, so we can come back to that, um, but as far as a metric, you know, a really reliable one, it is not that. And I think, Laura, you have a, another comment? Yeah, um, I've been texting with our finance director, so we can definitely add five and six to the um, list just as a default. Okay, good. Okay. And uh, Council Member Matthews. Um, regarding business closures, I actually asked economic development about that maybe a couple weeks ago in reference to downtown, and because you see the you know stores that have closed, but it does turn out to be much more complicated, and it gets back to the issue that Council Member Brown raised about business license, licenses issued versus renewed. And but I think that is yeah. again something that's pretty um, retrievable. And I think most of the business licenses that don't renew are the small, really small local businesses that don't make it. And because we have so many really small businesses in Santa Cruz, that, that's a good chunk of it, is my impression. Okay, uh, Vice Mayor Myers. Yeah, I'll just, um, I just wanted to reflect on um, uh, uh, Director Lipscomb's comment and, um, you know, I, I guess I I feel like, you know, the expertise level in our, you know, between our finance department, economic development, planning, um, you know, there's, I think we, I think we have sort of in place sort of a little bit of the pulse of, so I guess long story short is, you know, I respect staff sort of bringing this back with maybe okay. some refinements. Mm -hmm. um, again, looking at some best practices through League of Cities or, you know, um, and, and and try to kind of maybe come with a proposal to us because I, I think that's very helpful. Good. Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, so I think we've got a lot of input, got some ideas from council members as to what you uh, might like to see back, and you're um, asking staff to provide some uh, recommendations. So, good. Okay. Uh, so we have uh, one more hour before we are um, supposed to be finished, and we will be. We're actually getting close to it. Does, do you need a break, or shall we just power on through? Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Yeah, just, all right. Okay. So, um, Gloria, I'm going to turn it okay. to you. Okay. So one of our objectives for tonight was to um, – work with council to develop a framework for decision making on requests that come up during this interim um, recovery period. And it is requests that are outside of the priorities that you've already established. So you've established your priorities, staff will come back with their work plan, so you'll be moving forward. But in this period, most likely there will be new things that arise, new requests that come up. Um, the first uh, question or goal will always be, can it wait to the regular budget cycle? So if there's a new request that comes up, a new project, a new effort, can you just handle it during the regular budget cycle? And if you can, that's going to be what you want to do. But that won't always be the case. And next slide. So what we want to make sure is that um, new requests are are at a minimum. Um, you don't want to be revisiting new requests every week. That's the purpose of having your priorities. So um, you want to keep them at a minimal. And you want to, um, any new requests that come forward, you want to make sure that there's an analysis of the impact, whether it's a fiscal, a staff, a resource uh, impact. 
So the criteria that we're developing is really going to be focused on new requests that require more than eight hours of staff time. And I understand uh, you have a policy for how council handles requests that require more than eight hours of staff time. And that is that you um, have to have a, a council, three council members um, uh, agree uh, to, to the request. So when we look at these requests, and in the next slide, we're gonna um, look at the, the framework two ways. Um, one, some threshold questions, and then the criteria. So next slide. So for each request, these are some threshold questions that we would want you to consider. So the first thing, is it consistent with your recovery priorities? So if, if something new comes up, is it gonna support your priorities? Is it consistent with the recovery priorities that you've already worked on to identify? And then the second is um, having other council support. So you need to have three council members before you bring this item forward. Uh, next slide. And so then the, the criteria for council to consider these new requests, uh, and this um, comes from input that we did receive from council again during interviews and also from some of the staff recommendations. So the, the, the first criteria and new request is, is it urgent? Is it an emergency? Because if it's not urgent, if it's not an emergency, you can handle it during your regular budget process. But uh, as everyone's experienced this year, there are lots of urgencies and emergencies, you know, certainly um, at, at the time we were doing the interviews, fires were going on. So uh, if something is urgent, if it's an emergency, certainly you're going to have to deal with it and part of your analysis is going to be um, the funding impact where the funding might come from. Certainly on public safety issues like fires, um, you know, you deal with the emergency uh, and, and deal with the second part later. Um, the other criteria for consideration on new requests is the fiscal impact. So one part of it is what is it gonna to cost the city and where will that funding come from and what will we have to stop doing in order to do this new project or new effort. Um, but there are also gonna be instances where it could be new revenue or possibly, potentially new grants that come in. Uh, and certainly on the federal side, if new funding is available, you still wanna do the analysis because any new grant, are there ma is there a match requirement? Um, uh, are there other resources that the city is going to have to uh, consider in accepting new grant, new funding, um, setting priorities for the new funding? So there's, there's the fiscal aspect that you'll want to examine. Um, the other criteria is mandates. There are uh, state and federal mandates. Um, usually cities try to comply, but mandates don't always come with funding. So there will need to be some analysis. Is there a risk to the city if it does not immediately comply? Um, and what is the impact on other operations within the city? The other criteria is the impact on city resources. So it's not always the fiscal impact. Sometimes it's a staffing impact, a facility impact. Um, sometimes uh, if, if uh, city resources need to be realigned, it means other projects will be uh, delayed or refunded. So these are criteria that we heard from, uh, from the council and from the staff, and so we wanted uh, to offer these as um, the criteria that you would use for council-initiated requests. Uh, next slide, and by applying these, um, then this helps the city manager um, one, um, it helps him know uh, your priority, not only your priorities, but the criteria you're going to consider. Helps him keep staff focused on the priorities. Uh, it also is going to enable the city manager to set limits and also decline requests if they've not been vetted through the process, if they don't have uh, uh, three council members supporting uh, the request. Um, and uh, uh, and also, um, it will help him 
uh, continue to enforce that um, council policy of three council members supporting the request before it even moves forward. Uh, and I wanted to give Martine an uh, opportunity if he wanted to chime in on, uh, uh, on how this will uh, enable him to move some of your requests forward, but also to ensure that you're staying focused on the priorities uh, and not having multiple requests come forward uh, that shouldn't be dealt with at this time. Uh, yes, uh, and, and I think you've, you've essentially covered it, but uh, I think the idea here is to uh, be able to, um, you know, have some clearly understood uh, uh, criteria and, and measures that we can uh, implement equitably and fairly uh, such that uh, uh, we can process requests uh, in a way that uh, you know, makes sense and takes into account all the various considerations and, and it's consistent with sort of city council policy so that, uh, uh, you know, it's just a lot easier to to get clear direction and to prioritize projects uh, as these requests come up. And as uh, uh, was noticed uh, by Jan in the beginning, we are a busy city and we have a lot of a lot of things going out, a lot of requests, a lot of really good ideas. So this is always a challenge uh, for us. Um, and by having you know clear criteria, I think that would be really helpful. And we can then uh, uh, communicate it back to the council as requests come up. So there's questions. I think that would be helpful to. If everybody has an understanding of what they are, I think it would just be much helpful for us to, to move forward uh, with uh, either processing the request or, 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 or not. So I want to give council a, a chance to, to comment on uh, the criteria. Um, Do you go back to that slide, um, the criteria? Um, thank you. I see uh, council member uh, Matthews has her hand up, but mayor, um, let's see, were you wanting to just look at the slide or do you have a comment? I do, could you go back to the previous, the slide just yes. before this one? Actually go back to the, the next the, one the before next one. this because it has both the, yeah. price, the threshold. So those thresholds, okay. need to pass through the thresholds before you apply your criteria. Okay. Mayor, go ahead. So um, just to start on this slide, um, one, I think that as it relates to the threshold questions, um, instead of it, is it consistent with IRP priorities, which I think is good, but I think at the same time, will it impact those priorities? Because as we mentioned earlier, you know, there are, it, based on what we kind of broadly outlined today as our priorities, there are also you know, it, it seems that those are really gonna target a few specific departments. So if there's, for example, uh, something that's proposed that's gonna go to a department that is not being impacted by the workload that's gonna be within those priorities, then it seems like um, council should have the flexibility to bring something forward if it's not gonna impact the work that's being done on those um, priorities. So that was one of the things I want to put forward. And then, um, I think also within the criteria is, you know, um, there's nothing, there's a lot of um, mention of financial impact, um, but I think there also needs to be something included around community benefit because the policies that we um, pass don't always re result in a financial benefit because there's also community benefits. And so I think that that should be a criteria as well as, you know, if there's something that's being brought that will also have a major community benefit, then that should be a criteria for consideration for it moving forward. So let me just ask uh, Martine to, to maybe clarify something. So the council adopts the budget, you have your work program in the budget, you have items that are, that are approved. Um, and then these would be things that would come up during the year. These would be non-budgeted, non-planned, non-scheduled items, correct, Martine? Yes, and, and I think what the mayor is referring to are, are items that uh, uh, 
do not impact priorities or uh, that uh, may, they might not be necessarily related, but they don't impact the priorities. And so how would those be handled? I think, I think that's, that's, that's the question. Okay. And, and I think there, the criteria, the criteria would be if it's going to require, you know, staff, you know, considerable staff time. That's where that the council policy kicks in. If it's going to require that additional uh, time uh, and resources or funding, then that's, you know, what kicks kicks that in as well. Um, One, and I bring that up because it's not like the community benefit portion is not mentioned in the criteria. So I don't think it would be, you know good for us to agree on something that wouldn't include that. So for example, with COVID, you know, we, you know, drafted a, you know, emergency eviction protection ordinance that required more than eight hours of staff time. You know, we drafted yeah. a, um, a price gouging ordinance that required more than eight hours of staff time. I wouldn't say that those had a direct financial cost outside of the staff time that it requires to have that taken care of, but it did have more than eight hours of time time required for that and it had a community benefit and so you know all the criteria that we currently have listed really focuses on funding will result in new revenue um, but those are two examples of when council brought items forward that required more than eight hours of staff time and resulted in community benefit and if we agreed to everything under the um these priorities that wouldn't be something for example that would fit so I'm just using that as an example. Uh, I, think, I think that, Mayor, I think that would have fit under urgency, mm -hmm. you know, that there was a community need, there was an urgency that that be addressed. So I would have I would have brought it forward under the urgency for the community. Okay, uh, Council Member Matthews, then Brown, then Watkins. Um, I'm just generally supportive of this approach. <laughs> I'll put it there. Okay. I, and I, you know, I think it's easy for all of us to, to be tempted to add one more thing, one more thing. So um, I think we are in a, a period of furloughs and everyone is doing even more work with less. Um, this is a, a time that calls for discipline. Um, understanding there will be emergencies. emergencies. Okay. Uh, Council Member Brown. Um, thank you. I, I'm just going to push back uh, um, and reiterate the um, the interest that uh, Mayor Cummings uh, raised in um, ha having community benefit be one of the criteria that could be considered because um, the examples that he gave were could be could fit under emergency or urgency, but there are others that don't. I mean, the Mission Bell project. You know, there are things that come up that we have an interest in working with the community or particular segments of the community that may not take a lot of time, um, but there is a clear community benefit. And I feel like, I mean, we are, <laughs> we are representatives uh, as council members of the public interest, I would hope. And so when there are things that we can do to help promote, you know, uh, positive community relations, then I think that that's, that's a valuable criteria to use. Particularly for smaller projects that may come in somewhere around that eight hour threshold. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilmember Watkins and then Vice Mayor Myers. Um, I, I do, I appreciate criteria and I actually really like strategic planning and so I appreciate this whole effort and I think that there's been a lot of information provided and I think moving forward, I think I, I personally would like to see it. Um, broadly and then I believe I will have better a better sense of how it can can move forward I things are changing so quickly too there's such an important component around how are we constantly seeking the data to understand the need and and then adjusting and pivoting as well so I, I just don't want to lose um, with any type of um, kind of I think we need to have a, not like a strategic plan, but like almost like an adaptability plan. And so how are we thinking about this as a way that we can also be nimble as government at this moment, because there's so many things that are underway. I like structure in terms of criteria. I think community input also um, is, it needs to play a role in this um, as 
well as the onboarding process for newer council members to kind of understand how this all flows in terms of their role as, as policymakers. So I, I think there's been a lot that's been provided this evening that I think can give our staff ample opportunity to come back to us with sort of a concept, an idea of how to move forward in a way that will meet the needs of uh, prioritization structure, but also allowing us for um, kind of nimble uh, opportunity as well as, as bringing in um, kind of the new folks who will be coming on board in about a month or, you know, so those are just sort of my thoughts. Well, thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor Myers. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I guess my 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 thoughts on this. Um, I mean, these seem reasonable to me. I think that um, you know we're going to have an election in five days, so you know this. Um, depending on what happens, you know, these kinds of things can get you know kind of shaped very quickly from a new majority. Um, but I think, I guess, kind of publicly stating that. Um, you know, we really need to be focused as a city. We have, a, a, you know, a, 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 an in, intimidating hill before us to um, keep our fiscal solvency, to, you know, hopefully keep our employees employed. Um, and I think kind of the intent in this is that as much as elections can bring um, new energy, new focus, new projects, new, um, uh, you know, new priorities, you know, that the intent with this is really to recognize that um, absorbing those kinds of things is, is really needs an evaluation process. So I do think um, the general criteria here outlined is, is, is fair. Um, and I, I think it's realistic and, and I think it provides uh, a, a, a little bit of um, uh, a little bit of a kind of a reality check in terms of, you know, sort of where we are right now in terms of uh, the recession and the COVID issues and all the various things that we're trying to trying to uh, juggle right now. So um, I'm generally supportive of these. Um, and um, I think it is important to um, understand that even with an election change, potentially, that um, you know, our staff and the city manager specifically, you know, we, we need to be guided right now and we need to um, pretty much uh, stay on course um, because we, if, if we get off course, we can end up spending a lot of resources that we're not going to be able to, to replace. So those are my comments. Thank you. Okay. Can, can I add a oh, question? Oh, go ahead, Martin. I was going to say that, you know, this does, you know, it does, you know, force us to really focus on the interim recovery plan. I mean, it does sort of recognize and acknowledge that we're in this uh, essentially a an emergency type of period where that is going to be the focus. And it, it really does impose, you know, a, a pretty high level of discipline here. Um, uh, for sure, um, but I think that's uh, again to recognize that it is sort of this uh, we're in this sort of unprecedented sort of time, in that our focus has to be on those immediate things given the the nature of what we're experiencing and where we're at. Um, so this, this, as presented here, it does it does do that. It does force us to really focus on those things, and that means that there are some uh, going to have to be more saying no to constituents and to members of the public. Um, because we have to dedicate and focus on these things. Okay. Mayor, go ahead. So, you know, I think with that, when this comes back to, to council, and obviously it'll be after the election, I think it needs to be really clear with within these interim recovery planning priorities, what departments are involved, to what level and what degree, because that's gonna be really informative on, you know, work that's been done throughout this entire year that was really responsive to the public. So for example, as Council Member Brown brought up, you know, um, I've been working with Parks and Rec and with other community stakeholders on, you know, how do we reshape this story at the mission to include more of um, an indigenous perspective. I 
think it would be um, like detrimental to a lot of relationships that we've been building over the course of this past year with the indigenous tribes and with our partners in the parks if we were just to say we're not going to work on this anymore because we're prioritizing um, you know downtown development uh, workforce development and affordable housing you know and for example i've been doing a lot of work around public safety with the police that for example would not have fit in this criteria to have done that work in response to the murder of george floyd and it was something that you know i said to the community i was going to be committed to working on and myself and the police chief have gone through the process of working with the community on bringing forward changes to police policy if we adopt this policy we would not have been able to do that work and we would have had to tell those people sorry that doesn't fit with our interim recovery planning so therefore we can't do that and i imagine we would have had more protests as a result of telling people sorry that's not in our interim recovery plan so we can't do that so there has to be flexibility built into this and that's why i think it's really important that we identify you know what are the departments that are going to be most impacted by the interim recovery plan so that we can figure out okay if, if they're going to be working on that what other departments have flexibility what's some of the projects that we've been working on and by stopping those projects what's going to be the impact on the community because i think that that really we have to find that balance and i don't i personally don't believe that you know um for example you know the parks is going to be the that this interim recovery plan is going to impact for example parks to the point where we can't keep doing the work at the mission or police to the point where we can't continue doing work with you know um mental uh, alternatives to mental health crisis response or you know ways that we can improve um policing so i think that those things really need to be taken into account because there's been a lot of work going on and it can ruin um, some relationships with the community that we've been building over the past year given all the crises we've been facing Okay, uh, let's see, Councilmember Matthews has a comment. Um, I think the um, incident you mentioned about Black Lives Matter and the work you're doing with the PD falls within that urgency category pretty, plain, pretty plainly. Um, in terms of the work with the mission bill, that work that's well underway and is headed, I believe, um, is well on its way. Um, I just give as an example, Council Member, uh, Myers and I went to planning and said, can we revise the B ordinance? <laughs> you know, I actually didn't expect him to even get to that. They were able to assign it to an intern and brought it to us, but that was not urgent. I mean, we could have put that on the side. So um, there again, I think we, you know, we have to use our own judgment here. Uh, Laura, did you have a comment? You came back on. Um, I'm wondering if it would be uh, more amenable if we moved, is it consistent with IRP priorities to a criteria instead of a threshold? I think that would address Mayor Cummings and potentially Councilmember Brown's concern. So, but it keeps the other criteria in play, but it removes it from the threshold piece of it. And Laura, I'll say that's part of why I said impacts as well, because if it doesn't impact the interim recovery plan, then, you know. Okay. It just becomes one of the criteria, though. So if it's one of the criteria and the council member initiated a request that has three supporting council members, um, has a really strong line of sight to one of our interim recovery focus areas and would really help us on, on some recovery aspects, it, it gets a little bit more weight than if it does not. That's not to say it can't be considered anymore because it's no longer a threshold. It's just part of the other criteria. So you're saying that the, the sponsoring support will continue as a threshold and the IRP right. priority would be one of the criteria. So we have one, two, three, four, right. five. It would move. Five. Yep, yeah, yeah. exactly. which does provide some additional flexibility by doing that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So there has to be, you know, a good amount of support, political support uh, to move forward with something. And then it would have to sort of uh, be urgent uh, and or uh, 
meet some of these other criteria and considerations. Uh, oh, yes, uh, Councilmember Watkins, I just looked over there. Yes. I apologize. I'm sorry, Laura, can you restate what you're suggesting just to make sure that I'm following? Sure. Um, what I was hearing is the having the consistency with the IRP priorities as a threshold question. So if it doesn't meet the interim recovery plan, it's that's kind of almost a knockout, knockout criteria. And I, I'm hearing objections to that because there could be community driven work. There could be, you know, event environmental work that things are going on in the, in the United States that brings something. Sometimes it might have a sense of urgency. So, but if it's, if IRP is up at the top, it wouldn't get through that filter. So the only top level filter would be the broad sponsorship of the three council members. It has that, then it goes into the criteria and we move consistency with IRP down here with urgency, fiscal impact, mandate and, and resources. So it gets weighed with all of it, but there's no quantitative value that if you don't have it, you can't get into the process. Okay. Thank, thank you. That's helpful. You're welcome. Yeah, I think the, the the fundamental idea is to is for the council and staff to be able to stay focused on on your recovery. I mean that that's the fundamental idea. But of course, you're a dynamic city, and things will come up that are urgent and that have to be addressed. Of course. Um, okay. I don't see any other comments. On that, oh, the mayor, yes, please. One other question. So, if you could advance, I know that there was, um, if you could advance the slide. Claire, can you go ahead? Go ahead. To, to, okay, to this one, city manager action. Yeah, so okay. I just want to um, get some clarification. Um, so by doing this, would so by approving this, for example, with bullet number two, I mean, what that says to me is that it more or less gives executive authority over for the city manager to approve or decline whether something goes on the agenda, regardless of if it has the support of three council members or approval by the mayor. And so I just want to get some clarification around that because I, I feel like the role of the mayor has kind of been removed from the process of being able to approve items going on the agenda. And, you know, given that we're elected to represent people and bring items forward, I just want to kind of understand how this fits with, because I, I think it would be, you know, I can only imagine if like three council members or members of the public ask us to put something on the agenda and then the mayor has no, you know, ability to put an item on or to have that kind of, you know, um, ability or for the council members too as well. So I'm just trying to figure out how this fits in uh, because it seems like, you know, we're more or less giving executive authority to the, to the city manager to put items on the agenda. Well, uh, first we're talking about work that requires more than eight hours. So that would be the first. And if it does have the support of three council members, then it would move forward through the process onto the agenda. But if it does not have the support of uh, the three council members, or if it's work that is less than eight hours, then it gives the city manager that the discretion to make executive decisions on the flow of work. Martine, is, is that correct? Okay. Yeah, no, I, I think that's right. I mean, I think the I think the main difference, uh, Mayor, I think is that we, uh, it would be the three council members uh, sponsorship uh, one from now, and 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 then also the the criteria. But I mean, ultimately, the mayor, for for policy, you know, gets to kind of set the agenda and and work to sort of do the flow. But it's really it's really more about the work plan and how the work plan gets adjusted that uh, kicks in this. So this just kicks in the process to adjust the work plan and, and when to adjust it, uh, but not necessarily manage the agenda and, and the flow of the meetings. That's, that's really the mayor's, the mayor's role. Um, 
So I guess the, the three council members or the mayor would also be the criteria in the previous slide for, for putting an item up for? Uh, no, it would be three council members, I think. For, for new items, I mean, that is written is the way I understand it. It would be three council members, whether it includes the mayor or not. This is for new council initiated requests. For new, right, for new, right, right. But as far as managing the agenda, uh, uh, again, in terms of placement, in terms of, uh, you know, the regular agenda management process, that, that's still within the purview of the mayor. That's, that's not suggested to be changed here. It's really for new initiatives, new projects. New projects or initiatives that would interfere right. with the recovery plan. And that's, you know, the policy, council policy 6.9, it, it works that way already. Uh, you know, it applies to all council members. Uh, so. But you can, you know, you can put it on the agenda to put, to make the request. So that's still there. I mean, I think if you wanted to move forward the request, you know, that's that's still be there. Okay. So Vice Mayor Myers and then Council Member Watkins. Um, thank you. I'm having a little bit of a flashback because I I think we. I think there was a process a year ago where a lot of this was discussed and then there was a, a council policy that was adopted and then it was voted back down and we went back to the original policy. Right. And I guess I'm, I'm just kind of reflecting that, you know, we're gonna have some new council members coming on at some point, you know, it, not at some point, but you know, in the next 30 days. And I, I, I'm starting to feel like this has gotten what I thought was gonna be a pretty straightforward discussion, I feel like has really gotten in a, a lot more um, extensive. And I, I, I'm, I'm personally starting to feel kind of uncomfortable that we're making these decisions um, and we're, we're basically setting the table for new members coming on. And um, I'm just wondering if we can revert back to policy 6.9 and, and, and sort of delay this until after the election and, and the new members are seated because we've already set quite a big table for them in terms of our priorities, our metrics, some other things. And I, I do think that um, it, it just seems, this seems a little out of place to me this evening. So um, I'm just wondering if there's the potential to try to bring this back once the new council has been seated. Thank you. Uh, I would just say that, uh, yeah, it's certainly up to the city council, but you're not being requested to approve this today. Uh, this would come back to you in the context of the uh, 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 the, the whole re the recovery plan goal, as, as Laura pointed out before. So it's, you're not required to do it today. Um, but certainly, if the council wishes to, whatever whatever you, you'd like to do, you can do that. Or if you wanted to bring it back after that, you can do that. Well. So the proposal is that you get feedback tonight, yeah. but that uh, yeah. the, the, the final proposal gets brought back with the whole package. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I lost track of that. Yeah. 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 Okay. But again, and I would suggest maybe we, I don't know, we try to wrap it up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, Council Member Watkins, but I see the city attorney is also uh, maybe wanting to say something. No? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just here if there are any questions of a legal perspective. Okay, okay. <laughs> thank you. Uh, council, council. Action like this, if there's a turnover on the council and the new council has different ideas about how these matters should be brought forward, then obviously the new council will be able to make those decisions. Council member Watkins. I think my, my comments really just sort of echo what the vice mayor was sharing. Um, I, I wanna thank and acknowledge the, the work that went into this um, this evening in regards to wanting to really just, you know, recognize the need for prioritization and focus. And um, unfortunately, all the many projects will have to be, you know, curtailed absolutely and understanding that and, and what is the transparent process of that. And I think that, you know, when I came onto council four years ago and I've shared this, you know, with Martine in the past, um, there was already a strategic plan underway. 
And you want to have, I think we're at a, we're clearly this time having, um, we're at a window where there is opportunity for a new council to have their voice heard in this and to have ownership and commitment to whatever comes out of this. So I think we can, my, my hope is that this can help inform sort of what a proposal could be to this newer council once seated and then allowing for additional input and buy-in and ownership so that there's adherence to it moving forward in the next 12 to 18 months. If not, I think there will likely be confusion and a lack of um, understanding. And so I, I, I do fully recognize the need to prioritize. I know many communities have, you know, it, you know short-term and interim rec recovery strategies underway. And I believe that's absolutely what's required here at, at, for our city as well. And I think the timing and the information that's already been received could really help inform the next iteration of this conversation without really putting kind of the, the cart before the horse, if you will. Okay, I think we have all the input uh, we're going to receive on this item. So thank you for that. So um, we can keep moving along. So really the, the last couple of very short pieces, uh, we did get some input from council members about um, ways to communicate the city's financial condition and the interim recovery plan with the community. Uh, we put the, those things on the slide. And actually the very first uh, bullet point on there, um, a number of council members did in their interviews as well as this evening, of course, talk about the importance of orienting new council members and giving opportunity for, to get their input into this. And that's been a theme this evening as well. Uh, so we wanted to acknowledge that as, as part of um, this discussion. So we're not asking for any council direction or, or certainly a decision on this, uh, but rather just for any other comments that there might be of any other ways in which uh, the city could be communicating with the public about the financial condition and the interim recovery plan. So just if there's anything to add, uh, to the slide uh, now could be an opportunity to do that briefly. And uh, I see Council Member Golder wishes to do that. <laughs> so I don't wanna add to more staff time or any anything like that, but I know I've expressed to the mayor and to the city manager that one thing I think is important is including our youth. And so if to the extent possible, I'd love to start and it could be really small, but just a kind of almost listening session where we're doing outreach meeting to the, the local high school or um, just an open meeting a few times a year where um, they, where we're just kind of listening and it doesn't have to be everybody like I'd be happy to do it and maybe if one person wanted to join me and I don't want to take a lot of staff time for that okay, good thank you mayor uh, to that point I actually met with 95th graders today so <laughs> You know, Council Member Golder, and, I, and during our city schools committee meeting, I actually brought that point up too that there was a desire for um, there to be maybe not the same um, youth council, but you know, an opportunity for council members to meet with groups of high school students to kind of hear and gain their input. So um, happy to follow up with you, Council Member Golder, but I just want to let you know that I expressed that um, with the city schools committee earlier today. Um, and then I think that, you know, with regards to this list, you know, to the extent um, there can be engagement, you know, with the chamber, um, I think with um, various contractors, the unions, the workforce development board, um, because, you know, just l letting people know who are involved with um, workforce development, you know, securing businesses, develop business development, um, sounds like construction that I think it's really important that they all know that we are, as a city, looking to partner with them as we think about um, our interim recovery and you know longer term recovery to bring jobs back in. And, um, and also, I'd say, you know, I've been saying it before, but also engaging with folks in the cannabis community to understand what are emerging um, opportunities for jobs in that sector as well. So really thinking about um, 
up and coming uh, opportunities and job sectors and, and how can we engage with the folks who are currently in our community to keep them here and, um, and, and help expand their uh, businesses as well. And I, and I think that would also go for a lot of our green jobs as well. Good, thank you. Okay, uh, any other, I don't see any other hand raises. Uh, okay, so I think we're ready to, oh, yes, Vice Mayor Myers. <laughs> oh, you are muted. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I talked with our communications person about this. Um, and I think also Dan, you and I talked about this when we when when we did our interview. Um, you know, figuring out how just how we get how we get communication out there. Mm -hmm. um, I think Jan, you mentioned I can't remember what city you mentioned, but you know, some are doing it really well. And if uh, I know Elizabeth had a lot of really good ideas. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's really important. I think people are really searching for this kind of information and really wanting to kind of feel. Um, collectively, that they understand the, where the city, what the shape that the city's in, and the and the concerns about um, services being cut and things like that. So, to the extent that we can, I, I mean, I, I guess my comment on this is, I, I think this is a high priority, and uh, it should go hand in hand with the recovery strategy. So, um, uh, and I think um, you know, even adding maybe some personal touches like. Um, stories from local businesses where they've been able to change their business model and are, you know, able to stay afloat or um, different, just different creative solutions that people are coming up with, you know, to get through this. So um, I think um, trying to promote the um, kind of entrepreneurial, you know, spirit of Santa Cruz, um, uh, how different families are working together so that you know they can make it through with one parent having to be home while they're you know while they're distance learning i just think we have to personalize it i think sometimes government is is sort of a little bit a little bit boring so you know to the point that we can make this a community story as well i think is very important so thanks great thank you uh council member watkins and then matthews I, I won't I won't say too much more other than that um, you know one of the things that I believe this current situation and COVID and the natural disasters we've experienced has really highlighted our interconnectedness to work together whether it be with education the chamber our community foundation other nonprofits to come up with our um, safety net resources so as we're moving forward and thinking about our recovery planning and um, communications and partnerships, I think we have to prioritize um, interconnectivity. And if we're thinking about um, working towards, uh, you know, a thriving workforce, we also have to factor in childcare and education. I mean, so there's so many layers to this that we can't ignore that we're sort of in a silo looking towards recovery because it's really a holistic approach that we need to engage uh, beyond just various um, subsectors of a business or what or whatnot we need to look holistically in my opinion right thank you uh council member matthews i do agree that communications are really critical what right now um the whole communications challenge i mean you've all heard me talk about this in the past it's so challenging these days and we need to be honest about the city's situation and to celebrate our successes large and small um not just our own doing but with partnerships across sectors and one of the things we do need to do is challenging but not impossible right now is to rebuild public confidence in the city you know if we're going to go out for revenue measure we have a major repair job ahead of us in terms of confidence in government. and we can we can do that but it, it will take um that will take focus Good. Okay, thank you. Well, those are some great additional comments and I can see that Claire has captured those, so that's super. Good, okay, so then we'll move on to the um, next to the last slide. And uh, Laura, I'm going to turn it to you. Thank you, Jan. You guys are almost done. Hang in there for a little <laughs> bit more. Um, so just recognizing uh, that we know that once we have an approved interim recovery plan, 
and the content approved by you in November, uh, we will develop a reoccurring reporting mechanism to report progress back to you at council meetings. So it'll need to be a team effort because the interim recovery plan crosses all departments. All departments will have to be able to report in information and contribute to the periodic reporting mechanism. So it's going to need to be balanced as far as valuable up-to-date information for you, um, but also easy to put together and not a whole heck of a lot of overhead because we have a very um, taxed set of staff right now with the furloughs and everything else and all the wonderful work that they're doing. So just wanting to let you know that this will be part of the process that we develop to follow up on the actual recovery plan itself. Good, thank you. Okay, then the very last slide. <laughs> So you all have hung in there just very well. Uh, so we're, we will be putting together notes from today from uh, the various comments uh, that we received from council members um, and uh, the, the three priorities. Um, and we'll be working with staff on the metrics and, and on all of the follow-up here. So we'll be putting together a document, working closely with staff on that so that staff can then uh, present that back to the city council in November. So that's our follow-up. Um, and so then as we close, we'd just like to offer council members and Martine an opportunity to make any, any final closing comments that, that you may have, uh, not necessary for everybody to comment, um, but uh, Martine, if you'd like to, or the mayor or you know, anybody, we'd just like an opportunity to, uh, or give you an opportunity to do that briefly. Um, oh, if the mayor wants to go first, that, that's that's fine with me. I, I do have just some minor comments. Sure. Well, you know, um, I know this is a very strange time for this to be coming, but this is something that um, we've been trying to work on, I'd say probably since, you know, May, but given all the various disruptions that have occurred and crises that we've been responding to, it's kind of come at this time. Um, but I do think that it's really important that we continue uh, working forward on figuring out ways that we can, you know, work on a recovery plan for our community um, after all the, the crises that we've been dealt over the course of this year. And so uh, I just want to thank uh, management partners for all the outreach you all have been doing. Um, I'd also like to especially thank Vice Mayor Myers and Councilmember Watkins for being a part of the recovery planning subcommittee and taking the time to help with this effort. And then for all the council members and members of the community and staff who were able to be here today. And, you know, I just think that, um, you know, as, as the election results come in, um, I think it, you know, it would be great if we can take what we've discussed today and, you know, also engage with the council members who are new council members. And um, I do want to say that although it's been a, uh, you know, long and difficult back and forth conversation, I do think that it's been productive and that we've made progress. And I'm just hoping that, um, you know, whether it's December or January that we'll be able to adopt a plan that will provide us with some guidance over the course of the next 12 to 18 months. So thank you all. Thank you. Uh, Martine? Yeah, so uh, first of all, I want to let the council know that, uh, you know, I recognize that uh, you uh, as council members have uh, objectives and, and many things that you'd like to do. Uh, and the new council members will as well, and our community in general does. I mean, this is this is a community that has no shortage of really incredible ideas and really good ideas. Uh, we can be doing a thousand of them all at once. Uh, there's no doubt about that, um, and and that's 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 really wonderful. And I also recognize that we do have to have some flexibility with respect to uh, being able to, to work on things because you have goals and objectives and our community has desires and things change. So we, we do have to have flexibility uh, and I think that's important. Um, at the same time though, I think we also have to recognize that you know we are in, in a, uh, unprecedented times uh, and we do have to have a certain level of, of discipline and fidelity and prioritization and sort of balance those things so that we can uh, make progress and also make progress in the environment that we're in now because it's uh, not only is it uh, uh, overwhelming with the number of issues that we have but also we have more limited resources than we've had in the past even from what we had just a few months ago and so we just have to sort of put all these things together and, and that's really the, the idea here is to sort of recognize and, and create a, at least a 
a structure, a culture, an environment where we can um, have uh, these discussions and, and make good decisions and, and really keep on track and, and make progress. So that, uh, as I noted from the beginning, that we have uh, you know good governance and, and, and strong leadership uh, and teamwork in, in our city. Uh, and that's really the, the intent behind all of this. And so I too wanna thank uh, the, all of you council members, the department heads and, and everyone. Um, and again, I wish we could do this more in person because I think it'd be yeah. probably more valuable uh, so we can do some of that team building. Um, but uh, I think to the extent again, that we can work you know, well together and we can have that uh, discipline and fidelity and, and these conversations and flexibility uh, will be better off. And I think we can do that. So thank you very much. Thank you. So I see Council Member Watkins and Matthews both have their virtual hands up. I'll, tr I'll try to keep my comments really short. I know that's getting late. And I, I do want to echo just sort of the comments around uh, gratitude to the subcommittee and to our consultants and to the city manager and the staff that led up to this evening's um, presentation and discussion. I guess my, my question is just for clarity on next steps, because I heard that there would be adoption in November, and then I think I heard the mayor say that actual final adoption would be in January. So is it like a proposal for final adoption in November and then formal adoption in January? So I'm just kind of wanting a little bit clarity on what's next. November is just sort of confirming the, the uh, subject areas, and then in January would be the actual work plan. So. In, in January, you would have the work plan that, that lays out more specifically uh, what, what's gonna be the action items around these categories. So you're gonna confirm that these are the categories that are uh, important to you. Uh, the new council will have to validate that also again in January, but at least it'll give us a, a opportunity to focus on developing that work plan between now and January so that the council can confirm uh, the new council. Uh, and we can uh, put, have enough time to put it in place uh, so that you can consider that. Uh, and then we'll, we'll bring back some of these, uh, uh, also the, uh, the criteria, the, uh, the measures. Uh, so we'll bring that back based on all the input that you've provided us as well. Does that seem right, Jan? Or, okay. uh, yes, yeah, that's what we understand too. Thank you. Um, and Council Member Matthews. Um, again, thank you to everyone who had a hand in this. Um, I came into it kind of uh, at the end of the process here. It's been really thorough. It's clear that there are no easy choices. Um, I guess my short message is good luck to you all. <laughs> um, well, I think what we do see going through all this sequence of crises that we've seen uh, over this past year, there is a tremendous reservoir of um, affection for this community, concern for this community, the willingness to become involved in solutions. And I think if the council can show the kind of discipline and focus that we've talked about here with the new council, that the community will step up. And I think the community overall does want to emerge from this series of crises that's not over yet. But um, you all know, you know, there's great potential for this. So, uh, I think the discipline and focus is going to be good. Okay. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, Vice Mayor Myers. Yeah, I just want to thank my uh, colleagues and uh, also recognize the work that you guys have done, um, Jan, and also Martine and Laura. Um, and, uh, you know, I know you guys have been working really hard on this on a very tight timeline. So I just want to thank you. It's been, um, I think, a good process and uh, I look forward to um, putting it into place with uh, with final adoption. So thank you. Good. Okay. I don't see any other virtual hands up. So uh, on behalf of uh, Gloria, Claire and myself, thank you for the opportunity to work with you today. We do know how how um, challenging it is to be doing these workshops uh, over Zoom. And one of these days we will all be in person again and won't that be nice. <laughs> So thank you for hanging in there and providing the direction that you did and such thoughtful uh, discussion and uh, respectful comments uh, with each other. So it's been a pleasure and we will do our homework now and, and get back information to uh, Martine and Laura. So thank you. Thanks for finishing seven minutes early. <laughs> <laughs> That's always our goal. <laughs> Sam, I have to, has anybody ever told you you sound like Judy Woodruff?